about this classic into fishing freaks that showed up here in Knoxville, Tennessee. There's a reason for all the energy, all the excitement, the buzz and anticipation. The reason is one event that means everything in the sport of fishing. And on this day in Knoxville, Tennessee, that moment has arrived. Day one of the classic. We will start the classic like that. You want it, baby? Come to the classic. That's what it's all about. It's a day that's been on the minds of these anglers every day for the past year. I'm talking about the Bassmaster Classic, baby. Look at that. Woo! Everything you can achieve in a season can help you get here. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Party started. Number one, Bassmaster Classic. Today, the 55 who have made it through are ready to go. I got her! Yeah! Oh, there's one down right there. <laughs> to be tested in three days of competition. Oh my God! Yeah! Yeah! And one will stand on top at the end. The world champion. The winner of the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. Presented by Toyota. Uh, smiles all around because we've done it. We have landed. We have arrived. The most important three days in the sport of bass fishing. This is it. The 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic coming to you from our fantastic host city, Knoxville, Tennessee. We just heard it. 55 anglers have worked very, very hard to get here, and the start of three days of fishing is upon us. As a matter of fact, our anglers are underway, heading to their spots where they will begin this quest. Tommy Sanders here with Davey Height and Mark Zona. Guys, nothing like this event. We, we cover a lot of fishing in the course of the year, but this is just up on another level. No doubt about it, Tommy. And there's a reason this is the biggest event in professional bass fishing, and it just gets you out of your usual routine. And the best way to put it is, and Davey, you know this, every day here is a process at the Bassmaster Classic, but most of all, it truly makes you feel uncomfortable as an angler. Yeah, absolutely uncomfortable. For the anglers that are here for their first time, they are certainly feeling it today. The veteran anglers, they've been here a long time, and, and those are the guys we're going to certainly keep an eye on today. All right, well, it's one guy who should feel comfortable. This is his 21st Classic, is the great Gerald Swindle. All right, day one of the class, how you feeling this morning? It's the Bassmaster Classic, baby. Day one, it's Gerald Swindle, a.k.a. the G-Man, sitting in front of Knoxville right here, headed down the river, trying to bring the trophy back, son. Daddy feels good. Mentally, spiritually, I'm right where I need to be. Y'all stay tuned, because on Fox Sports today, it's going to get crazy. Crazy. We will take that. We're ready for all the craziness they can bring today. It is a crazy time for all of these anglers. And, and Gerald Swindle, he's made this point before. There's a lot of great anglers who aren't here because people work all year long and don't make it. It's never a given. You got to strike while the iron is hot. You got to make the best of your opportunities here. I, I think we're all looking forward to the day that Gerald Swindle has a chance <laughs> to raise that trophy over his head. It will be crazy here Sunday if that happens. Yeah, and really the last time we were here, this body of water for the most part was in on Unknown. This time around, not the case. You're going to see a different Fort Loudon and Teleco in this Bassmaster Classic. Another one of our anglers with a lot of classic experience is our current Angler of the Year, Brandon Polinick. Well, it is day one here, the Bassmaster Classic 2023. We're sitting here on Fort Loudon, Teleco, uh, right here downtown Knoxville. Got volunteer landing right behind me with thousands and thousands of fans standing up there, which is unbelievable uh, you know ever since I was eight years old I've been working to get to this point right here and fortunately this is my 12th time in this position uh, and I'm, I'm more than excited to get out there and see what's gonna happen on the water uh, I think it's gonna be a, a volatile fishery this week there's gonna be a lot of changing conditions and we're gonna make some stops we're gonna make some long runs and we're just gonna really we're gonna try to have a really good day today but we don't need to lead today we're gonna try to get as many clues as we can today to see how the fish have changed from practice to the first day of the tournament. Uh, try to get as many of those clues and catch a few three to five pounders on the way to get in those clues. You know, that always helps get, get the right clues. Uh, but I mean, I, th I think we're going to have good weather for these fish to bite. Uh, 
think we're going to have good conditions and it's going to be an amazing event. Right? I mean, Knoxville shows out, the fans show out, uh, and it's, it's going to be awesome. It's what we live for, right? This is, the, this is the heartbeat of the industry right here. Brandon Paul and Gerald Swindle, two guys who know something that all the new guys here are going to find out. You, you start with a great game plan, you be ready to change it at the drop of a hat. Yeah, a absolutely. And, and what Brandon was talking about there might be confusing to some people, but this is his 12th classic. Catching a couple three to five pounders today, stay in contention, learn more about what's happening with the changing weather and hopefully the water rising a little bit. Well, something that was formerly very rare was winning classics back to back in the past 12 years. It has become more common. The man trying to do it this time around, last year's champion, Jason Christie. Moments before takeoff for the first day of the Bassmaster Classic. And it was the first time I could say defending Bassmaster Classic champion. How good does that feel, Jason Christie? It makes you feel good. It takes a little pressure off, but also, like we were talking about, it puts more on you. You know, I, I put a lot more on myself. You don't get a lot of chances, and I don't care what anybody says. It's not easy to get here. There's a lot of good anglers that are going to be working the show this weekend and not fishing. So you have to take, um, you know, advantage of the opportunity of just being here let's take the show out of the equation one thing hopefully it fishes to your style and i'm looking at the conditions bud it's different than it was in practice it's warming up what did you just say the water temperature has risen to on the main river yeah 55 and that was after one day so i believe if we get some you know some wind like like that's forecasted today and some sun uh, it's going to get better. You know, I don't know who it's going to get better for, but it's going to get better for, uh, I think, several people. And, you know, this, this event is going to come down to one thing, and that's going to be one to two key bites a day. You know, just, you know, a four or five pounder. Um, that's what's going to separate, uh, you know, the winner from everybody else. You're one of the first boats taking off. You have that decision to get out in front of everybody. What's going to be your decision on, on your choice today? I got a place that I think that I'm going to start in. Uh, not so much because it was good in practice, just because of how it sets up with the wind. And, and I feel like I can get in, and if there's some fish there, maybe I can kind of, you know, put my elbows out. Um, but I really think it's going to be one of those where I'm just going to go fishing today and let the fish um, tell me what they want. Have fun. Again, defending Bassmaster Classic champion Jason Christie heading out on day one. Jason Christie looking to repeat mm -hmm. right there with our own Robbie Floyd. Robbie will be where it's popping, where it's happening all day long. We can always count on that. And Jason Christie absolutely will have our eyes on him, one of the top performers in the world of Bassmaster fishing for a long, long time here. Here's his classic appearances, his top tens. Well, at first, uh, last time around, a third at Lake Hartwell, the time before when we were there, Grand Lake kind of his home water second place in 2016 got his a uh, Bassmaster debut really in 2013 in a top 10 fit. yeah and we really talked about it how improbable the last couple years for Jason Christie has been number one requalifying for the Bassmaster Elite Series going on to win the tournament on the Sabine River then backing it up and winning Lake Hartwell last year and the interesting thing watching Jason Christie when we covered him last year, starting off the day with a spinning rod, ending, ending it basically just pitching boat docks, I do not think we will see a spinning rod in Jason Christie's hand this time around. All right, look at some uh, scenes from the takeoff there. Thousands literally at the takeoff, just as it was back in 2019. What a great place. This is the heart of bass fishing country, and we are so excited to be sitting here getting ready, getting started on seven hours of coverage of this Bassmaster Classic, day number one. Uh, welcome to our headquarters right here inside the Bassmaster Classic Outdoors Expo, uh, presented by U.S. Army. Tommy Sanders, Davey Height, Mark Zona, as I always say, the two guys you want to sit and watch the classic with and what Jason was saying right there man key moments key things key turns make a big difference here. absolutely and I really kind of want to rewind real quick to kind of talk about the face that you always see on Fort Loudon and Teleco really if you rewind back to the 2019 classic that odd default one for the most part this was an unknown body of water for the majority of the field and the one thing that we got to see on this body of water it is so incredibly hard to stay consistent. If you really looked at that tournament, Ot Defoe opens up with an over 20-pound bag, I believe, and then really struggled, caught 10 pounds. And really by the end of that event that he won, 
Ottawa's out of fish. And so the, the one thing to really watch here is just the consistency through this event because it is so hard to duplicate here on Loudon and Teleco. Totally agree. And I think a, a big problem with consistency, they, the anglers have learned this body of water much better than they, they had when we were here in 2019. But the conditions changing, not only the weather, but the water level, the water clarity, all those things change, makes it very, very difficult to stay consistent. And the other thing, you're trying to catch smallmouth and largemouth bass. A lot of these anglers that I've talked to said, I've got to try to catch a couple of those three to four pound smallmouth and then go largemouth fishing. But then you have a Greg Hackney, a Jason Christie that are like, I'm going to go do my deal and hopefully those green fish are going to come to me. Well, we're here in the second half century of the Bassmaster Classic and something that hardly ever happened before. Very rare was someone to go back to back yet in the past 12 years. We've had three incidents of that half. Half of the wins in the last 12 years have been part of a back to back win. And that brings to mind Jason Christie's. So let's talk about his chances of doing just that here. Gosh, I, I can't pull against him. He did not have a good practice, though. But right. just just his experience, him saying this morning, hey, I think I'm going to go start somewhere where it could happen, that just shows how dangerous someone like him can be because he is one of the best shallow water fishermen of all time. He really is. But to just go somewhere and say, hey, I'm going to go let the fish tell me what's going to happen, so you can't count him out. And now. really, to be on a warming trend, and here's the key thing. It's it's called Fort Loudon Lake and Teleco Lakes. and see, the, here, It is a river. It is the Tennessee River. And whenever you have the word river, you look at guys like Greg Hackney, a guy like Jason Christie. So can he – Repeat, I would say 1,000%. And I'm going to tell you, I know he said he had a grimy practice. He saw some of the right ones and said, look, if I catch a smallmouth like you were talking, it will be totally by accident in this tournament. Look for Jason Christie to power fish all day long for the right ones here this week. Well, let's take a look back at his uh, championship uh, last time around, our last Bassmaster Classic in 2022. We take you back to Lake Hartwell in South Carolina and some key moves on that final day one in particular. Yeah, key moves, I think you, you nailed it there, Tommy, because we've seen Jason Christie when he had that second place finish and the third place finish in the Bassmaster Classic. Maybe he should have adjusted a little bit more. It's easy to second guess that now. But we saw last year he made changes each and every day, fishing deeper in the mornings and then fishing shallow. He, he's he got it all dialed in at this event. And, and you mentioned earlier, Z, he is built for a Bassmaster yes. Classic. He, he sees blood when he comes to this tournament. And really, if you listen to Jason before this tournament started, he made the comment, Man, we are on a warming trend, and if I get a little bit of wind, I could kind of fish a certain way that you saw me fish on Grand Lake in a classic years ago. Putting a spinner bait in his hand. Well, he is going to have all of those combinations here on day number one as far as the weather goes. Well, you can bet your last money, as they say, we're going to have a camera in the boat with Jason Christie all day long, also with the nine other anglers all day long, and plenty of bonus coverage as well as we look at this field of 55. I'd like for both of you guys, uh, I'll start with you, Davey. Break down the ones to watch for us. Well, the ones we have camera with is the ones that we think are certainly going to catch him. Brandon Lester, just because he's had good tournaments here, he's, he knows this body of water better than most. It's certainly one thing. And, and everybody agrees, I think, that he is due to win an Angler of the Year or Bassmaster Classic. He has been so consistent in the Opens and in the Bassmaster Elites. It's going to happen for Brandon Lester, and this certainly could be a place. But you can't forget about Gussie and what he's done here in the past, and he said he had a great practice. Yeah, and the one thing to really watch with Gussie, who pretty much blew the tournament out, the Bassmaster Elite Series tournament out here a couple of years ago, is he He's fishing down in that canal where he caught him in between Loudon and Teleco. We're going to find out today if Gussie is the boss of that canal because there is going to be a lot of pressure in that area this time around. Yeah, I guess today would be the day that somebody's going to have to decide who is the boss of that <laughs> I canal. Don't know. But <laughs> but you listen to Jason Christie's interview and he's like, I'm gonna start somewhere and hopefully catch a few and spread my elbows out a little bit. Yeah, and the one thing with Gussie too, he said I've got two big schools of smallmouth and the main thing here on Teleco and Loudon, smallmouth have to be eighteen inches to go in your live well. And he said, I found two of the right schools. I don't want to look at them until Saturday but if it like you said if it gets a little bit chippy in that canal you could see him pull the plug and bail early today. Well, as you guys said, the plan you formulated, the, the, how dedicated to you, that's very important. Experience is important as well, handling this different, this chaotic atmosphere of three days. Really a week of chaos for these guys. They are overscheduled, meant to make you uncomfortable. I love yes. that point right there. So let's look at the guys with the most experience. That's going to be Gerald Swindle with 20 appearances. 
Greg Hackney fishing in his 18th Classic and Brandon Polnick in his 13th. Yeah, it's just incredible for me to look at those three anglers and see that they've had this many Classics under under their belt, so to speak, and have not won a Bassmaster Classic. And, and see, you know as good as anybody, any of these three could win, but Greg Hackney wants to win a Bassmaster yes. Classic so, so bad. One of the anglers that actually said, I had a really good practice, and also, he, you know Greg doesn't do this. Greg called me at 10 after 5 a.m. this morning and said, hey, just want to let you guys know on the set, I'm going to start on my big ones. Going to start on my big ones. I said, okay, that sounds good. But here's the one thing Hackney said. He said, if things went right, if, if he was left alone this first day, he thought – he could catch a big stringer, as in a 25 to 30-pound stringer. He said, I will keep myself around that. I may not get a lot of bites, but he said, this lake is so much better than it has shown in tournaments past. And he said, there is potential. If you looked at what his guess was to win this tournament, we talked about it yesterday afternoon together. Hackney said he believes it'll take 60 to possibly 65 pounds to win a three-day Bassmaster Classic here. I just want to make sure you were awake when you got that call because <laughs> Because never has Greg Hackney said, I want you guys on the set to know what I'm going to yes, be no, doing today. I, it was an awkward call. It was almost <laughs> as awkward as me talking about the call. Um, I, I honestly, when I saw it, it was him, I was like, wow, something's wrong. And it, it, so anyway, I don't it know, seems man. improbable. Anyway, yeah. we're, just, we're going to be either over or under. La the last time we were here, 2019, that total of 49.3. Davey, start with you. Over or under? I'm going to go over, but just a little over. I'm going to say uh, 50 pounds. Uh, 50 pounds to, you know, maybe 51, but I'm on, I guess, exact weight, 50 pounds even is what I think. Just a little bit better than we were here. I know we're in a lower water condition. I think the lake is definitely going to fish a little bit smaller than it has in years past, but I'm going to also go, oh, we are on a warming trend coming off of temps being 20 degrees last week. I'm going over. All right. Two Barely overs. Over. Barely I like over. that. I'll just be a contrarian, go under, but nobody cares what I think. Any, but what we all care about is getting out on the water. Let's do that right now. First low, let's look at those numbers from the last classic right there. You had 521 fish caught, uh, total weight of 1,200 plus pounds, heaviest bag, 2112. That was day two, I believe. Chris Saldane, big bass, I think also in that bag was six pounds, three ounces. Had a six pounder for Rod Defoe as well in that one. The winning weight, 49.3. Exactly. And if you really looked at that tournament, we talked about this a little bit. Zaldane catching a big bag on day two. I believe Ot Defoe catching a big bag on day one. It's almost, you don't want to compare it to a Florida lake. It's totally polar opposite. But the one thing you see here is catch a big stringer, protect it some way, shape, or form. Going to take a look at our Minn Kota unlock the lake here, Fort Loudon and Teleco. And if you're going to join us throughout this tournament, see our takeoff there at Volunteer Landing in Knoxville. And really, if you look at Teleco, where it connects to Fort Loudon, going to see a, a, a lot of pressure there this morning. Teleco there fishes a lot more like a Highland Reservoir, very clear water, fishes more like a lake. And when you get into Fort Loudon, a lot of pressure, a little bit more color, and fishes much more like a river system, which pretty much, much looking at this Minn Kota unlock the lake. The cool thing about any time we're here, it's a... It's almost a pick your poison. You can fish your strength and really fish how you want to fish in this tournament. Well, let's take you out on the water and show you some footage that uh, happened earlier today. These guys have been set up and fishing for a little bit, for a few minutes now. This was Seth Fighter. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Big old fat chub keeper. Big old fat chub keeper. Come on. Oh, oh you can feel mm. Let's go. <laughs> Right off the bat, big old fat one, come on. <laughs> Bassmaster Classic, right off the giddy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. You like that? I like it too. Seth, one of the anglers with a slow practice last weekend when all the cold temps were in this general region and had a big day on Wednesday. And the official oh. practice day said he kind of dialed something in that we'll be able to break down throughout right, the day. I had to spit in there. I don't know if we can clip that. Just go to the, just go to the swing. Mechanics, go to the swing. 
He's directing for us. Yeah, that hey. went full blown Steven Spielberg right Absolutely. there. Absolutely, <laughs> we'll take it. Stay in your lane, Seth. <laughs> That was insane what I just did. Like, I didn't even see how he was hooked. I was just like, get in the boat. Like, I'm lucky he didn't pop off. Oh, can't even think right now. Two and a quarter. Seth, our 2021 the Bassmaster Angler of the Year right now. Let's check in with our 2022 Classic Champ. We've heard from him already this morning. Let's get out on the water now with Jason Christie. Water temperature has jumped up a bunch. Had one bite so far and he just, uh, he bit the end off my spinnerbait trailer, so. They're gonna bite though. I mean, that wind's gonna blow in a little bit more than it already is. I really thought that, oh, son of a gun. I really thought it'd be kicking in here more than it was, more than it is um, this morning. And I, and I just, I don't know, I had a feeling about this. And so far I've been wrong. We still got 100 yards to fish out, but they're shad. The, th the thing is a lot of the shad are, like I see them popping and stuff, but they're out like in the ditch, not really up on the bank. And I think that's just a, a wind thing. Like they, uh, I think the more that wind kicks up, the more that everything's going to move around. You know, some of these places that I fished in practice, it's, it's a timing deal. Like you get there whenever it hasn't been fished in a little while and, and, uh, I mean, you can literally catch three or four out of one pocket. You just gotta hit, you gotta have the right timing. So. Timing is such a big key here. Uh, at this time of year, almost everywhere, he's hooked up. Just like that. Out off the bank. Choked it. I can't see where he's hooked. I'm gonna let him keep that bait. I'm gonna throw my scissors in the water. I'm gonna let him keep that bait in there because he looks like he's he's hooked around the tongue. see with guys like Jason Christie that are all in on the largemouth, really focusing on no smallmouth. Very main lake oriented pockets, not going way back into some of the creeks. I think we're going to see Hackney do that early today, try to burn an area down way back in one of the small creeks on Fort Loudon. But for the most part, and really we got to see that the last time we were here, a lot of the better than average size largemouth are really close to that main yeah. Fort Loud, you know, that, not going way back in. That, and, and if, I think it's real important to figure out the section of the river yes. or Fort Loud in the lake that is happening, is popping. When we were here in 19, it was the lower end. It seems to be farther upstream now where you see most of those yes. anglers having success. Kind of the last time around, that Little River area was really, really one of the main players the last time we were here just for the Elite Series event. Oh, we had, we're adjusting to the changing conditions. Um, you know, we got to first area, the water's about you know, three quarters of a foot higher maybe. And it's about six degrees warmer, uh, which are all welcoming sights in my world. 
but I don't know if it's kind of reposition some of the fish or, or what's happened. Um, I didn't get any bites right where I thought I would this morning. So trying to kind of figure out what the next move is gonna be. I didn't think I'd just roll up and catch a limit, but I thought I could catch one or two fairly quick. So I may have to make, make a few adjustments, which is okay. It's the name of the game, right? Adjusting. A lot of adjusting today. The wind forecast is supposed to be Oof. get stronger and yes. stronger. You see Brandon Paul now that's slick where he's at now. I don't think that'll be the case here in a couple of hours. No, we are going to definitely see big winds. And one of the cool things really listening to Polinick right there said, man, I tried. I tried so hard to make that small mouth, that deeper bite go using his electronics that I never got on it. It'll be interesting mm -hmm. also to watch mm -hmm. how long Polinick gives Fort Loudon where he's at right now because he said he will end up somewhere today in Teleco. further already. You wouldn't think just. You know, the official practice being on Wednesday, a lot of things change from Wednesday to Friday this time of the year. Water the came up. Brandon yes. mentioned water coming up. We saw a lot of that uh, East Tennessee red dirt in our overhead shot with Christy there. It's a, that's a thing here as well. Take a look at our unofficial leaderboard right there. And Drew Benton, Florida's Drew Benton on top with four pounds and two ounces. And you saw that good one from Seth Fighter right there. Jonathan Dietz, first time classic competitor. Casey Smith, ditto, and Austin Felix, the top five. And Seth Fighter, what a win in a classic would mean for him. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Big old fat job keeper, come on. Oh. Yeah, no, it's the pinnacle of the sport of, that I love, bass fishing. It's everything, and it's not even about the money. The 300 grand's cool, but I, I, I'd, I'd be okay with winning it and n not getting the money as long as I got the trophy. Um, and I don't know if my wife would agree with that, but I'd be fine. I need one of those before I quit doing this, no doubt about it. The 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota at the Tennessee River is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Just when you think that you may have something figured out and dialed, something changes. Uh, this week is going to be no different. You know, Fort Loudon Teleco, it is a massive lake. I mean, this place um, just seems like you can run down it for miles and miles. If you catch seven or eight keepers a day, you've had a pretty dang good day. This is not going to be a 30, 40 keepers a day kind of a deal. You know, Fort Loudon is that normal Tennessee River, uh, kind of dingy, stained water. And then Tillico is a really clear water fishery. For the way that I want to fish um, and for smallmouths, I think that's probably the best place to put myself. You know, on a shallow fishery, especially a river system, these fish, I don't really think they bounce back and forth from deep to shallow. I think they, I think they live where they live. There's still an opportunity to catch a four pound smallmouth, so I think it's gonna be a mixed bag. If you fish less than 10 foot, if you fish over 15, you possibly could win it on smallmouth. This is a good lake. Uh, I don't think it's ever showed its true potential. I think if it does, it'll, it's a standout. Like I think it's a lot better than the fans have seen from our previous classic here, previous Elite Series event here. It is a good lake. Some of the big guns talking about uh, what they think of our playing field here and it uh, underscores something you've been saying all along. This is going to be a pick your poison kind of place. Depends on who you are, how you're going to how you're going to fish and what game you're going to fish. Definitely. We did hear that this tournament was going to fish a little bit small. We've had lower water conditions, even though we've got a little more more water in the system today and really looking at where our boats are at here on day number one. 
It's fair to say that 85% of the field is in Fort Loudon. There are two boats fishing in Teleco and a half dozen in the canal that divides the lake. So Fort Loudon, by far and away, we've always heard it gets the most, it has the most consistency. And this time around, it also has by far, at least here on day number one, the most pressure. Let's check in for, we've heard from him already today on tape, but let's get out live with Gerald Swindle, one of the fans favorites for decades now in the world of bass fishing. And Swindle said he's going to concentrate on Fort Loudon pretty much the entire event for the simple fact he said Teleco has never played oh, for a, a little, victory in the past. I don't know. We're going to get to measure him anyway. He could be, but I doubt it. But I'd love for him to be. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that, 14, 14 and a quarter, son. Large mouth. Huh? Honey, hey, we in the Classic. It ain't going to win the Classic, but it's a start to the Classic. Because it's telling me right now that the way I come in here to fish is catch them suspended over brush jerking. But right now, they seem to want to bite that jig on the bottom because I ain't throwing it much. I've caught two and missed one, so let's, let's see as long with this till the sun gets on up. Real important to to get those first clues to uh, he start out throwing a jerk bait and Hang no success, but fishing here. a jig on the bottom, getting a few yeah, bites. That's, that's what all these anglers are, are looking for, just a clue. Davey, I know you practice with Taku Ito. Didn't think yes, we'd see know. him fishing this way. Ah, you know, I, I didn't either, but it, this is the way he practiced. I, I thought he would totally be using his electronics, looking for those small mouth, but he nah, tried that in no. his pre-practice and no success. Well, yeah. And I asked him, do you like to throw crankbait? He said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he threw a spinnerbait, so I said, you like to throw a spinnerbait? And no. <laughs> this is his third classic. At best finish was last year, seventh place at Hartwell. Mm. Fourth year in the Elite Series for Takami Ito. He's got one big win at the St. Lawrence. That was a smallmouth effort there. Had a great day on the order with him on Wednesday. He's, he just had a tough practice, and he's, you know, so he's cool. had to switch up and focus yeah, on the largemouth, and it's not what he I wants to do, is. but sometimes he... I don't know. Just have to make a I change when you. Check. He fished two days, his first two days of pre-fish on Teleco, trying to catch a small Did mile. not happen. Did not happen. I think many anglers, okay. several anglers tried to make that happen. And finally, a lot of them yeah, looking at the long know. range forecast but just punted, know, said one more all in on largemouth. Yeah. Let's move Very down cool. to Very Lake cool. Teleco. Teleco and Fort Loudon both equal size. Robbie is on Lake Teleco with Jeff Gustafson and Austin Felix. Robbie? Yeah, it, it, it's Gussie's spot. That's when, when I was talking to the guys in the in the media day yesterday. Everybody was talking about Gussie's spot. Would I go there? Would I not? The answer is, yeah, there's some people that are going to come here, but they all consider it Gussie's spot. Now, he won the Elite Series event in this area, catching smallmouth. You see Jeff Gustafson uh, behind me. Uh, took him a while to get here. Again, later boat number, uh, limited boats, going to take a little while. The first man is the man to the right. Let's take a look at Austin Felix. Already has a fish, a keeper fish in the boat. He was here fast. Took him about 38 minutes. He caught his first keeper about nine minutes. He's caught three total, but only one keep. And he's moving around a little bit. He actually started closer to where Gustafson is. Um, but he's not the only one. How many people would be in Gussie's spot? Gussie, Felix, Corey Johnson over there to the left. And I, my boat driver. Brandon said he's already got two in the boat, uh, so two keepers for him. We knew this spot would be active, but when you talk to all these anglers, they don't know how long it's going to last. So if you don't know how long it's going to last, why don't you catch what you can and then maybe move to uh, step by. number two. But right now, out of these three boats, Gussie's the only one without a keeper. Just caught one right there. Don't know if this is a keeper. Forget Hold what on, I Robbie. said. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> hey, I love live television. Look at that. Ooh. Like 17 and three quarters. You're still right, Robbie. It's, I don't think this is going to be a keeper. <sighs> Missed it by a quarter inch. Close. Very close. Less right. than a quarter well. inch. Ow. Mm. 
No, you're still right, Robbie. So, Robbie, real quick, the, the, <laughs> the last time we were here, he dominated here, and there was a couple other competitors, competitors in there. I think Zaldane and a little bit with Carl Jacobson. But this is not from Hopefully not too many locals. This is not an unknown area. Way before Gussie won that tournament a couple of years ago, this has been the smallmouth area between Fort Loudon and Teleco. And we did. We saw pressure in this area in a local tournament last weekend, the weekend before, and the year that Gus, Gussie won here. Are you seeing local pressure there today, or is it just competitors in the Classic? Not yet. Um, on my drive down, instead of boating down, I drove down. I did see a lot of locals out there on the water, but no, not in this area. Um, there's one boat um, one boat over to the side, but he's bank fishing. He's over there on the riprap, so he's not dealing with the same type of stuff. You're exactly right, though. I mean, they were concerned about just how beat up it's been, and even my driver's like, man, there's people always in this area, and I said, yeah, but the difference is these guys are a little bit better at catching them. They see them. Um, yeah, they're going to go through their shorts, but these guys are better catching them as far as baits. We'll talk about that as it goes on. Every guy that I talked about in this area was using the same bait. So if you're using the same bait, what's going to be that little nuance, that subtle nuance that's going to make you, you know, have you catch them where maybe the 30 anglers that were here last Saturday, how couldn't they catch them? Or yeah. did they catch them? But I think we're going to. That's going to be interesting. Gonna I am. Um, the, 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 the meat, I think, if where Gussie is, and that's kind of what surprises me, Mark, is the the deep part when you look at it on the graph is where Gussie is Felix and Corey are not in that deeper that pocket when I talked to Austin Felix earlier this week he said I didn't know exactly where Gussie was he said I saw this spot I saw it but I didn't know where his spot was he said I've got like a, a hundred yard stretch that I want to move and he didn't think that it would be a problem because typically the uh, current is whipping through here it's not they're not generating power so it's pretty calm but he thought guys would be able to make a rotation but as still as the water is right now they're able to spot like and uh, sit on their spots if they want to. Robbie, thank you. Good stuff from down there on Teleco Lake. The majority of our anglers still on Fort Loudon, but uh, that was that was quite interesting. Of course, all eyes on Jeff Gustafson because of his win here on the Elite Series back in 2021. Again, back then as well, it was an 18-inch limit. So you get five smallmouth, you're in the competition, that's for sure. Yeah, and for the most part, Gussie had this to himself, fishing a Z-Man jerk shad. Tamiki style had a, uh, I believe it was a quarter ounce smeltinator jig head in right. that, catching most of his fish vertical, just a typical walleye fishing 101 being from Canada. And the biggest thing that we talked about in that tournament, Davey, so many of the locals said, yes, you can do damage here, but to do it for four days, catching four limits over 18 inches, Pretty incredible because he defied a lot of the odds that the locals said could not be done. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. We were down there covering him during that tournament on the water with Gussie. On day four, I was sitting there. Ashley and I were sitting there waiting on him to get there. And I thought, man, it's going to be really tough for him to catch fish on this fourth day again the way he has the previous days. But he was able to do it. The good thing for him here this week is he has a plan B and a yes. plan C. And that plan B and plan C, we're going to set it up. He has two schools in Teleco, again, that he is not wanting to bang on. And he said, they're big, they're dumb, and I'm left alone. Okay. Ooh. Come on. Seen a few. Caught one real nice one that wasn't quite long enough. Um, so, a few fish around. Z, Robbie couldn't see him, but Drew Benton is on the yes. Loudon side of the canal. And we just had our first four pounder from Matt Robertson. Hmm. Matt Robertson predicting it would take 69 pounds That's, to I win saw for that. three days. That's bold. That's <laughs> that is bold. Here we go. One feels. Oh, oh my gosh. That was a big one. God, idiot. Wow. That was a big one. A little like a five pounder. It looked really big. Did he just try to boat flip it? Man. 
Mm. Maybe not. He just didn't even hardly bite it. I just barely just felt him nudge it and obviously didn't get it that good. I got a small, I put a smaller bait on because I sort of got denied on the bigger bait a couple times and I probably should not be boat flipping them on that little or smaller hook. <sighs> Cannot do that. There's so much pressure. He's he's the boss of that canal. <laughs> well, I mean, he proved and that. There's a lot of bosses on he different lakes throughout the country ago, right now. But <laughs> there's so much pressure on him right now. Because it is the Bassmaster Classic. Hard not to do that. So this is a, a live look of his Hummingbird Mega view. This is incredible. Looking at exactly what Gussie is looking at here with his graph. Boy, just keep that up. Yeah, so I'm just going along here just holding my minnow bait off the bottom a little bit and just kind of hope there's rocks down there and um, basically when I go over these rocks you know a lot of the fish are just sort of hiding on the back sides so and there's not a lot of, there's a lot less current than nor there normally is here right now it, I think once this wind gets cranked up it's gonna pick up and it'll probably help help the fishing but um, might have a fish coming up here, um, but yeah, here we go. Just a looker. My knot might not be right on my bait right now from that. I just sort of dropped it back down there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just kind of sliding along here and hoping to just float this minnow bait over top of them and. Obviously, a couple of years ago, they're a little easier to catch. They've seen a few of these baits, I think, now, so they're not quite as easy to trick. But there's a few fish around, at least, so I'm going to just keep, just got to keep sliding around and can't afford to lose them like that. That's no good. Well, just had another one check me out. Come on. That's awesome. That is really good. Yes, yeah, it is. So you, you can tell how dialed in he is. When that first fish, since he was talking us through it, turned away from his bait, he said, my knot must not be right. He reeled it up, and it was it, it's so important for his bait to be horizontal, perfectly horizontal uh, in that current. And it depends on how much current and how much is pulling your line, how you want that bait to actually set. Here he comes. Here it comes. Hmm. Patience is a big thing in fishing in general, but in the Bassmaster Classic, to sit in this canal and see multiple fish just look at your bait and swim away, and to stick with your strategy, your game plan, uh, it, it's difficult. And I think a lot of the people that are in this canal with him this morning may peel off as and, as time wears on a little. And listen, the one one thing that he said right there, especially a lot of our locals, guys like Mark Malden, that gives that gave us a lot of information throughout the years how all the lakes set up is one of the big things in that canal is having current, having water movement, shifting back and forth, and just getting them active. You know, a lot of the, the really big sacks, local sacks that have been caught here in the last few weeks, 22 to 23 and a half pounds in local tournaments, um, a lot of those fish in this canal were caught on umbrella rigs, something our anglers obviously cannot do. Yeah. Um, and and Gussie made the comment, he said, you know, throughout practice, that current would slacken off, and those fish would definitely slack off with that current. You get some water flow later today with the winds that are expected, you could see things. But, gosh, you know how important that bass was that he yeah. lost because he said today his plan was to burn the canal down and then go to those schools that he felt did not get found in Teleco. Over to Seth Fighter, got a good one, saw that earlier. Good one in the boat, four pounds plus.
Yes! Let's go, dude. Yeah, let's freaking go, dude. It's like, Seth cranking OG Slim crankbait. Had a lot better practice uh, on Wednesday than pre-fish. It did. Had a, had a big day on uh, Wednesday. Going to do a lot of shallow cranking. Junk, dude, come on. Said he's going to back it Get up him. with a little bit of Not bad, spinner bait fishing him. late in the day. Come on. It was good to see him. He was, good call coming he was back. a little disappointed about his three days of yes. practice. Yes, yes. Uh, had a lot better day on Wednesday. And when certainly just, a good start this morning. That one just under three put him in the lead right now with six pounds and 13 ounces. Oh, That's he is keyed up. He I'm is. Here. Oh, he's, he's ready to go. Tight. My oh, goodness. Look at that up view. and whatnot, Tommy. <laughs> oh, yes, and whatnot. Seth Fighter on top by uh, the better part of a pound over Tyler Rivette, the winner of our first Bassmaster Elite Series event this season. Drew Benton off to a quick start today. Matt Robertson with a big one in the live well. And Corey Johnson, we saw him down there on Teleco. Plenty more to come from the 2023 Academy Sports and Adores Bassmaster Classic. I predict to win it's going to be somewhere in that three-day total 45 to 48-pound range. We we could see more than that. I say after three days, 50, 51, 50 to 52. 18, 18 pounds all day. This classic, you're, I don't think you're ever out of it. Um, someone could have a tough day and, and still come back and win. You have to be competitive. I still, you know, regardless, I don't see a guy coming. If you're not, 10th place or higher going into the last day of the Classic, there's about a 99% chance you will not win the Classic. Anglers giving their predictions on what they think can win the Bassmaster Classic this year, the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors, the 53rd running of this event in Knoxville, Tennessee, and as you're bringing into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. The big deal of this classic has been what will the weight be? What lake is going to factor? Will largemouth, smallmouth? Welcome into the studios we were talking about at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge. All those different factors that these anglers have been trying to game plan months ago leading up to it. And then all of the practice days have been completely different than what the weather we'll see today, Saturday, and Sunday. As we take it over to this playing field, this is a, a big playing field. You kind of have to pick your poison if you want. But we came to this event a little different than we thought. 2019, the water was really high in Knoxville, and they were bringing it down every day of the tournament. 2021 for the Elite Series event, it was low, not as low as it was coming into this week, though. With all the warming trends throughout the year uh, so far in the southeast, we thought maybe this would be a little further ahead. Not the case. Low 50s for the water temperatures. So setting your fantasy fishing lineup, you had to kind of look at the weather and see cold practices, warm uh, tournament days, who you're going to pick. For bucket A, Stetson Blaylock, I, even though he didn't have a great showing here in 2021, uh, he's got two top three finishes in the last two March Classics, 2020 and 2022. He's been in the top three of both of those. He just is really good in March and April. I'd expect him to show up at some point today. Lee livesey has been on a dominant roll, four wins in the last three years, and really shows up. He showed up in both of the Classics he's fished in, in top ten fashions. Matt Robertson, uh, I think Such mentioned a four-pounder earlier for him. This is the Tennessee River, and anytime you have a guy who's used to those drawdown conditions, he lives on the opposite end of the the Tennessee River. He just knows that cold cranking, the cold, big swim baits at times as well. I'm looking for Matt Robertson to do well. Will Davis, he fishes on a river system most of his life, the Coosa River, a little different here this week, but he is poised. A great start to his rookie season on the Elite Series. He wants to be like Brian Kirchel and following those footsteps, winning the Classic as a nation angler. And I think in that last bucket, you have a lot of opens anglers, college anglers. I think JT Tompkins is going to go under the radar this week. He fishes a lot, stays on the water consistently, and really is mature beyond his years. I'm looking for Tompkins to have a good showing in his first Classic. Then when we take it to Mercury Drain the Lake, I had to use a couple big names here that I thought maybe would show up in the biggest sport or the biggest event of our sport. Gerald Swindle, Keith Combs getting in through the opens was huge for him. I picked Lee Livesey once again. Brandon Card, 
the only true local here. He lives in North Carolina now, but he spent many, many years on the banks of the Knoxville, Tennessee, and the Tennessee River. Brock Mosley, David Mullins, Kenta Kamir, and Mark Frazier. Some of these guys are based on technique-wise, but also some just show up this month. March and April is huge for them. Make sure you join us. Uh, we want to we wanna see how you're watching Bassmaster Live throughout the week. Send us the photos, and you can do so on social media by using the hashtag Bassmaster Classic. Check out the QR code there. We'd love to share how and where you're watching the Bassmaster Classic. Ronnie, good stuff. Uh, I'm wondering uh, kind of how much the locals, how many how many votes did the locals draw so far? I mean, how, how many picked the locals? You got a, got a percentage of that? More or less, let's just say, than you thought it would be? I, I think it's a, a lot less coming into the event than we thought because of the situation Brandon Card's dealt with. His, his condition with Bell's palsy and stuff has a little people worried how he'd fish, but he's fished excellent this year. I'd expect him to show up at some point today. So he's one of the locals. David Mullen's a high pick as well. Ronnie, Matt Roberts is looking pretty good. He just caught our bigger fish a four pound four ouncer and he's taking over the lead <laughs> all right well great to have you with us here it's bass master live we're about to wrap up our second hour of the eight hours or so that these uh, 55 anglers are fishing on day one 55 full field fishes again on day number two and we cut it to 25 after after two days of competition you want to be here on sunday that's how you get a shot at the championship robbie floyd was just down uh, at teleco lake it gives a good report from jeff gustafson and now we've got some bonus coverage Taking a look at Corey, yeah, Johnston Corey Johnson right there. And, Davey, you made a comment seeing Corey Johnston here fishing in between the lakes, Loudon and Teleco. He had a really solid practice on Wednesday. He did. Uh, was very, let's say, uh, optimistic yesterday about uh, his chances. And if he get this gets this one in, which, ooh. Uh, oh, yeah, man. that'll help the cause. Mm. And he's one of those guys that I just really think, it, not just Ot Defoe in 19, but other anglers that did well in that tournament were catching a few smallmouth a day. And that's his plan is to try to catch a few smallmouth and then go largemouth fishing. I'm not so sure I would leave what's going on right now. Right. <laughs> you know, catching four-pound smallmouth, not too bad either. But um, I like his plan of catching a few smallmouth and then going and then uh, – Catching largemouth. Gussie's got a plan on being there that first day and then leaving. I, I don't think that it can handle the three days of pressure here in the Classic. Dude, that was a good, good yeah, right there. honker right there. No doubt about that. Going to get back into Loudon right now with Taku Ito. And again, fair to say that 85 to 90% of our field is fishing in Loudon. You don't see all of the competitors, but Loudon absolutely getting a throttling here early in the Bassmaster Classic. Davey, did he get many bites in practice? Not a lot. Not a lot. But he was, you know, he was doing different things because he knew that he had to. Um, the one cool thing, even when he's up throwing these shallow water crankbaits and spinnerbaits, he's watching his forward-facing sonar right. all day, every day. Okay. Yes. Taku four of them, do it. by the way. Yep. Four yep. of them, can by the do way. It. Two in the front and two in the back. Really? Yes. I think That's, nope. That it's makes keeper. me cross-eyed to try to look at four forward-facing <laughs> sonars. And yep. In one boat. And contact E.T. with that many yeah. electronics. Yes. Ooh, yes. It's like the Taku NORAD. I, I knew he had something going on in the rear of the boat because I've Taku seen you guys, I'm sure, have noticed, too. Taku can use bait casting. Very Make it good. cast behind the boat. Always I don't like bait cast because uh, Taku cannot drone cast. Spinning, easy to cast, but bait casting, very hard for me, but I can do it. Don't let him trick you there. Very, very accurate. Oh, yeah, so around the uh, yes. yes. Yeah, Taku stayed at the house for a week. Taku fishes a lot more bait casters than he yes. talks about. Yes. I was, I was very impressed. I, I will tell you, that you would not think this. Taku wet weighs about 76 pounds, <laughs> right? Yes. His intake is amazing. <laughs> Really? I, Tommy, as you would say, he could throw down. No doubt. Well, but I didn't, I didn't So his wife is here that. with him this week, first time in U.S., and uh, he had some homemade rice things that he was eating. Right. I tell you, they look good, but I never got a chance to taste one. 
you didn't have that boarding house reach. As, as he, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, those really look good. And I don't know if he couldn't understand my English or just like, you're not getting any of these. Defending champ Jason Christie. I don't know. Just some thing. <laughs> Good look at how low that water is. There is not as much wood in the water as we saw in years past. I don't think he'll make it. A lot of those size fish, that 13 to 14 inch fish, a lot of those I saw really? on Wednesday. The lake is doing well with a lot of these you know, numbers of smaller fish. How nice. Or one four. Keeper. That made it. One, one four. One four. Not too far from the region where he found success in 2021. He, you know, there's a couple of different sections of this lake that we see a lot of anglers normally, you know, get in. He seems to be in a little different part of the section. You know, it's always just a little more north than other people. Get our first look at John Cox. Mm -hmm. John Cox from Florida, shallow water specialist is his reputation. Yeah, and really one of the things that a lot of our anglers have struggled with on Loudon is finding. Yeah. Yeah dirty water it's been a lot clearer this time around not the case john cox just, definitely finding here, some color so early this morning i mean there just seemed like there was a lot of fish at the mouth so just guessing this is where they were going to head to which they might be still working their way in there we go got one there we go oh stay on there baby stay on there Come here, come here, come here. Got him. There's number one. <laughs> there we go. Got the old Fritz side. Sorry, I just couldn't put it down. I, I was going by all that nice stuff, wanting to throw spinnerbait and swim the jig. And oh man, nice keeper. Right, let's put a. Put a cold float on him, just in case. As much as he likes to sight fish and Gosh, they should finesse just fish, wind look looking for, yeah, he, he, he enjoys this I'm too, yeah. You. There's no shoulders, but there's a tumble. No. He yeah. was third here in 2021, so. That's a nice thing. Man to watch. John Cox ripping his boat to pieces at Seminole <laughs> a couple <laughs> weeks ago and said, I can't travel very far due to all the aluminum I had to have welded on the all of the boat. <laughs> Heard his fuel mileage. Matt Robertson of Kentucky, man on top. Good healthy lead there as it stands right now. Ahead of Seth Fighter, who got a good early start. Already won this year, Tyler Rivette. Drew Benton in fourth. Jay Shakura, our rookie of the year from last year. Also a century belt owner after his first year. Hey, hey, we got some Tennessee, Brandon Lester, some Tennessee anglers, and Brandon Lester said if he wins, there's going to be some Rocky Top implications. Right here in Knoxville, in my home state, I'm going to have a ton of friends and family here this week. You know, it's, it's funny, if you follow football, Tennessee beat Alabama this year in college football for the first time in a lot of years. They tore the, the goalpost down and they marched it down uh, the strip over here and I, I promise you if I win that trophy this week we're marching that trophy right down that same strip I'm not gonna throw it in the river like they did but we're marching that trophy right down that strip on Sunday night I promise you He is your champion ladies and gentlemen Live coverage of the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota is sponsored by Humminbird about to swing into the third hour of coverage on this day one of the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic from Knoxville, Tennessee. Seen some good action so far. We got 55 anglers out there today and the man from Kentucky, Matt Robertson, who declared to uh, some of us standing around at uh, the Night of Champions the other night that he would be the guy oh, he hoisting looked good. the trophy. He looked, no, he did not look good. Oh, he, he looked fantastic. fantastic. Absolutely. As good. always, Matt Robertson on top with eight pounds and four ounces. Seth Fighter in second place. We saw him get off to a great start. Good keeper to start his day. He's at almost seven pounds. And Tyler Rivette 
fishing in his second classic. Six pounds even has got himself in third place. And Tyler Rivette from Raceland, Louisiana. What He has raced out to a great start in his bass fishing in this year of 2023. Arrived at Lake Okeechobee, oh, yeah. the first stop of the year. And look at that, he came pretty close to wiring that thing. Never never worse than third place. Yeah, and really just needed a break. You get, get to listen to a lot of his roommates. Really, Hank Cherry been a mentor of his. And Hank Cherry told Davey Height and myself, look, Tyler Rivette is the real deal. Just needs a break. Well, he has definitely broke through the last month in the Bassmaster Elite Series. He was going to be, uh, I would imagine, the leader in our progressive angler of the year stats right now. We're going to get some confirmation of that. These are official. And yes, there's Tyler Rivette on top. Carl Jockamson of Australia. Got a big Australia contingent. Has made the trip all the way up here to the States to follow him and his first, the first Australian to ever fish the Bassmaster Classic. Joey C. Fuentes won uh, down there at Lake Seminole. Brandon Cobb of South Carolina and Brandon Card, one of the guys we've got a camera with in the boat today. Uh, the uh, North Carolina angler who has his origins right here in the Knoxville area. That's your progressive Elite Series Angler of the Year. A lot of people say which is more important, Classic or Angler of the Year. You ask about 10 people, you get 10 different opinions, or five different opinions on each side of that issue. Get back down to Lake Teleco, Jeff Gustafson, just outside of that canal that connects Teleco with Fort Loudon Reservoir. It's kind of got a drift with it, and I'm just do a drift. It's about 50 yards or so, 100 yards, and then go back up and do it again so I've done four or five the first couple I had more life the last couple I haven't had as much but I got a few different ones to little rocks to kind of slide over and just sort of try and keep uh, keep hitting the the sweet spots here get a good look at that mega live view right there with Gustafson kind of something we've been waiting for to be able to show. One thing that's very, alive. Zona, one thing that's very cool about this tournament and the way it's progressing, the way the weather was and the way these smallmouth are set up, you can see guys fishing this way. Yeah. And there's reports right now that Brandon Cobb okay. out there is catching fish on a buzz bait. So wow. this, this tournament is going to flip on its head by the time we get through two more days of tournament fishing. So I've had the, the Mega Live this year where we could look at it a little bit, but it's no fun when I don't have a bait down there that you can see the fish reacting to like Gussie's got here. But it's really cool what he's doing. We see, we have seen for the last two years, you see his bait going down there. Um, Angler's using this technology, but Gussie, what he's doing, you don't see those fish until you get over them and they come up right. from behind these rocks. So I, I think that's why a lot of anglers hole. haven't had success doing this. He, what he's doing is different than what we see throughout the year, like a Tyler Rivette at Okeechobee and, and on, you know, the smallmouth fisheries that we go up north. You see those fish the, the old time. On Here again we go. Now and there was a fish right there at his bait. Yeah. Boy, they are not dumb. You could tell they ease off the bottom, take a look and kind of sag back down. He said those two schools that he has in Teleco, he said they will race to get it. Yeah, there's times, I mean, the, the forward facing Megalive is here to stay, no doubt. But there's times when it's somewhat disappointing. How many fish come up and look at your bait and they just swim away? There again, the patience to, to keep doing that when that's happening that Gussie has is incredible also. The nice thing is we, we obviously know this area very well from covering them for the entire tournament the last time we were here, just isolated boulders, isolated little rock piles. These fish would kind of get behind. There was more bait in the canal the last time we were here. You would see pods of bait on his 2D sonar. You all mentioned that it's current dependent, what he's doing here. Explain that a little bit more. It, it basically, it's almost like St. Clair River or almost, late, you know, St. Lawrence River. Those fish will get position they'll set up behind that you know that those isolated rocks they they tend not only here on any body of water that's current dependent 
they'll they'll get loose. They'll get away. They'll scatter okay. off of you know the key rock piles that he's been focusing on. That c current provides a, an edge, a seam there, and those fish will set up right at that edge, and, and you know they're predators, and they will you know a, attack from that. The the other thing is, I truly think it's when you have more current, when that fish comes and looks at your bait and and, and leaves that yeah. slack water into the current, they commit more rather than just easing out they, and they just easing right back in. They don't have time to think about it. Yes. They, yes. they got to move. They, they got to move and they, yeah. they make that commitment. The current here is dependent upon the Fort Loudon Dam. There is no water pass through the Teleco Dam. All the current right. depends on the TDA management at the Fort Loudon Dam. That's the canal. That's what the canal is for. He's just outside of it. Got to meet the whole TVA management at oh, the yeah. Night of the Champions. Great guys. They were awesome they to talk usually, to. And they, they Last time they had a, a, a thing here at the Expo. Yep. So to visit with them. They've been very fisherman friendly yes. uh, around these events. And that's good to see when you law enforcement is here to be friendly with the fishermen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. And they have certainly been that. Yeah, that's maybe, yeah. Boy, we are gonna. So we're just sort of going over one of these little cracks here right now. That's usually where the fish will kind of come out of. You see his bait right there over that crack that he's yep. referring to. And what you want to see is a fish up here. Between the wind and the current now, it's a little bit challenging to just kind of stay on top of it, but. It is going to be interesting in some of the tournaments that we have on the schedule this year, being able to have that technology. We've talked about it. Forward face and sonar is fun to do if you're the one doing it, if you're the one commentating or watching it. It sucks. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> but to have that is that oh, yeah. for us yes. and most of all the viewer is will be awesome throughout the season. Instead of just looking at their backside with their head down, you know that's yes. what they're doing, but now we can actually look yeah, at a, what they're looking at. That's a huge improvement. Really. Yes. No, no offense to these guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a huge improvement. So this is three tournaments we've covered, three of situations like this. It's I, incredible. I guess, I guess this is locked in for the rest yeah, of the Yeah, when it happened at Okeechobee and Seminole, it's like, oh, uh, it's, it's going to happen everywhere. How about David Mullins what? fishing in the canal right there? Oh. Sure is. It's a good catch. It would not think he'd be fishing that way in this tournament. No, you wouldn't think. Atrocious practice. Really? He said it, he said it was an atrocious practice for him. Again, one thing to keep your eye on in this tournament, 14 inches for your large mouth, 12 inches spots, correct? Yes, yes. And 18 for a small Yeah. That was a beautiful smallmouth that Gussie had to release 17 and oh. 7 eighths of an inch long. Oh, the classic, you know, letting those fish go like that are just, but they got to be 18 to be legal to possess. One thing to watch with your largemouth fishermen, guys like Swindle, Brandon Lester, Brandon Card, and Hackney, Christy talking about it. Definitely found flurries throughout practice. It would be just dead, just slow as could be like it is right now, and then boom, Little three, four, five fish in a row. Okay. First jerk bait bite. Now second jerk bait bite. And I got to ride with Swindle on the final day of practice and kind of see how he approached it. And he's got a couple key areas, I'd say, no more than mm. three. He's in what he considered his maybe safety or backup area, probably receive a lot less pressure than what his main area he thought. Uh, different clarities of water in those two things, so it almost seems like he's doing totally opposites, but he's not. It's, it's the same kind of routine in both. One thing that was really interesting about his areas is a lot of bait fish waiting, like Jason Christie said right off the rip of live today, those bait fish are in those ditches so close to the to maybe riprap or uh, the back end of a creek. And if that warm weather pushes them there, they're gonna be trapped and it could be a feeding frenzy. He said, if Swindle expects in some of his areas that we should actually big, visibly big see big schoolers soon. Hooked up here with a good one. 
Wow. Okay. Help right there. That mm -hmm. gets us on the board. Why don't we start to move in the right direction, you know? And this is a baby to what I've been catching here. That's why I'm kind of puzzled, man. I just don't think the fish, the style that I'm fishing, they hadn't bit yet, but they will. He's he's a pound three quarter. Just give him a pound three quarter. I thought he had one hook, but he had two, so. Mm, I seen what I did wrong now. Dude, I got tied in on them stumps real shallow. I think they might have moved up a little bit. Showed you a almost, you know, three and a half pounder from practice when we got off the water, Davey, and it was doing exactly what he's doing there, but he was cool. farther out. And like he said, they may have moved to the next piece of cover closer. Yeah, and I think a lot of the low water <laughs> has held a lot of that out. You, yeah. Besides the, look, the temps were brutal last weekend. But, so you combine the the twenty degree nights that we were having and low water, it just doesn't seem like the biomass has moved. Yeah, and you also expect maybe to see those smallmouth move a little sooner than the large mouth, right. but we have not seen that mm -hmm. yet. And Gerald Swindle now with two two keepers in his live well. We're getting back down to Teleco Lake. That's where Robbie Floyd is, and Robbie is with Corey Johnston. What's the scene right now, Robbie? Well, it's safe to say that Corey Johnson is not going to be able to put his power poles down because the wind is blowing him into that rocky point, but it's been all good for him. And the Bass Track's not showing up because I'm looking on there, I'm seeing lower numbers. He already has a limit. He had a limit within the first hour, and it's a mixed bag as well. You saw earlier the smallmouth that he did catch. The one fish he caught before then, uh, his second fish of the day, was actually bigger than that. It's wow. a four-pounder at least. So a three-and-a-half, a, a four-pounder. He's around the right kind of fish, and he's not using the Dubiki rig in this similar area. You can see him over to the right, and uh, he's throwing a jerk bait. And in this point alone is where he caught most of them. He went to another uh, point just behind me here, uh, caught a large mouth. So mixed bag, and, and that may be even question. After he caught that good size three pound small mouth, was that big one a large mouth? He said, no, nope, it was a small, but I wouldn't mind a big one to jump up. But you can tell he's happy. He has about 12 and a half pounds in the first hour of fishing. Now it's time to catch all of those big ones. Goodness, Robbie, that's real. Yeah. That uh, sort of shakes up the leaderboard for sure. The four pound lead over Matt Robertson, whom we thought had a two pound lead himself. In this one earlier today, watching the majority of his damage, listening to Robbie right there, done with a jerk bait. Boy, to already have a limit huge mm. for Corey Johnston, who, as you say, Davey Height, not really even fishing his primary gig it's funny we talked about this this morning that you know Corey said i'd like to catch two smallmouth and then go do something different that i think the way i'll catch most of my weight and uh it's kind of oh. hard to leave them when they're biting yeah this i would good. say Corey will <laughs> dig right in <laughs> yeah. here today yeah maybe spread his elbows a little bit like <laughs> right. Jason's yeah. yeah that's not a three pounder. all bossed well, up in that canal <laughs> that's a four pounder all day that's long. a good one Corey fishing his fourth classic. Best finish was 11th place at uh, Ray Roberts in Texas in 2021. Davey, he may not, Corey may not end up going to what he told us that he was going to. He said he was going to stop in the canal and he, he might not ever leave. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me. Don't Boy, these photos, us. Yeah, Tommy. Send us I, those I, photos. We, 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 yeah. We, well, I can't wait to roll them out. We usually we'll take some, anything. Some we'll doozies in here. Right. I will. Yeah. We want to see all your photos. How are you enjoying the classic? What are you doing what on are you this cooking? day? Yeah. You know, yeah. show what are you us what you're got, doing got while you're watching. March Madness it. games tonight. Boy, last night was rough, man. Oh, <laughs> rough one for the <laughs> SEC. I can tell you that. Rough. Rough. My goodness. Gosh, it was a good game, though. Michigan State hung in there. Right until the end. We got plenty more to come as we swing into the third hour of fishing with our 55 anglers out here. Knoxville, Tennessee for the classic. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota is sponsored by Humminbird.
into the third hour of fishing here. Day number one of three days of fishing. 55 anglers on the first two days, and then we cut it to 25. Matt Robertson on top, but we know that that is uh, not exactly yes. what the, 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 the picture is out there. We just learned that Corey Johnston has more like 12 pounds right now. That is unbelievable. And uh, man, yeah. Corey Johnston, the guy, if he gets around a lead, he doesn't, he sinks his teeth in. I mean, this guy gets three or four top tens every year. The one He's a tough guy. thing to really watch with Corey Johnston fishing down there in the canal between Loudon and Teleco, he is right across from Tyler Ravette, who has unofficially moved into our top five. So the canal, as we predicted early today, getting a lot of pressure. The majority of that pressure right now, just south of Knoxville. Fort Loudon, by far and away, getting throttled. Going to get on the water right now with John Cox, one bass in his live well. John Cox again finished third in that Elite Series tournament back here in 2021. <laughs> yeah, and one of the things Cox talked to us about, we saw him catch a lot of fish around that old railroad bridge. Yeah. Oh, man. He said, man, the water is Stay too there. clean there this time around. Hoping gets a little color. Stay on there. He's got a fish and a piece of wood here. It's going up, but we've been there. <laughs> <laughs> got him in the stick. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> oh my gosh, let me put these poles down. Man, that was crazy. I saw that little stick there. I was getting ready to run it over, and I was like, ah, I better throw my Fritz side by it. Oh, this is exciting, guys. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited. <laughs> it is a big stick. <laughs> see, I'm pretty sure he's 14. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Another nice two pounder. Boy, look how dirty that water is. You can't even see them fishing there. <laughs> oh, I love this stuff. Love it. Number. Yeah. <laughs> Number two. Where'd you get that one on? That was another one on the Fritz side. You know, it's so it's crazy that, you know, here we are, 2023. I have my own signature series crankbait rod with the Boo Garcia winch reel. And uh, I'm here in the Bassmaster Classic crankbaiting. It just it's it's just it's unbelievable. Like I don't I don't know. <laughs> I didn't even have a I didn't even throw a crankbait four years ago. <laughs> Thanks for my buddy Brad. He uh, took me out on Murray one day when it was, should have been snowing. It was so cold and it was drizzling. And he's like, you need to learn how to throw this Fritz side. And he showed me. <laughs> And I don't, I just throw it out and reel it in. I don't know if there's much to it, but kind of feather it along. You know, it's real silent. You know, it's got no rattles in it. Just, and that's the same one I caught him last time on here. Oh, it's exciting. That's your Bass Pro Shops top lure, John Absolutely. Cox right there. Tommy, you'll like this. I asked John, I said, kind of walk me yeah, through there your was another. There was another stick I was going to throw to him, and I saw that one. It's crazy when we first came through, it wasn't, wasn't really, uh, I didn't see any of them. You made the comment that it was really key to not overthink this tournament. I said, John, I don't want this to sound the wrong way. Do you ever overthink a tournament? He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> the one angler, I guarantee you, does not overthink. No. Hey. He doesn't even think about where he's going to stay. Spend exactly. his nights at the tournament until the first day of practice. I'm with yeah. overthinking is you usually wind up over out thinking yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get a really good look, though, at from where John Cox was, and he said, finding that dirtier water so critical. You can definitely tell Swindle and 
Hackney and Brandon. Yeah, the water is clean on Fort Loudon. Yes. All of those anglers you're looking at right there, fishing, living on Fort Loudon today, except Polinick said he might pull the pin. A lot more current where Greg Hackney is. He is way up a hidey a hole. hole. A little hidey hole. A lot more current there. Hackney said he had some really big jig bites in practice. That's dangerous because I believe earlier, at least, the first few fish we saw from Swindle was just a farther out, closer to the main lake in that same hidey hole area. And so when you get a couple hammers like that divvying up the couple brush piles or places you're going to pitch a jig, it's not, not the best. And we, we talked about at the top of the show, Ronnie, this, what we got to see, the, what we got to see the first time we were here and we really got to see it when Gussie won this body of water does not handle pressure, pressure yeah. very well at all it's almost like what you catch in areas like that they don't it's where they they're at doesn't replenish good right. that's what's so pr surprising about the canal where Gussie's at it, it seems to replenish better than anywhere right. else on these two lakes by far and that's you know we all you know had our weights that we think it'll take to win this that's why they're lower than you might expect because none of the three of us, four or five of us, uh, think that somebody can catch, you know, 18 to 20 every single day. They're going to have that one day where they where it slides. stump their toe yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yep. Almost always happens. Which is for, for a classic angler, Davey, positive or negative to you, you don't ever want to have a low day, but knowing that other people could have their low day, everyone that means everyone's kind of still in it. You always will have a shot, even if you struggle one of the three days. Yes. Starting to see a few more boats get into Teleco. I think we have actually in the lake itself, not the canal. I think we've got four anglers in Teleco. Wind starting to pick up in a few places. Supposed to get a big shot of rain tomorrow. So will that have an effect on these smaller creeks like we're looking at where Cox is? Will that have uh, it definitely will if we get uh, saw some red, some severe. You know, the, the yeah. rains we had on Wednesday were were just you know, light General, rains all yeah. day. It really didn't. But like, man, why is downpours definitely will. Up here? Like. Oh, Brandon Card hooked up and lost him one there. Brandon Card said actually his home lake being Norris, what I think is 45 minutes north of here. But he said throughout the pandemic, he fished on Fort Loudon a ton where he really, really learned it. And it was interesting to talk to, to Brandon earlier this week. He said, man, he goes, you don't understand this time of year, we should be getting more water in this system. He said water levels, not today, but water levels early this week. He said those are january water levels and he said when when you put another foot to a foot and a half in here how many areas it actually opens up on these shallow flats like we saw the last time we were here and, and he said it really it, he didn't care about water color he was just so concerned that that water level was gonna it basically it just make this body of water fish so much smaller than years past when we were here I totally agree. I, on the Coosa River and the Tennessee River, those two in particular, water clarity, water temperature, uh, moon phase, they all affect the spawn a little bit. But these fish in these river systems, the largemouth don't ever really move up to spawn until that water level comes up. Yes. It's like they know <laughs> it, it just does, it can't happen until that time of year when TVA holds you know, they hold that water level up. Yeah, and, and for our viewers on Bassmaster Live, maybe if you've not been to Loudoun and Teleco, even though it is the Tennessee River, it's not your typical, it's not, it doesn't have those crazy expansive flats like a, a Gunnersville or a Pickwick that you'll right. see yeah. reload every single day. It just doesn't have that type of environment. A 
get back to Jeff Gustafson, one of those anglers Arizona just mentioned, Intellico. Boy, we saw him catch a lot of fish on that little spot. A couple years, look at that. Oh, right he's getting, moved or something. Those fish are up off the bottom. Yeah, they're, they're rushing. Wow. Has he bailed? No. Oh, that's a little hornet's nest of them right there. Uh -huh. Yes. That's what you want. So you're seeing two fish. One fish right there is suspended, call it 20 feet of water. You'll notice when he turns his trolling. Yeah. You see, there's the that's fish, the fish fighting coming yep. up. Be a bass. Yep. It's a big fish. It's yeah. A, it's a, it's the a keeper. The return that you got on, that was a yeah. good one. Yes. Oh, yeah. I think it's a nice big one. Mm. What? Yes, one down, baby. Wow. 14 to go. Whew. That's a proper one. <laughs> Is that a mean mouth? I God. think it looks, when I first saw it, I, I thought it was a walleye. Yeah. I think it is a mean and mouth. a half incher. Sweet. He's a big one. Okay. All right. I noticed the color too. I think it was a mean mouth. Looked that like it. To bite. Man, man. A lot of our local friends passed um, us pictures of big mean mouth that were caught here the last month. Want to know what that is? Go to Bassmaster.com. Yeah, scan the code. There, like they were way up high, and then I let it just fall down to the bottom, which usually they don't like that, and it just followed it down and. Boom. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah. Without Mega Live, he doesn't uh, catch that fish. No. What he just said. Uh, way off the bottom and they couldn't get it to bite and tried dropping his bait down. Could see his bait go down and the fish follow it right down. Looks like the movie Predator hunting his prey. Yes. Wow. And it's so much better to be able to see your prey when you're hunting it now uh, yeah. with <laughs> the advancements we have in electronics. Boy, if he'd have landed that other one, he'd be sitting on oh my gosh. two fish that weigh about eight and a half pounds yes. right now. And the one other that was an eighth of an inch short right. of 18 inches hooked up again. Nice. Oh, come on, baby. Be a keeper. Oh, that's close. It's a fat one, but he's not that long. Oh. That one's got to be 18. Jerk shot. <laughs> Z-Man jerk shot. Oh, yeah, Smeltinator jig head. Oh, yeah. 19 incher. Wow. Boom. Two down, 13 to go. I like his confidence. He's not saying two down, three more to go. He's thinking about Sunday. Hey, he was, listen, good one right there for Gussie. Slow start this morning, losing a big one earlier in our broadcast here on Bassmaster Live. Backing it up with two over 18 inch small mouth, possibly a mean mouth. But man, if he could save those schools in Teleco and not touch them today would yeah. be huge for this Canadian angler. It's amazing. And we talked about windows and opportunities, how they'll come so quickly. He was... Keep, stay on it strong here, but good start. Wind's gonna make this a little more challenging today to, you know, I really wanna get right on top of them and drop my bait on them. But you, you know, you gotta make a lot more noise with the, with the motor and just the boat sort of moving around on the waves, but here we go. Oh, that feels good, boys. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Nice. Oh, my line just broke right there, too. <laughs> but we got her. It's not, a, it's not a heavy one, but I think it's going to be a keeper. Yep. Wow. Three. Bingo. Man, his things changed for Ooh. Gussie in the last 37 seconds. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was minutes. gonna say two minutes. <laughs> Holy smokes. Cut. 
So take a look at his. It's brave bolt flipping those things like that. Just broke right. <laughs> Thankfully, it was in the boat, but I just hate when they come up hot like that. I just don't want them, you know, going nuts around the boat. That one came up and was like sort of wanting to jump, so we went for it. Worked out. Take a look at that first big keeper. Oh, this was actually this was the second one on his Mega Live. Real okay. key, what he said, that okay. with see, this, see you don't the, have to be on top of them. See the fish out. Looks like it's out yes. about 50 feet. One was closer. Oh, that is, that's great stuff. Hey, coming right up. Oh, baby, be a keeper. It's a fat one, but he's not that long. Let's do that again two more times. Oh yeah, we got one right under the boat here too. I better go for that. You notice those bites picked up right when that wind started mm -hmm. torquing in there? Them. God, big one too. Oh, here's some more. Hopefully my bait's not messed up. <sighs> that wasn't a small one either. It's awesome. Yeah, this is great. It's awesome. This is great. Yeah. Good Key to be moment. able to see that. There's your unofficial official leaderboard right there. Matt Robertson listed on top at eight pounds and four ounces. And Jeff Gustafson with that flurry that we just got to witness in a very short period of time, putting himself uh, right in the mix at the top of the standings here on day one of this classic. Seth Fighter, Tyler Rivette, and Scott Canterbury, Alabama angler. Coming up there in fifth place, Cox, Benton, Shakurit, Cobb, and Corey Johnston. We're going to get all that updated for you, and we'll be back to Jeff Gustafson. I can assure you that before too much time has passed. A lot going on out here. Day one, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, sponsored by Toyota. The 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Toyota at the Tennessee River, is sponsored by Ranger Boats. Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. In bass fishing, there's guys from all over the world. They're all different shapes and sizes. My dream has always been to look up in the stands and uh, see my family and see the flag. I want to see the Australian flag in the stands. Yeah, Bassmaster Classic is my big, big dream. This tournament is, is, is like the number one dream that you have. I can remember, you know, when I was a little kid just watching every classic on TV. I mean, I could tell you every winner from the, you know, from the 90s. Huge crowds, thousands at the takeoff today. You just never see that at, at barely light on a work day. Knoxville is an incredible place. The Classic is an incredible event. People watching from all over the world, people traveling from all over the world, competitors, international competitors in our Classic field as well. Definitely making a difference on this day one. Oh yeah. Let's take you out live to making a big difference. And in the last 30 minutes, and that is Canada's Jeff Gustafson. This is live yeah. action with Jeff it's right now. It's going to be one of those real nice ones you got to throw back, it looks like. 
<laughs> yep. Oh boy. 17 and a quarter. That's I hard. I was due for one of those. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know what that's going to mean, yeah. Tommy. First one of this. Yeah. 2023 Bassmaster Classic. Was a little bit worried about Jeff Gustafson early today. Not a lot of current, lot not a lot of water movement. Was not marking many fish on his Mega Live. The wind kind of picked up. So did it bite for Jeff Gustafson, all bowed up in the canal between Loudon and Teleco. And here's something that we can start to let out. Gustafson made the comment, they're a lot harder to catch this time around in that canal. But he said, make no mistake about it. I am marking way more fish than I did the year that I won ah. on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Little yeah. flurries. We heard that with a lot of our lar largemouth fishermen going in flurries, and we got to see exactly that about 10 minutes ago. Jeff Gustafson, power pole replay of the day. And here's the thing. There could be pressure in that canal. Nobody in this field is better at catching them with that little jig head minnow than that guy right there, obviously proving if you're going to win this tournament out of that canal, you are going to have to beat that guy right there. Looks eerily like the footage we had from a couple years ago. That is your power pole replay of the day. Nice. Thanks. Our first look at him today, he lost one between four and five. So, <clears> man. Well, and if you didn't get to see the footage, he had a, there was one view of his Mega Live that looked kind of like that, where there was a little wolf pack of about three or four of them. And really, if you've never used live technology, look for the ones that give you a, a bigger return. You can definitely tell, you were talking about it, Davey, you could really tell a big one from a small one. Yes. It's so fun to watch. He's got a big one there now that he's uh, fishing for. I think you made a great point just now, though, Z. We all knew there would be a lot of pressure in this canal today, but Gussie thinks, and I agree, you know, he can just outfish these guys. So if they try to stay in there and beat him, I think they're going to have a hard time doing it. Now, a Corey Johnson catch a couple in there and then go do some other things, yeah. But – the more, the more Gussie could stay in this canal today and not go into Teleco, I cannot stress enough yeah. talking to him how jacked up he was finding those two schools in Teleco. And he was, fair to say, he was wound up with the pressure that he saw on here. Look, there was a, a local tournament here last weekend. It was getting throttled. And here's the thing, man. You, This is a known area for the locals, but you also showed the rest of your competition where to do it, how to do it, the, to, to the rock. Yes. Fishing in this circuit, it's going to get attention. Let's get out of Teleco and... Jeff Gustafson for just a moment here. You know we'll be returning back there, swinging by again soon. Let's get up to Greg Hackney. Greg Hackney's lived in here this morning. Uh, he's on the juice now. He is. He said he got some big bites in that spillway in practice. the keeper. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I believe it's a keeper. Finally. Damn, he swallowed the hook. Buddy. God, he bit. 
I mean, he bit. He, he completely swallowed that big of a swim bait. I don't think I even have to measure him, but we're going to measure him to make sure. He's about 20 inches. He's not real heavy, but... Number one. I'm grinding. <laughs> it's not been a great morning. I'm glad to have one, though. Settle me down a little bit. Starting to get kind of... I do like seeing Gussie catch him with a spinning rod, but it's also fun to watch Hackney cracking the whip on one with a big swim bait. Yes. And a smallmouth swim bait bite is like no other. <laughs> Absolutely. It's it really fun. Shallow or deep. Yes. A lot of our locals will know that area on Fort Loudon where Hackney's at right there. Said he, man, he said he had some big, big jig bites. In this general area of loud in practice. Greg Hackney teeing up a keeper. Small mouth right there, fun to watch. He knew we couldn't stay away from Teleco very long. We've got to get back down. Jeff Gustafson, according to Bass Track, he's our leader. See, I oh, I think he was swimming with it. I didn't even know he had it. Does he move? Ah, little guy. <laughs> I was just letting it sink, and I went to tighten it up, and oh, I couldn't feel my bait. Come on, baby, one more big beauty. Yep, Such, what you just said, Gussie did move, no doubt. Not far, no. but. That's what I mentioned when he. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Could that be one of the schools, I'm sure? Yes, I would yes. say it could be. Or likely is. They were much more aggressive right there than they were in the canal. And they were <laughs> sitting up off the bottom of the here. He said these two schools outside of the canal were in 30 to 40 yard stretches. Call it 19 to 28 feet of water. Did he mention what he thought was holding these fish? Rock. Very rock. key rock. Key rock. Very key rock. Running card hooked up. Another one. Oh, they say. Yeah, good one. Oh. Like a good large map. Oh, yeah. Come on, baby. Yes. There we go. There we go, baby. Heck yeah. This is kind of crazy. So that exact stump I caught the big bass of the day, day one last year. I don't think this one's going to do big bass of the day. This one's about a four pounder. But that's so crazy. Five and a half pounder two years ago, four pounder this year. Booyah. Heck yeah, let's do that again. Exact same stump. He caught a number of fish there. I yes. remember I remember this yeah, camera angle literally uh, two years ago. Right, the, right on that the fish creek catch channel. in my mind and that fish bit. That is wild. And you were exactly right. I Z. caught the five and a half a couple years ago on a jig. This one was on a shaky head. That's pretty cool. 
Card may have went to the University of Kentucky, but Norris and the Cherokee and Douglas Lakes, those are his home. But once he kind of moved out of the house, and he moved to Knoxville and was just five minutes from the nearest Fort Loudon boat ramp. And so him spending time here, it was out of the norm, this level that the water has been at. And that was the X factor. We asked a lot of these guys, clarity, temperature, or level, and they all emphasized level. Coming up three quarters of a foot last night has probably helped some of these guys. It's, it's so fun to watch these anglers, the best in the world. You know, Hackney fishing, the, the spillway, big swim bait, gutsies, fishing 20 to 28 feet deep. Reports Brandon Cobb fishing a buzz bait. Uh, Carr just called that one off a of Creek Channel edge on a shaky head. A lot of, they, lot of different techniques going on here this week. There morning. will be, by the time Championship Sunday comes, there will be the way it looks, something for every viewer yes. as far as diversity goes, which is is cool. That's you ideal. Know. Back to Gustaf Gustafson. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Get a look at those returns right there. Come on. That one feels all right. Yeah, that's her, baby. See the fish coming that's up. Her. It's not that big, but that should be five. Yes. Yes. What does he do now? Catch five and get. Yes. I agree. <laughs> out of there. Five bass <laughs> limit. There's a couple other anglers in the general vicinity. Okay. We that fish should get here. him about where he started the uh, leech. It's 17 pounds, 14 yes, pounds. Yes, he heard us, Z. <laughs> <laughs> right. That trolling right. coming up before suits can yeah. put it on bass track. Yeah, that, he is not burning that down. <laughs> nope. Good eye, Such. <laughs> I'll say, Davey, in what the is, interviews oh on Tuesday, he said, I heard what you said last fall about a late March classic, Ronnie, and that 15 smallmouth couldn't win it, and that kind of has irked me, and I'm going to just do it just to – he wants to win the classic by himself, of He's course. He's such he a nice guy. You. It's hard to, to irk him. him. <laughs> Jeff Gustafson angling to be the first, the second international winner of a Bassmaster Classic here in 2023 at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Classic. And Matt Robertson of Kentucky in second place. Still Seth Fighter and Tyler Rivette hanging in there. Brandon Carr just put a good one in the boat. One that was kind of a little bit of a deja vu for him. Scott Canterbury, Jason Christie, our defending champ, showing up in our top ten. Cox, Benton, Stetson, Blaylock, one of the favorites in advance as well. We'll take a break and come right back momentarily. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota is sponsored by Humminbird. Day one here, the 53rd Bassmaster Classic. Welcome into the Outdoor Expo. We've got fans starting to populate in, anglers coming to their booths as well. You need to be in Knoxville, Tennessee. But if you're not in Knoxville, Tennessee, and you're watching on Bassmaster Live from wherever you're at in the world, Make sure you send in your photos using hashtag Bassmaster Classic on all social media platforms. We'll try to do our best to feature you throughout the show. And wanted to kind of sum up the morning. A couple of our fans, Danny on Twitter, really loving the mega live shots, seeing Jeff Gustafson catch those smallmouth and how they react live instantaneously, getting uh, an addition to our coverage this year in 2023. Also, Joey Walter kind of summed up what we're all thinking. Best day of the year, Bassmaster Classic. I guess it's the best day of the year till day three of this event where it really gets good. John sitting at home enjoying watching uh, Jeff Gustafson and the rest of the guys get started on live mix as well as Bassmaster Live and the full show. And then also we've got folks at home pouring baits, True North baits, watching Bassmaster Live, enjoying day one coverage. We're excited uh, to cover the 53rd running of the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. So guys, 
Great start. I mean, I think the expectations yeah. were building with the weather, and it's kind of led up to it this morning. Absolutely. Thank you, Ronnie Moore. We've got to welcome a special yes. guest here right now uh, who's representing some recent classic history. That is for sure. Kyle Welcher, like, such a tight race, a close, close second there last year at Lake Hartwell, and a blazing start. Hats right. off to you for uh, for this season in 23. But uh, let's let's think back to, to uh, that moment I know was devastating. No one likes to be in that position, but, hey, hats off for getting there to right. get in the second. Yep. place it, it it really was a good journey you know to go out and just catch them all three days in the biggest tournament of the year even though it didn't go my way still something you know to be proud of that you you caught them three consecutive days with all that pressure and all that stuff going on around you so it was still a good event but i wish it had been about six ounces the other direction <laughs> you know in all honesty we did we tommy and i got to talk about it we thought we thought you won yes, that we tournament. did yeah. we were backstage and i'm like i think kyle won this turn watch i was watching you staring at the footage before you got on stage in that lake hartwell classic you fished kyle welcher style your wheelhouse right. we are seeing exactly that here today with all of your leaders basically in the classic not fishing for points guys fishing their strength right and, and that, that's really important this week because when you have an understanding of a technique or a way that the fish actually set up practice is so far out that you can keep that confidence even though that you didn't have three consecutive days before the tournament. So you really understand and can make those adjustments very quickly. I, I made a comment this morning at the top of our broadcast. I said, you guys all have your own routine throughout a Bassmaster Elite Series season. I said to Tommy, I said, just being around the anglers, the classic is uncomfortable for you guys. The days are long. The interviews are longer. Right. Um, talk about how it is an uncomfortable event compared to a regular tournament. So it, it, it is way more uncomfortable, but you have to understand that going into it and kind of be, be expecting it and just kind of enjoy the entire process of it because it is a lot to take in. I mean, it's a lot more hype around it, a lot more fan interaction. You know, you're, you, you have a lot more of a set schedule as far as practice and the days before, and then, and then actually the practice day before the tournament is actually like a half practice day to what we're used to. So you ha have to just come into the tournament, know that, and know that you're gonna have to make those decisions on the fly. So you don't wanna come into it trying to do your normal routine because you're gonna get thrown off. So you have to come into the classic expecting it to be the classic, and you have to treat it differently than a normal Elite Series event. Kyle, we've been talking about it, and we've been saying it all day and even leading up here. This is, is a tournament, and it's turning out this way. People can – you can fish what you want to fish. Right. You can do what you want to do. If you were in this one, what would you be doing right now? I would be – so after the last time, you would have had to look at some of that deeper smallmouth stuff. But this is a time of year where finding those schools of smallmouth deep or anything like that is really scary because you know where those fish want to go. Like oh, They could break up. They could break yeah. up any time. I mean, if it gets calm and th those fish just for whatever reason decide, hey, it's time to spawn, those fish can leave at the blink of an eye. So finding those fish three, four days out in practice can be kind of nerve wracking because you don't know if they're going to stay for three days. But yeah. you, you have to check it. But I think for me, I would... If I was in this tournament, I would try to figure out how to catch some of those big large mouths, some of those game changers. Now, if those guys can keep catching three plus pound smallmouth and catch five of them a day, I think they're going to win the tournament. Yeah. But if for some reason they struggle, you're going to see the power of those five and six pound large mouth, which are in this place. And whenever somebody catches one, it takes them from 11 pounds up to 15 or 16 pounds. And now you got a really, really good bag. So I would probably have tried to do everything I could do to figure out how to catch those big largemouth, and I would have probably went all in on the big bite in this one. Talking about yeah. that big bite, looking at Fort Lout, which always gets a lot of pressure every right. single day of the week, but if you really look at our field, basically 90% of the field is fishing in Fort Lout, and with warming temperatures, consistently warming temperatures during the day and at night, is there a possibility that a guy could actually increase his weights with the consistency of warmth throughout this weekend on Fort Loud. I definitely believe you can. And one of the main reasons for that is I feel like th this is a lot smaller field than we have. So all these places that these fish stage, those last shallow docks, there's a bridge in the back of every single creek. Well, whenever you can get in a better rotation whenever you've got 50 boats than when you, ha you have 100. So if somebody figures out that place where those fish are staging and they want to run it all over Fort Loudon, I think they're going to be able to get on the water and not have as much competition to get to those staging areas than we would in a normal Elite Series event. So I think that smaller field will help those staging largemouth. Before this tournament started, did you think Gussie could duplicate what he did here the last time? A lot of people on this desk did not think that. <laughs> 
this is Gussie's deal, so I would never say that he couldn't. I just feel like that consistent bag of that 14 to 16 pound, you know, weight, it's a lot more impressive over four days than three. Right. Because like if somebody has one of those like Steve Kennedy yes. bags where they catch 21 one or 22 now, in a three day tournament, that's going to take you further than a four day tournament. Because that. that consistency just stacks up over the more days the tournament is. So looking at today, it definitely looks like he can. but. I don't think it's going to be quite as powerful over three days. I think if somebody could string together a big bag of largemouth, they're going to be the dangerous one. Who do you look at? It, it's tough in this one. Any of those guys who, like Brandon Lester, Swindle, those kind of guys who kind of jump fish around, but when they start getting bites, will hunker down. Those are the kind of guys that I look for because even even Brandon Card, like if there's fish in a creek, he seems to be able to, to maximize those areas. One thing going off of as we're watching Gussie right here, who gets in an area and he squats, okay? Right. Going off of the 2019 Classic, the year that Gussie won here, it almost seems like if you largemouth fish, you have got to keep moving here. Yep. It, it just seems like the, the population here is not, it's not like there's one creek that has a, you know, 253 pounders in it. It seems like whenever those fish pull up, they get on certain places. And you, when, whenever you hit it, it seemed like for me when, when we were here, it was a one or two cast type of deal and you caught what was there. So you really needed to keep running and then maybe hit them in different feeding windows and rerun some of the same water. But it seems definitely like you have to keep moving. You have to be honest with me, uh, just because I've done it. Your big fish on the swim baits last year, the camera work, have you replayed those big fish catches to yourself many times? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that's a phenomenal camera work. Like that, that, That's some of the best stuff I've ever seen. With, with the exception of what Gussie's doing today with the with the live imaging on the screen. It's very cool. That's that's pretty close, but yes. I'm, I'm a little partial to the swim bait bites. Understand. <laughs> I, we are too, trust me. <laughs> Did you get to, to look at that run that Gussie, that 30 minute when he just knocked him out? I saw, yeah. I saw whenever it started and, and when I got in here to the expo, I, I watched kind of the tail end of it so I mean it definitely seemed like he found a pod of them that were actively feeding and he was able to you can see how precise you can be with that forward face sonar so whenever he got around them that were feeding he was able to execute on them definitely you noticed very quickly how how quickly he pulled his trolling motor he got out of there <laughs> yeah. yeah he was like nobody's following me left y yeah let's go Talk about John Cox. If you look at a John Cox down there, you talk about his strengths and why he's a threat at a place like this. Doing something that's completely different from Gus. It just seems like if a lot of the fish are living shallow on a body of water, you cannot count him out. I mean, and I think he said it this morning, he, he didn't even throw a crankbait a few years ago, and now I think he's won one major event on it and had a couple more top tens. I mean, he just he just understands where bigger fish get in that in that eight to shallower foot range. And I mean, that's what makes him so deadly whenever they're, when, whenever the fish live shallow on a place, especially this time of year, he just knows how to, how to generate big bites. We're going to keep our eyes on Rand Brandon Lester. Just one fish today for the uh, Tennessee native. Swindle Cox, Brandon Card, we'll keep an eye on them, but let's check in with Jeff Gustafson. He's going to give us an update as, as to what so we just we witnessed. Live. Awesome. Um, and now I'm just, I'm, I, I don't have that many spots. I got a few other, I got one other place that I think is pretty good. Obviously not going to touch that today. Um, so just gonna look for more uh, more stuff. Uh, I like spent two whole days practicing down here and literally found like one good spot each day. So it's like they're not everywhere. Um, but yeah, if I can get lucky and just find another another, you know, bought myself some time to look around a little more today. So if I can get lucky and find another another place, then um, you know that'd be that'd be awesome. So that's sort of my goal here the next couple hours, just look at some new new stuff and just try and try and find another little sweet spot and but feels good good start and uh you know survive we're gonna survive one day anyways might not be the big bag of the day or anything but we'll be in the mix so it's not the easiest place to fish so you know i know by sunday if i can just do that five of those every day i'll probably be uh you know give myself a decent chance A lot of the bottom out here is just really, really flat and plain. And so just like any little rock or hard spot you can kind of find, this really has potential. So I'm gonna, and 
the fish just seem like they're glued to the bottom a lot more than other places. So like, you, you almost got to just, if you see something that looks interesting or has potential, you almost got to just go drop a bait down there and, um, and see if anything, sh they show themselves pretty quick if they're around. So that's kind of the, the program I'm on. Well, Tommy, the last thing we want to hear here on day one is that Gussie's actually practicing already and not fishing any of those key <laughs> yes, spots. Yes, we kind of need you to kind of fish a little <laughs> right. bit for us. Just, just kind of you know, go through the motions, if, if nothing right. else. We, uh, probably not going to be real exciting in this boat for the rest of the day. Well, he backed us up. He's listening. Okay, listening. okay. I guess we should keep our mouth shut. Places. I'm obviously um, not going to touch any of the... I don't have that many spots. I got a couple, couple that I like, but I'm not going to bother with those anymore today. Um, so yeah, just bought myself a little bit of time and just going to keep hunting around here, scanning around, looking for, looking for something else and hopefully give it a couple hours and we can um, maybe make something happen. Hanging with Kyle Welcher. Kyle, you came out firing your first year on the Elite Series. I've been covering you a bunch of different times. Unusual season last season. And, and yet, it kind of the way the schedule set up, it, it did. It could sort of favor your your way of you fish very loose, uh, very fluid. Talk about what you learned last year, coming into this season. Obviously, getting the wheels back on. Right. So last year, I had to revisit some lessons that I've learned a few times in my life. You know, so. I, I felt like last year I, I tried to force things a little bit too much. You know, I got, I had some bites and some things happen in practice that showed me some potential that wasn't really there. So it, it, it made me waste a lot of time in terms of what I felt like. And then whenever I tried to go around and adjust, it seems like I just never got that, that bite to key you in. So a lot of it was me trying to force things, me making some bad decisions and wasting some time. But I actually feel like the year before that, whenever I actually had a decent year, I made more bad decisions. I felt like last year I didn't make as many bad decisions as I did my second year. It just seemed like I never got bailed out last year. So, I mean, I, I feel like I, I've learned that lesson before. I just forced it. And this year I went into it and I said, I'm, I, I only want to have a starting spot. And then from there, I'll figure it out on the water. And that's what I changed this year. Do you feel like you're cut out for commentating with Sanders and myself long term or no? I, you can be honest, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I love fishing tournaments more than anything. So we can comment on we can commentate on anything except bass tournaments because I want to be there every single I appreciate time. That honesty. Say, this is this is not be a good time to reroute, man. You got a great start going here. Talk about Okeechobee and, and Seminole. That, how that worked out so yeah, good. So the, those were ones where really going into the tournament, I only had a very small amount of places where I thought I could get a bite. And then I was able to get off to a fast start in both of those tournaments, you know, and, and then it kind of freed me up to, you know, it, in those midday times to actually expand and run new water and, and look around and find some more places that kind of fit my pattern. So all I really had in either of those two tournaments was one little place to start. And they both ended up being a lot better than I thought. And I was able to rotate through them and cycle through them with a lot of different baits and just just generate more bites than I really thought after practice. Tommy know, so. and I tend to really whine when we have forward-facing sonar tournaments. You know what's worse is when a guy does that and then decides just to idle for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we got Robbie Floyd out there trying to run down some action for us, and I think he has. He's got one of our, our leaders here. And Matt Robertson, what's going on with Matt, Robbie? Well, I, I wanted to pour some good. I know I, I pulled up to him earlier, and he showed me his two fish, and I hope we can see that here in just a second uh, at about 10-10 when I pulled up to him. He's been throwing a big swim bait. He caught two of his fish, uh, one smallmouth, one largemouth at his first spot, um, one on a, a point, the other on a, uh, on a tree, but doing something different. Big bait, big fish. He's got two four-pounders in the boat, and he's loving that. He's trying to get more. The crazy thing is, yes, he's trying to get these big fish. He's throwing the big bait. He pulls up to this riprap wall. Watch bars just on the other side of this wall here. He pulls up to this riprap, throws a swim bat a few times, and now I see him pull out the spinning rod. So I'm curious to see what's on the other end of it. Is he going super big to now small just trying to get bites or what? But uh, Matt Robertson doing something different than the small presentation and catching big fish with big baits. It's windy out here too, by the way, yeah. in case y'all haven't is, noticed. Is, is, is it really ramping up? I mean, has it been the last hours when it's really ramped up? 
Yeah, it's it's been pushing. Yeah, early this morning, I thought a nice breeze. It's like, okay, this is going to be fun. And then it's not fun. Um, the sun, <laughs> just as he told me earlier, said, yeah, the sun's starting to come out. It's getting warmer. Now it's kind of socked in and, and mostly cloudy skies. So just when you want a certain condition and things to set up your way, it changes on you, much like uh, Matt right there. So you can see it looked like you might have had a Domeki or something. Don't tell me he's going with a popper because I, I, I swear I saw a top water right there. Nope, back to the big swim bait. So, um, yeah, he said he's got a few spots. He's just going to throw the swim bait and try and catch those big fish. Robbie, you kind of lived on the lower end of Loudon and Teleco today, not really mid-lake where we're seeing a lot of pressure. Are you outside of the canal? Are you seeing a lot of pressure down there on the lower lake or not for the most part? We went out to the lower lake and we missed Matt. He was coming down as we went up. And uh, the one thing I did see was a Canadian goose that went right at our boat. He's no longer with us. Um, but no, oh. not too many people oh. out on the main lake as far as we ran. Um, there are people concentrated around the canal. I think Drew was there. Um, we saw Corey. We seen Gussie, you know, work his way in there. So there are several people in Teleco and mostly around that canal. When we got out into Fort Loudon, at least that lower end, I didn't see many in the main lake. Robbie, thank you so much. Do appreciate it. Robbie Floyd down there with Matt Robertson having a terrific, terrific first day of the Classic here. For some of our viewers, Kyle, talk about how you can approach a Classic so much differently than a regular Elite Series event as far as far as style of fishing instead of having to play it. Not that you play it safe very often, right. but, yeah. but for the most part, different game planning. Yeah, so everybody says it in this tournament. They only remember who wins, which doesn't seem right in my case because everybody keeps reminding me. <laughs> but, they, you know, like you see Matt Robertson throwing a, a big swim bait. If you're going to lock it in and just gamble, see if you can get five bites, this is the tournament to do it on right. because it doesn't matter if you come in dead last. And, and a lot of times the guy who catches two or three fish and looks like he had a terrible day was actually closer than, to winning than the guy that might have right. came in 15th. You know, so a lot of times that's what you have to do to put yourself in position. But you don't want to lose sight of it on a lake like this. If you can just salvage and stay within a few pounds or, or even within five or six pounds of the lead. I mean, even if you come into the last day in 18th or 19th, if you're close, one of those big bass can happen. So you want to gamble, but you want to keep yourself within striking distance. You know, a lot of the anglers talked about and we actually opened the show how hard it is on this body of water these fish obviously do not like pressure right. they do not like it at all it no. in a do you like a tournament like go. this where it's kind of grimy and it's hard to lock in on one thing I do because nope. my brain I'm always r running around jumping on new stuff so actually a lot of times those really defined kind of getting an area and grind around in a bunch of boats on, you know, like we have tournaments where there's big grass flats or something. To me, it makes me go stir crazy. So I love being able to kind of spread my legs and run around and skip this and crank that. So I, know, I, I like those grinder type tournaments where people are running around looking at new water and throwing eight or ten different baits, you know. Such is a big fan of yours, and I see him over there. He's he's wound oh, yeah. up. He's just Kyle. happy you're on the set right <laughs> now. Oh, no, he made an interesting <laughs> point at these uh, schools of small mouth scatter, and we have a major storm coming through overnight. I was wondering if that's a... Uh, uh, something that would move them and spread them out it it, it definitely could be because it, it just depends on how oriented these fish are on the bait and anytime that wind changes directions you know anytime it gets overclassed or sunny overcast or sunny those bait are going to move so if those smallmouth are in areas and they're directly relating to bait anytime anything like that changes they will move now they may move five feet shallower they, they may move 150 yards out over a creek channel and i, I think i think gus will be able to find them with that forward face sonar and let the only thing that i think he's gonna have to worry about is if those fish try to break up and then go to spawning and, and you know get, get up there on those rocks because they can spawn really deep in that clear of water I feel like that's the only thing that's going to give him trouble. Other than that, I think he'll be able to find them. Producer of Bassmaster Live, Mike McKinnis, is in our ear and said, Kyle, you can join us every Bassmaster Classic up here on the set if you're interested. So, <laughs> I'm not yeah, interested. Exactly. No interest? No exactly interest. right. I don't know. I don't know Kyle, what I'm saying right now. Z said it. You came in with a splash. Now you're in your fourth year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And and let me tell you this. People do remember who finished second at the Classic. Right. Uh, we, us two up here, we all remember that. Good stuff. Kyle, thank you so much for making some time Good for stuff. us. Congratulations on a great season. Thank so you. far. Good stuff from Kyle Welcher.
uh, joining us today on this Bassmaster Classic first day, Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic with Jeff Gustafson on top, Matt Robertson. We just got a look at Matt and where he is right now, kind of bouncing around a little bit. Jay Shakur at one of the big names, big rookie name from last year. Moving up into the top three, we have Seth Fighter, Brian Schmidt, who won our last event of the Elite Series last year and gaining entrance into this Classic. Always look out for the last man in the Classic. Tyler Rivette, winner of our first event so far this year. Brandon Card, the native Lee Livesey. Got, a, got himself a century belt last year, or year before last, Scott Canterbury and Jason Christie rounding out our top 10. Well, Gustafson, he's the story. Jeff Gustafson trying to be the second international winner of the Classic. He's got a comment for us, which includes a reference to our own Ronnie Moore. Whoa! Oh, Lord. Yeah. I'm Jeff Gustafson, and this is my fourth Bassmaster Classic. Yes, one down, baby. 14 to go. One of my main motivations for the tournament is I heard Ronnie on a podcast last fall say that there's no way 15 small mouths are going to get weighed in this classic, and I'm here to prove them wrong. The 18 inch thing with the small mouths is, is makes it a lot more challenging, that's for sure. It'd be a lot easier to catch a nice bag if you if they didn't, because there's, and I mean, I, it happened last time, it, you catch a lot of 17. 17 and a half, 17 and seven eighths. Um, three pounders that you gotta throw back, it sucks. Uh, but but if you get five of them, you're gonna be, every day, you're gonna be in a good place come Sunday afternoon, I think. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen! Live coverage of the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota is sponsored by Humminbird. Well, there it is, the Volunteer State of Tennessee. What a place. We're in East Tennessee. Knoxville represents East Tennessee, the gateway to the Great Smoky Mountains, and so much more. Beautiful country here, the water flowing down the Holston and French Broad River, uh, forming the mighty Tennessee River in this first reservoir. Fort Loudon is our focus today. Also equal focus, if not more focus, on the adjacent Teleco Lake on the Little Tennessee River coming in from the south, from yes. up in the hills there. Some good good quality fish in that river as well. We have had a good, good entertaining morning so far and can't wait to see what is coming up next. There's your TH Marine weather watch today. A high of 80, low of 62. Absolute Chamber of Commerce weather today. It might be a little, little shakier tomorrow, but we'll get into that later on. Yeah, I think, Tommy, as you said, I think we're going to have some big storms possibly tomorrow morning. The main thing to really watch today it going into the second day of competition is we are going to have some Ripe winds later today going into Saturday. So wind going to be a big factor Get into Sunday. Going to be mostly sunny. Pretty much I was one of the warmest classics I can remember oh, having in the last few years. That is your TH Marine weather watch. I don't know if it's been that warm since we were in Florida for a classic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the winter. Really good look at what Gussie is hunting for. A lot of the bottom contours very barren clay mud you find little small veins of rocks mixed in with a couple bigger boulders not it is not a lot of structure that stands out in any way shape or form but those like you look to your left of your screen right there on his side imaging those bigger boulders have been key throughout his victory and today so far for Jeff Gustafson Take you back down to John Cox. Fish and some water with a lot of color in it, to say the least. John fishing in his fourth classic. His best finish was back in, back in 2020 at Lake Gunnersville. Davey, you were out there on the final day of practice, and I was as well, and, and we were going down the river and where the area that Steve Kennedy and John Cox right. made famous See, in 2021, it was like a 
conga line buffet of boats sitting at the mouth of that deal on the main river, I, w I thought there was a boat accident because so many boats had stopped there. But it was because they were looking for a little different watercolor. And it looks like John, at some point or another, has found it. And so they know if John Cox pulls in there, they're going to they know he's looking for something. It's so interesting to see that what you mentioned. And that now it's not nearly as many people fishing in that area as there was on the practice day. But then also I went through the, the canal going down to Talco and then coming back through. There was one boat there, a different boat each time, but only one boat. And I'm thinking it's not going to be that way on Friday. Right. A lot of these guys just searching uh, for something totally different than what they found in those three official days of practice there last week. You know, and one thing we didn't talk about early here in this classic, there's guys like Christie and Hackney that purposely, they practiced, for lack of a better term, they practiced very sneaky. They would go in areas, just check the conditions, areas that they've caught them in the past, but did not want to be seen uh -huh. in certain regions yeah. of Fort Loudon. Did a little bit of that myself, I must admit. I noticed that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a common <laughs> trait of top-tier <laughs> guys, as a matter of fact. Davey, sure. Davey, I got news. You and I fished team tournaments for like a 1000 bucks, and you were sneaky in those. <laughs> <laughs> Creeping around. All bow. Creeping around. <laughs> I was never the boss. I was just a creeper. <laughs> oh, no. A creeper. Oh. <laughs> Rather be a creeper than the boss. Yes. Oh, there's so much I want to say right now. <laughs> Keep it in. Keep it in the vault. I think about John Cox. You know, he's looking for dirty water here so oftentimes. We want him, he's sight fishing. He wants clear water. But he always seems to land on them. You know, he – Yes. He really, and he doesn't do a lot of pre-practice like a lot of guys either. But, boy, he, he finds the right area. I taped a show with him, and it was one of the most bizarre shows we've taped. Like, he brought a rod. Really? <laughs> yes. He wow. brought a rod. Ryan Schmidt has our second limit of the day, filled it with a four-pounder. He's got 12 pounds in second place. Well, that's a nice fish, Lester. Boy, I was hoping we'd see a little more of the fishing the blowdowns with jigs and maybe we've seen so far this morning, but that lower water level is really hurting that, I think. Even though we have... You, Even though it's come up a little bit, it's e still... Yeah. Even well, though we have warming temps, oh, yeah. that lower water is really hurting them pulling. Yes. Yeah, yeah he's close. He's touching right there. That's all he's got to do. Uh, we'll get rid of him later. Number two goes first. Brandon Lester's game plan was to not get spread out, not get caught behind his steering wheel during competition. Really can find it to the Mid Lake region of Fort Loudon and stay again. Another one of our anglers focusing pretty much on largemouth said, You gotta stay near that main river. He said, If you go in way up into some of these creeks, you are 100% fishing behind somebody. And you're probably only fishing for a small percentage of the population that haven't necessarily gone all the way to the bat. You're passing a lot of fish on the way in. And, and one of the things Lester and Hackney and Christie, even though we've seen Hackney way up in today, that is not his main game plan. Um, a lot of them felt, a lot of those blowed up females just have not yeah. made it that far back. So on Wednesday, when very few times were we back in places, because that's not really what Taku does, you know. But when we did, there's a lot of shad. There's a lot of bait there. But like we're, we talked about, you just mentioned again, I just – don't think those females make that move until that water comes up right. to a summer pool. While you were gone, we were with Kyle Welcher, Davey, and Gussie said he's practicing the rest of the day, just going to kind of idle around. And So I, I, I was thinking that I, I here. couldn't hear you guys, but I, but I was thinking that. So you've got to think if you're Gussie, I found two places other than that canal. Those can't be the only two places like that on, on well. the lakes. 
He also knows that he's got a target weight for today. Every day. Yeah, no doubt. So he caught his fish in that area. He pulled the trolling motor immediately. I was so he glad. He was done. <laughs> I was so glad to see him do I that. I was so mad he did that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see more tomorrow. Here's a Greg Hackney fishing in his 18th Classics. First one was back in 2001. Like what he's doing. Oh yeah. Throwing a swim bait and some current. You know fish live there. I don't see him going anywhere. Said he caught a really big smallmouth here in practice and got to see another really big largemouth right here. But this is not the only area up in there that he is fishing. He said he had some really big jig bites and some dust mats. Davey, there was a few places I saw you and Taku in a creek that Swindle and I were in on Wednesday, and it's incredible, even, even just six inches, a foot, maybe a foot and a half maximum, how many more stumps will be in the water? Ooh. Hmm. Good one here. That might not heat. Ooh. I don't know. It's going to be close. It might not keep. I don't know, it's long. Oh, that's a keeper. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Come on, buddy. Yeah, I think he's gonna keep. I think he's 18 and a half, but just making sure. Making sure. Number two. I was hoping it was that freaking biggin. I was deep. thinking about that biggin. I was like, that biggin don't really know what happened. There's a chance of catching that fish, you know. Good keeper number two for Greg Hackney has not been a lot of bites so far, but two solid ones in the live well over 18 inches. What you were mentioning there when he caught that fish, Ronnie? I, yeah, the water coming up, ten oh, inches, yeah. uh, is huge here. There's hundreds of stumps that are like you see the roots and the tops will be covered if it, you know, or and some of these points that are 80, 100 feet exposed, they'll only be 10 feet exposed because it, they're so flat that as soon as it comes a little, it looks water. like there's a lot more shoreline or a lot more water in this place. I spent the Wednesday practice 19 with Ot Defoe. There were places that he caught fish that day that were dry. This Wednesday. Oh, that shows wild. you how, it's, how different. Oh, yeah. Heard a lot of that same complaint. Some of my best spots are, are not spots dry. anymore. <laughs> I can I can literally see where I caught fish, you know, the last yeah. time we were oh, here. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> that being said, I don't think the Water level is going to affect where Greg Hackney right, is at right. all mm -hmm. this week. No, oh, it's coming to him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't forget, send us your pictures. Also, find out how to watch the classic. Scan the uh, scan the code right now. Yeah, Tommy, we'll be on FS1 a couple different times this weekend. Yes. All their digital platforms, and then also we'll be on Big Fox, the Fox Network. Yeah, and the main Fox Network. Instead of normal where we start the mornings there and leave midday, we will end the Bassmaster Classic on major network TV. And That's a pretty cool prospect, Yes, actually. Yeah. And you can and watch the, it later that evening. And the Super yeah. Six show. Yeah. Yeah. Later that night. I've been trying to come loose.
Oh, he's getting a little audience here on the bank. Mm -hmm. I could hear some people the last time he <laughs> caught a keeper. <clears throat> Speaking of audience, Dave Mercer said he thought maybe more people that take off this yes. morning than last. Yes. Wow. How about the time that? we were here. Incredible. On the first day. It was a circus outside of the hotel last night. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm like, it's almost every, I mean, the water's just full of fish, you know. I think he was getting slime off his line just then, saying the water's he's running into that really? many fish. Yes. Certainly a magnet to everything that swims, this water coming over the spillway. Hackney said he saw one other competitor below that spillway throughout practice and that was Keith Poche. Which we find him not in that area mm -hmm. today. Got a little more than half a day left here. It goes by very, very fast. All three days of the Classic here. The first flight will check in, I think, at 3.30 today. That's the revised time. Things will get cranking at the weigh-in an hour or so after that. Your unofficial leaders in the top 12 right now fishing in Teleco. Surprising. Very surprising. Maybe not surprising after we've talked to the anglers yeah. uh, this week, but coming into this week, yeah. I, I, I would. Kind of seems like when I let it all rest, another one gets there, you know. So I don't, like I said, I just didn't spend any time here, so I wouldn't have any idea like the fish population. I was looking here for a bonus smallmouth, not five smallmouth. But now I'm like, I probably should have already had four of them, so I'm like. I like small now. Let's go, let's go. Taku can do it. Taku can use bait casting. Whew. No spinning rod. I want to use spinning rod, but <laughs> this tournament, no spinning rod. Interesting to hear Greg Hackney say, I like smallmouth. And then we go right to Taku, who is largemouth fishing in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no spinning rod, just sir. 
<laughs> it's all upside down. Yeah, it, it, it really is. is. It's interesting to hear Hackney say he should have four. Yeah, yes. he must have had. We must have missed a surprise. couple of misses, I think. but I guess there's not enough current to put them there. You know what I mean? Like, they're up here where the maximum... Because, like, that gravel bar there, it's got a hole of that point. I was like, would have been one right there. See, it's a hole. When you get about right here, it falls into that hole. That water's washed out a hole down through there. This tournament, I couldn't find a small mouse. I tried some large mouse, but sometimes small mice so bite right here. So I try to, so 10 foot, 15 foot, so pretty deep dark suspending fish. I use a swim bait. I use a swim bait. I can use a bait casting. Always, I don't like bait casting I always use a spinning rod but this tournament I tried or I try to bait casting but taku no good bait casting so I, I stuck now <laughs> dark taku no good freeze tea very hagney's hooked up something oh. big got him first the way it ran oh I, I I did think it might be a bass it's a oh. sucker, I think. Big <laughs> red horse sucker. That's part of what you run into to get the slime on the line. <laughs> it was a good sucker, too, Tommy. Yeah, <laughs> it really was. Solid. It actually was. Solid sucker. Oh. All right, there's some suckers on the bank oh, right yeah. there. That time yeah. of year. Oh, it is turkey time. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Full yes. on. Full oh. on. That's the Bassmaster Classic. We yeah, might as well blow up. Yeah. 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 You want to talk <laughs> about being bowed up. <laughs> Good stuff. This place is alive. It's alive with 55 anglers, too, who want to be among the 25 who make it to Sunday in a shot at the World Championship. What a great start for Canada's Jeff Gustafson. Great, great limit of smallmouth in the boat. He's out sort of on the hunt, scouting around for what may happen on the next two days here. Brian Schmidt, the last man in, qualified. Uh, the last event of the year of the Elite Series, the, our lone one and in tournament. Jay Shakurit, Rookie of the Year last year. Lots of stars in that top ten. Matt Robertson, Lee Libesey, Tyler Rivette, who won the first tournament this season. Seth Fighter got a good start today. Scott Canterbury, former Angler of the Year. Drew Benton and Brandon Card will stay with us. Our continuing coverage of the 23 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. We'll be right back with Dave Mercer and Ronnie Moore. The 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota at the Tennessee River is sponsored by Minn Kota, Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Progressive Insurance, and by Rabala. Welcome back to the Bass Master Classic, the 53rd running of the World Championship of Bass Fishing. As we watch the Expo open up right now to the fans, and this was earlier this week as they built the Bass Master Outdoors Expo presented by the U.S. Army. This is the biggest expo we've had for a Bass Master Classic, according to the reports this week. The fans lined up out the door. They are now in the expo and are going to be populating all of the booths. We look forward to seeing all the fans of fishing, and they'll obviously gather on later on in the day at the weigh-in Thompson Bowling Arena, where Dave Mercer will weigh in all 55 anglers. Knoxville broke records in, tw in 2019. They have been surpassed since then, but they're looking to take it back. Over 154,000 people to break the record. It may do it this week. Welcome into the Bassmaster Studios. Ronnie Moore here with Dave Mercer and Tom Abraham. Guys, 
first half of the more or first half of the Bassmaster Classic day one has not been too shabby. Big smallmouth showed up uh, for Jeff Gustafson, Dave Mercer. Big smallmouth and Gussie's biggest concern going out this morning was the pressure from the other anglers. He felt pretty confident he was going to catch him, but want to talk about pressure. Bigger crowds this time on the day one takeoff than we had last time. And there, you know, everybody thought that could never be duplicated, but it was bigger today. Over 5,000 people at takeoff, Tom, and uh, people are excited about the Bassmaster Classic. Well, you know, these Tennessee Vol fans, they need to be excited about something after their volunteers got beat last night in the, in the March Madness. So they're going to take in this March Madness, which is this tournament. And, and yeah, you know, I, I didn't know if Gussie could go back to that canal where he did so much damage a couple of years ago, yet he was able to do it uh, so far. And he's managing those fish well as well, you know, as far as getting his five and getting out of there. Got to manage three days now instead of four. And we're seeing a lot of things, Dave Mercer. We're seeing dirty water. John Cox is fishing in the dirtiest water I've seen this week. You got some water coming into the system where Greg Hackney's at. A lot of different places on Fort Loud and Teleco are starting to show up. You expect to see the largemouth guys as they kind of figure out where those fish went this afternoon, maybe make a charge? You would imagine. I mean, you outside, it literally feels, I mean, it, it is Summer that day. Now. You know, when you, you it's been cold and nasty. You know that day when you leave work, you walk out of there and you're like, wait a second, this is spring. They're biting and it should get better. And that's the question. Can a smallmouth angler like Jeff Gustafson kind of play? It works better in four days. I heard Kyle Welcher say that through four days, the smallmouth game works better. You could get one of those largemouth guys have a big monster day and, uh, We'll see what's happening, but day one, awesome to be here. I'm not counting out that a five-pound smallmouth could come across the board, but five-pound largemouth, much more dependable if you're trying to get a big bite. As we take it into the Toyota Midday Report, we're going to start off with Toyota Pro, Brandon Lester, and a, and, a, and a favorite, not a hometown, not a local, got sixth here in 2019 in the Bassmaster Classic, and honestly, you know this, Dave Mercer, one of the hottest anglers in the sport. Two wins last year and second in AOI. The only angler last year that made a paycheck in every single Elite Series event. A win in the Opens and the Elites. Unbelievable. And uh, Tom Abram, I got to feel you're cheering for him. I am. I mean, he's kind of my neighbor. And, uh, you know, Ryan makes a good point. He's not really a local local because he is, you know, from no, Fayetteville. No, they just which is a, say that going into the event. Because it's the state of Tennessee. So don't Drama. look at me. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But how about this guy here? What a cool shot we've had all morning with, uh, you know, with Greg Hackney catching some smallmouth out of that spillway. I mean, it, this is this is this is what live is made for, this shot right here. Yeah, and, and I believe this isn't his main deal. This was a, a good little bonus for him to catch some bigger smallmouth, but if he can take a couple of these smallmouth that are over 18 inches and then maybe put three or four largemouth with it by the end of the day, we could see Greg Hackney possibly rise up. And the most veteran, there was, we're basically talking about two of the most veteran anglers in our field, Greg Hackney and this man, Gerald Swindle, his 20th classic. And Dave Mercer, he still gets tickled like it's his first one. It still means a whole bunch to this guy. I'm all about the party, Ronnie, I'm, and that's <laughs> why I want him to win. There would be no bigger party in bass fishing than if Gerald Swindle pulled this off. And you know what? This morning we had a little interaction, and he's more confident going out this morning than I've seen him at a lot of classic takeoffs. Yeah, he, he's really fired up for this one. And I'll tell you what, this kid here, Taco Ito, he's another guy that uh, shows great versatility. And, you know, one of the interesting things, we think of Taco and we think of him with the small mouth and the, and the, the, the thread and the spinning outfits and stuff. But he's pretty good with that bait, bait caster as well. Probably fishes it a little more than, than he lets on. Yeah, and, and I... I think it's kind of a hard situation to be in when everyone expects you to just guarantee to find the smallmouth. That did not happen for Taku Ito in the four days of practice. Never got on those 18-inch smallmouth like he wanted. Couldn't find anywhere else other than that canal and did not want to fish around all of those folks. Having to put all of his eggs in the largemouth basket, it's a little uncomfortable when there's smallmouth swimming around and this guy's targeting green ones. It's happy, happy time. You know, Takumi Ito, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. Oh. Un bridled happiness and excitement, almost childlike excitement. And if anybody has even more of that, it's this dude, John Cox. This guy didn't want a camera. He said that when they said to him, you know, about putting a camera in his in his boat, he said, I didn't catch a fish in practice. Are you sure you want to put a camera with me? But that's John Cox, and uh, he's a throwback. He told me he won't run his boat over 40 miles an hour running down the Tennessee River. Uh, there's a couple factors in that. Definitely yes. gas consumption <laughs> and uh, the condition of his uh, boat at the moment yeah. after Lake Seminole. But John Cox, trying to harness what he did in 2021. He was not in the Classic here in 2019, but anglers have said, like Chris Aldane have said all week, it's kind of a mixture of both of the tournaments we've had here. 
Well, John Cox, a third in 2021. He's trying to keep that Fritz side in his hand and do the same thing. Meanwhile, this guy, he's the defending champ, but no one's going to take his trophy he won last year. He's just trying to rein it in and get a second one. Jason Christie, our defending classic champion. Only four anglers have gone back to back, but quite a few have recently, Dave. Can he do it and be the fifth angler to do so? Anybody that says he can't is a fool. <laughs> I mean, look at him. What can't he do? And you, he is even more motivated this year. He said he it was a bigger thrill than he ever imagined. It's like being a, a you know, the, the the fishing's prom queen. I mean, every party you go to, every fest, you've got, got that trophy over your shoulder four, and all eyes for you. He says he wants to feel that again. Yeah. But feel good story of this event right there, Brandon Card. You know, earlier this season when I uh, went out with Ryan and, and Kyle Jesse, we did a prediction show, and I didn't want to get too much on Brandon Carr because I didn't know what it would be like, you know, coming off of the tough uh, For sure. situation that he had. But I'll tell you what, I put him on my fantasy team this week. I really did. I, I think I think he's got a great opportunity. He's the closest thing to a local we got. For 100%, and that's a good point you mentioned, that there's, you know, six, seven Tennessee anglers in our field this week, but none of them have lived on the shores of Fort Loudon and Teleco. They've lived maybe an hour away. This guy spent a couple years of his life living near Fort Loudon and Teleco, and that bodes well for him just knowledge-wise. Guy who caught basically the first fish on Bassmaster Live of this year's classic Seth Fighter. A couple people looking at him. He is an underrated shallow cranker, especially dirty, clean water. Doesn't matter, Dave Mercer. He is one you got to watch everywhere you go. And, and he's been a little quiet. You know, if you look after that angler of the year that he won, here. it's definitely like he's gone into a little bit of a funk, and no better way to get out of that funk than raise the most coveted trophy in professional bass fishing. He needed less than $10,000 to join the Bass Millionaires yes. Club. He did not get a check oh, in the first dude. two events, but as yeah, soon as he weighs in some fish this week, very much so he'll be a bass millionaire. That so. is a sweet stat <laughs> that I'm going to use on the way in stage. <laughs> yeah, it is a good stat. Now, this guy here, Matt Robertson, I ran into him. Man he's, the, he's the only angler I ran into at the Bassmaster kickoff party last night. <laughs> he was had a Miller Lite in his hand, and I said, shouldn't you be sharpening a hook or doing something? And he says, man, I'm ready to go, and if there's a party i'm at the party i would challenge you on your gerald swindle party that maybe matt robertson's party would be even bigger <laughs> well a guy who would love to party a second time in knoxville i had stories of him getting pizza on the shores because he had secured his win so early in 2021 jeff gustafson really committing to the smallmouth as expected but ultra confident dave mercer he's talked to you about it plenty he said there are even more fish in this canal and he's got a couple schools in teleco that maybe he can save and that'll be dangerous yeah he said he was amazed that there was more but the difference is the conversion rate has drastically changed last time it was kind of two for one for every two you mark you catch one he says now at times you've got to mark 15 of them before you get one but he is the best at doing what he is in the world one big problem with this whole game plan though is jeff gustafson it's working out 17-4 you got guys like corey you johnson really who, hate him no it corey johnson's bash track's not completely updated he's going to be in the top five you have drew benton right there they're all near him and that's the only thing is you're going to have more people who aren't practicing right now that may be wearing on some of those fish in some of those key areas. We'll see if the smallmouth guys hold up, especially as it gets warmer every day of this event. You're you're committed. You're committed. I mean, you told him he couldn't do it months ago, and and wow, he's no, leading I told the Bassmaster Classic. Be done, Still not you know. impressed. <laughs> I, I need to see him get over 20 pounds, you know, and then I'll just I'll lay off of him. Okay, Mercer, just 20 pounds and, and we'll lay off. All right, all right. Small part, as you see. The 10 cameras we have out on day one, you see them ranging up there by Knoxville, just south of takeoff, Brandon Card, Greg Hackney, Gerald Swindle, and as you make your way past some of the other anglers, the only one truly in Teleco right now, other than Jeff Gustafson, would be Brandon Polinick, which is a significant run. That's over an hour of your day, one way, spent to travel there. With a backup boat. I mean, he tore his boat up in, in practice, and he's uh, in an unwrapped un backup boat and, and made that run. Uh, down there it's a little bit dangerous on the river you know with the uh, with the rains that came in and and so on but yeah nothing not a whole lot happened i just caught like a 17 inch a little bit ago got a bite but got one in there that's not quite a three pounder so i'd like to upgrade that if possible but uh yeah got lots of time to hunt around here some more so gussie rocking the kdj the Kenora dinner jacket. Once again, it is a multifaceted fashion device and it harnesses some power for the great Canadian snow leopard. 
traditionally seen in the red and white color, but he's decided to go with uh, a blue model. See how that changes through the week. Plaid Snow Leopard. It might not get nearly as warm, and, and even though the air temperature today is warm, you're not having that intense sun penetration that definitely warms up the water for those shallow anglers. And so it looks like with the cloud cover that has soaked in, maybe the dinner jacket is appropriate attire for him, especially out on the main drag. I mean, he can chop a tree down or go to a dinner. <laughs> I mean, it is multi, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Or win the Bassmaster Classic. I honestly, you know, Jeff Gustafson lives a, lives a great life and, and I kind of envy him and the weather that they have most of the year. Once it hits about November till about February, I, I no longer want to be Jeff Gustafson because it is treacherous up in his part. November to February? Yeah. My man, it's still snowing in early May. Well, true, but that's not, it's not 12 yeah. feet deep or something, you know. Hey, I, I live in Canada and, and I don't want to <laughs> live where he lives in the winter. <laughs> Beautiful though, where he's from. He guides up there. It was at Lake of the Woods, and yeah. it's absolutely. I mean, that's a bucket list place. You for see a that? Fisherman. You see that right there on the bottom of the screen. You can scan the QR code to see some of the stories on Bassmaster.com. And this week is very interesting. We talk about it with a lot of anglers, ones who have elite series success. The classic doesn't necessarily translate because the week is so different. They practice Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They have a couple days off, then Wednesday, and then another day off, and then they start the tournament. This week, Dave Mercer. Less than 40 degrees every day, raining, cold, and now it's 80 degrees the next three days. How in the world do these guys, have they talked to you about how they tried to approach practice with everything being opposite of what you just practiced for? There's anglers fishing today. Cooper Glant is one of them that straight up said he does not have a waypoint or a starting spot. He literally was just going to fish free and fluent, and I think that's going to be a big part of this event. I mean, that's one of the reasons I... I honestly really like the classic this time of year. You get people who say a summer classic, but summer is the most stable time. I mean, you get locked onto one thing. There's not those challenges. That's what the Bassmaster Classic is all about. I mean, it's 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 Ray Scott's evil dream. Hey, you think <laughs> tournaments are tough? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to festivities and parties every night. We're going to make you work a trade show. We're going to separate the pre-fish. Yeah by a week, and then we're going to give you a little taste of pre-fish for one day, pull you from that, send you to the night of champions, then we're going to do media day where you talk to 732 people, and then the next morning, hey, go back and find those fish. Why don't you just say Chris Johnson so that you could have mentioned every Canadian angler in the first 10 minutes of the, <laughs> wow. Of wow. the hour. I'm just is... go ahead and get him in there, too. Wow. No, Cooper, I love Cooper Glant. I oh, think he's sure going to be do. a superstar. He'll never be on your radio show no, again. He, I he has it will be again. He is, a, he is a budding superstar. It'll be interesting to see how far this water temperature does come up. I've heard guys saying that they think it'll touch 70 degrees by Sunday. It was in the low 50s, 51, 52 degrees. But, you know, we had a uh, cold snap here in the last week and a half. It had uh, been warm in Tennessee, and this so water was up into the, you know, high 50s uh, just a few weeks I ago. I need so. one more bass. Uh, I think in the afternoon is good better, I think. So because the shade right here, so fish come under the dock. But hopefully, hopefully, I think every every day afternoon is better. Afternoon, I go to get the big bite. So hopefully, I want to get the bite. You think this is an accurate thought? based on everything that's changed from Wednesday to now, I think that we'll see someone on Bash Trek that has a legitimate zero or a legitimate one fish at noon or one o'clock, and they could be in contention to win on Championship Sunday late in the day there, just because it can change so quick. This, this afternoon could be big for someone, and they could roll that into a Saturday game plan and a Sunday game plan. You have to believe it's a possibility, but if we've learned one thing, the first two Elite Series events, especially Seminole, Anglers this time of year, we want it to happen so quick, and sometimes it just doesn't happen that quick. But that's why we have this gig. <laughs> we get to because watch it happen. you can stick around and find out as it goes on. Yeah, and I agree. I think we could see some late fireworks, no doubt. We will see you guys in just a moment after a short commercial break. Make sure you send us via hashtag Bassmaster Classic how you are watching the action today, and we will see you in just a moment. Bassmaster Live, day one. Fireworks.
fireworks. The 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bass Master Classic presented by Toyota at the Tennessee River is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Welcome back to the 53rd running of the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota, Knoxville, Tennessee. We're on the Tennessee River where it forms, Fort Loudon and Teleco. Those two lakes make up our playing field this weekend. What a big playing field it is. And that view right there in the background has been an X factor this week. When we presented it to the anglers, what's more important this week, water temperature, water clarity, or water level? They all said water level. We could get a little bit more water in this system. The shallow guys feel like they can compete with those smallmouth anglers. And De Mercer, it came up about three quarters of a foot last night. So some of these anglers down south maybe just still getting their getting their footing and getting their placements down to where they should be. A lot of weather changes coming too. I mean, these guys are the, the, the changes and challenges have not ended. But I'm, like I said, cheering for a big party and. Tom, I, I, I don't think you're right. I think that Gerald's party would be bigger than Matt Robertson. And maybe that's a little bit of a challenge I'm throwing out there for Matt, but. I'll tell you what, Gerald is uh, a, he's certainly a fan favorite. I mean, it's an amazing career that he's had two AOIs, yet he hasn't raised a, a blue trophy yet. But man, if he could raise that Ray Scott trophy. And by the way, how cool is that? That, that the, the Bassmaster Classic trophy is the Ray Scott trophy now. I mean, that is. Uh, that is something that that is great. But you know Gerald designed a whole new line of uh, rods and reels for 13 fishing and he spent a lot of time on those. I'm fishing his stuff now as well. I was wondering, are you getting sponsor plugs in on Come the on. stage? Yeah. I, yeah, right I just now, had Tom? to throw that Abraham? in there. Wow. You know, he, wow. he, he's just done a great job. 10 minutes. Minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Selling the farm. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to call you on that. Just make sure we're being completely straight up. There, I mean you but. got more sponsor plugs than half our anglers will <laughs> get on stage today. He was on a couple of weeks ago. I think last week I had him on Bassmaster Radio, and he was uh, as out, he's outstanding as always. That's kind know. of a plug, too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I think I saw him on the uh, Mercer podcast not too long ago either. Yeah, but <laughs> see, I don't, I don't do that. I don't, I'm, I'm at my place of business. Here's what I think about Gerald Swindle, and I wondered for years and years. I'm like, why hasn't he won? Everybody's wondered it. I mean, he's wondered it many, many times. Part of me feels like, I, and I feel like he will have a major win. before. Like I'm not just talking lead. I think he'll win the lead. I think he'll win a classic before he's done. I want to see that. But I feel like life is crazy the way it works out. Like, why hasn't he won? Because it almost makes his message more powerful. The whole positive mental attitude thing. Yeah. If he's winning, I mean, it's easy for Brandon Polnick to say that. Look, he hasn't struggled very much since he joined the Elite Series. But for Gerald Swindle to not have been able to win, it makes that story even more real and important. He is very careful also to share with younger anglers about being consistent, you know, and that's been his game. You know, I think in his mind, it's still about fill the limit and then, you know, try and call and build out the limit. But I think he's still he's not a swing for the fences guy. He wants to get those five fish and that consistency has helped him lead to two AOIs, but not a championship. And I think that we've seen him negate that. You know, they leave that consistency at the door for the classic for this, and try yeah. to swing, and that gets you, you know, out of your rhythm. Another guy, I mean, one of the biggest names in the sport, one of the best finishers that we have in this game, Greg Hackney, this title is the only major title that's ever eluded him as well. Just a different approach to it as he's hooked up. He's doing it multiple ways. We saw him in the spillway with the smallmouth. Now he's targeting these shallow largemouth as well. They're clapping, but I'm checking because that other one was longer than I thought. Spotted bass have to be 12 inches, largemouth 14, mm -hmm. and smallmouth 18 this week. It was not. Yeah. He's been really quiet this week, too. Uh, you know, I, I, he was my pick I'm going into this. In so it wasn't all candy, one, Tom. Yeah. He was my pick going into this. I mean, this, you put him on a river this time of year, he's won, and he did great last time we were here for the elite. He's fishing a lot too. You know, he fished the open at Eufaula. Yeah, he said and, he was yeah, doing. That's why he's doing it. Yeah, he wanted to just keep fishing. I fished that open, and I saw him there, and I was like, "Wow, you know, you know, back-to-back -back tournaments in Florida, and now you're going to fish the, the open at Eufaula." 
this would be akin to Dale Earnhardt winning a Daytona 500, you know, in, in, in 2000 or 1999. A guy that's won everything else but has not won, you know, the, the Bassmaster Classic. I think it would be a really, really popular win. You can argue a Greg sure, yeah. Hackney win versus a Gerald Swindle win, which would be the most popular with the fan base. Or both would be very, very popular. For what? I mean, I think we've seen you can still have a legendary career, which both these guys have done without that classic title, but it would just be another level for them. I mean, you have an Aaron Martins who showed up big in classics, but just came up just a little short. And we mentioned it, but we never hold it against him, like right. as, a, as a way to, to delegitimize anything as John Cox swings in another keeper. Man, maybe, maybe they're here. Like he might be a keeper. Well, I Cox think he said he didn't close. catch a fish in practice. I, I'm having a hard time believing that right now, but. Did he leave his hotel room, Tom? I. He said, don't put a camera with me. He said, I don't know that I'm going to catch a fish for you guys. And Let's here see. he is. I think that's three for him now, or four. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. He's got the cooler oh, yeah. ruler He's got still. the cooler ruler. <laughs> Number three. There we go. Hey, you need a cooler, oh, and you need nice a ruler. You can do it in one. But, in one. Uh, so I mean, cold, I, that still. explains John Cox right there. Right. That, that, what <laughs> you're seeing, that explains his entire life. Yeah. That was a nice one. one Old school. There. Good old boy. Always happy. It really is. Always happy. I uh, went to Central Florida and needed a place to stay for the night uh, at last second, uh, last notice, late notice. And John Cox said, yeah, come to my house. I'll go stay somewhere else tonight, and uh, you can stay at my house. I came into his house, and all of his trophies he's won over the years were in the middle of the floor with just baits all around them. Yeah. And I said, is this normal? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, this is the living room. This is welcome in. Was it used, was used to be his bedroom. <laughs> no, it really, he said his old place, his bedroom stunk like power bait. <laughs> Was this, Maddie Wong staying at your house? Uh, what, that you needed a place to stay at your parents? He did. That he was did. it, Maddie Wong. Yeah. <laughs> in Florida. And John often will have multiple boats yeah. stationed around the country, you know, so when he yeah, I mean, I really goes to different places. He, he's cut back just a hair, but, I mean, this guy fished more tournaments than anybody wanna, for the last five there. years, I think. If you're having a derby, John Cox is liable to show up and fish it. He told me the reason he does that, not just for financial reasons, but the other reason he does it is he's like, I want to stay connected to the fish. Mm -hmm. In a perfect world, he told me, he said, I wish we lived in a world where we got to pre-fish for one day. Mm -hmm. One day only, because his whole theory is, and when you think about it as an angler, it really makes a lot of sense. You think of the times when you go to any, oh, hooked up right oh, now. Come on. Number four. Oh, oh, that one might be a tree. It. And then and I got, got a stick roll. Gosh. He's a guy that would have excelled back in the day when Ray Scott made him weigh a, a tackle box with 10 pounds of tackle, and that's all you could bring. He would excel then. I don't know if he'd have a crankbait in there at that time. But Running he would, he a would very excel. similar boat to what they ran back then. Yeah. Too. No, I'm just it's like a barge, this thing. <laughs> it looks like he's fishing off. But he's, he told the story in our TV interviews on Tuesday just about his upbringing and, like, how many times in his life it fell into place and it happened when it needed to. He, he would go to a tournament with, with no more money. This was it. This was his last tournament, and he'd win that tournament. And oh, he's wow. done that enough times to where, I mean, sure what happened there. we come to expect him to win most tournaments. As we For take sure. a, look at a, a look at all of our live drones in the bottom. All right, I guess all of those are live drones, and then we have our maps up in the top right. A few guys running that canal were uh, <laughs> near Cussie. <laughs> Mercer, it seems, gone are the days of having to get up in a helicopter to get an aerial view. We've got three live drones at the same time. Yeah, we don't need no stinking choppers. <laughs> but Cox's whole deal, too, when you think about it with prefish, is you think of the times you've gone to a body of water the first day, whether you're on vacation, you're fishing a tournament or whatever, sometimes you really catch them, but sometimes you'll struggle that day. But he said, you always catch them the next day. You know what I mean? You go back to the hotel, the cabin, wherever you're staying, you start, you're like, I, I got to try this. This is my approach. And he's like, that's all I need is that one day to just get a pulse on the body of water. And and he he's often wondered if, if too much prefish actually hurts him. Yeah, you know, that's a great point. I talked to him on the dock this morning, and he said this will be won by somebody who's making on the water adjustments and just fishing. You know, just going fishing and, and, and kind of following, especially with the weather changes, you know, and 
And we've been talking about what good weather there is going to be. There is some heavy weather that's going to come across Tennessee during this tournament that, you know, pressure, air pressure changes will do a lot to these fish. And it'll be interesting to see what happens as this weather does change. Yeah, Brian New told me this morning, he's like, it's going to be really bad tomorrow. I, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm, I've not looked at the weather. I, I mean, saw in middle Tennessee uh, wind gusts up to 65 miles an hour, you know, so that's west of here. But you got to figure that some weather is going to move through at some particular point in time. Another reason to like Jeff Gustafson, though, I mean, he's got that, you know, that that water or that boat that handles heavy water well. And if somebody has to run a ways to get to where he needs to get to, he'll get there. But I also think, and Ronnie, I'm sure you can attest to this, it doesn't matter what it does. It doesn't matter what boat you're in. It's the Bassmaster oh, Classic. You are getting there. They're going to go there. Yeah. You don't want to hold back. Do not want to hold back in this event. A lot of guys have said this that week. Second, 10th, 54th, it does not matter. They want to win this one because winning this event on that Sunday with you on stage and that confetti, Jason Christie doesn't even remember the confetti because he winning that classic, he said, you're a liar. There's no confetti. I was like, I promise there was confetti. It's a life-changing deal, and it's a name-making event. So we go out to Brandon Lester. A little bit of a slow morning for him. Couple, couple keepers, two pounds and change, three pounds possibly. Not the Brandon Lester start we expected, but Big he's hooked and up how now. often does that happen, huh? Right off the snag, right? He just broke that free. He was hung up, broke that free off the snag, and boom, he's hooked up. Oh, and that's ooh. a good one. Popped off that rock. She choked it. That is a good one. Well, you know, I made that one bad. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Down the hatch. <laughs> God dang, it's about freaking time. That feels good, don't it, buddy? That does feel good. Golly. It's going to happen. I just got to get dialed in on something. It's going to happen. Ain't it? Yeah. His confidence level has changed yep. so much off of those wins last year, winning in the, the open only way I straight got off her the bat. Bite was it came over the top of that rock. And pick and she, just, she couldn't stand it. She, boom. Well, I think. He's so they humble. They're not easy to get to buy. But the time I'd say that Brandon just now getting to the time of day, like was now very confident in his ability. Time yep. to go in is yeah. And he just got that breakthrough, like Rivet. Just prime time. I they mean, know just, it's just gotta. It's gonna happen at some point. Straight up pre-spawn fishing. Gerald Swindle on Wednesday, final day of practice, we were talking about different anglers, good and bad. But when we talked about Brandon Lester, nothing but positive um, Crazy. remarks from Gerald Swindle. How impressed he is of this guy and how he hasn't peaked. He hasn't nowhere near peaked. He expects a lot of big things from Brandon Lester. And it's always good, Dave Mercer, when you can't see your crankbait in the fish's mouth. It's a pretty good one. When it's gone, it is good. And remember who his buddy is. He was sixth in this event, but he watched a very close friend, Atipo, make that lifelong dream come true. And you gotta believe that that also fuels a lot of that fire. You know what I mean? It's not the other oh, no guys. Doubt. I can be one of them. And, man, he would love to do it. It's never a bad time to win the Bassmaster Classic, but it's a great time to win it. Not in your hometown, but in a place that means a lot. Knoxville, Tennessee, to most Tennessee anglers in the field, they love this place and they know the fans are gonna be here. So to hold that trophy on Sunday evening, would be a dream for them all. Jeff Gustafson practicing right now, still on top. We'll be right back, Bassmaster Live. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota is sponsored by Humminbird. We are almost one third of the way through the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Halfway through day one right now. Leaderboard is shaking out the way it is and there's been some drastic swings in the conditions out there. And as we take a look at our TH Marine weather watch, the weather tomorrow looks beautiful for the most part. We don't see the wind and the rain necessarily there other than the morning storms. Once those pass through, that high temperature may get into the mid 70s. 
little chillier in the morning and then on Championship Sunday, a little bit more evened out. The highs not as high, but the lows not as low, mostly sunny. It's kind of backed off from the projections we saw a few days ago where it was going to be 75 to 80 every day. It's kind of low 70s with still some jacket weather but the, early in the day. The low temperatures not being very low is I think got a That's lot of huge. guys fired up. That's where you're not going to have the too much of a drop in water temperature. It'll continue to warm up. I don't know what the low was last night, but it felt like 60 degrees yeah. when, I woke, when I walked out this morning. So the, the lows tonight or last night were very high. And look at that one catch. We saw that one good one from Brandon Lester went from 33rd to 14th. There's so many of those guys sitting in that place right around the cut line. One catch can get them, hey, I'm in the top 10 now. It's still anybody's ball game to, as you start to build your limit, and he's hooked up with possibly number four. And if he's on the right ones, like you said earlier, this is a tournament where you get five or six bites, that's fine, because you're fishing for the best five or six bites. That's not. I don't know about that one. One he wants to take to Mercer at the way and with him if it makes it. Are. Well, I mean, he doesn't really take him to me. I mean, he get, kind of gives him the crisp bowls, and I just yell <laughs> stuff about him. Another line burner. But I appreciate that. Got to be 14. I mean, it's touching. He said it's touched. See it. There it is. You have to mouth closed. Have to fan the tail. Can't pinch the tail. Always nervous when you have. Oh, you're one talking of those. about measuring the fish. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't saying mouth closed. I mean, what are, I'm talking to me and no you. Idea that's where not, you were going that's not possible. I'll let you ride for a little while. Number four for Brandon Lester. One thing that you'll notice a lot of these guys, people watching might say, what are. What are they fishing? As, as we get a confirmation of it that he is number four and he's going to be in the top ten probably. Now, if the camera panned to the left a little, it would look like a do-nothing flat mud bank. Here comes number Looks five. Like number too. five, possibly. For sure. That was you a guys little are better. incredible at counting. That's a fatty. That is a chunk. Look at it. Look at that. But that's what yeah. you're talking Just about, Ronnie. That that do nothing flat bank. That's where they're spawning. That's where they're going to spawn. So these yeah, fish look yeah. like they're moving in. Look at the belly on that. Well, and I was going to say, Tom, was out there with Swindle on Wednesday. You see all of the rocks sticking out of the water on banks and nothing in that they can fish. All of the banks with the do nothing flat, all the rocks and the stumps are actually in the water. And so they look more like, like useless there. places. I mean, and these guys are finding the rocks to I'd bounce like to off of like we saw. Some of them, don't get me wrong, I want bigger ones, but. He was seventh That's before a, that uh, one, so this is going to move him up top five, That's maybe. That's good in there. Nice fatty. A man fishes two pounds, I'd say. That's five. Well, you're huh? right about how humble he is, too. Okay. He's such a great dude. Thank you. Finally made a good stop. My, how quickly things can change. I mean, it ain't no big bag, don't get me wrong, but my confidence is a lot higher than it was 20 minutes ago. Spent a few days with the family camping before the, this, the just final to chill out like along the shore of where we're fishing. I think maybe one, well, I'm not sure, maybe one lake up. I don't know. It was just on. Yeah. But he then just, he went to Gatlinburg. Gatlinburg. They did right, stuff yeah. here, though, yeah. He was up in Gatlinburg. Ah, beautiful. Just came off of uh, spring break for the kids in Tennessee. That's why. So he was, he was up there during spring break. That's the one thing as well for your part of the show, Dave. We broke records with this event in 2019 while the UT Knoxville students were on spring break for college. They're they're back. That was last week for college. Oh, One more we're kind of inching up hundreds. You know, you, you you break the record by a couple hundred people. Could we hit 160? Could we break it by a couple thousand possibly? I, you got to believe. I mean, just being here in town and, and getting around, it is so much busier. And you want to talk about crazy. You drive through that campus. Have you seen those robots? I mean, everybody's dressed in orange, and there's they have robots that deliver lunches. Like, it, it looks like a cooler with wheels and a light post on it. Yeah. I'm going to get one to drive up to the stage during waves. Have we gotten confirmation whether those goalposts are still in the water? They are not. I did not see them. got them out of there? I'd assume where they threw them, it's not too deep. No. 
They probably uh, realized, wait yeah. a minute, we can cut these up into one-foot sections and make some money off of this thing. They definitely probably had to slow the flow of the current yeah. to retrieve those out of there. <laughs> Otherwise, they could wash down river. But Lester commented that as well. He said, I'm going to march my trophy if I win the Classic this week down the street just like they did, but I will not throw it in the water. I'm not oh. throwing the trophy in the water. No. That would be awesome He's to see up a again. Mega is again. I'm talking about like a water house cook or a smoke break. So something got to spot is that last one. I don't think he makes it. No. Two fish all morning and four in the last 10 casts for Brandon Lester. Big Vols fan, by the way, Brandon Lester. Not feeling good about last night, but. Well, oh, you've brought that up a lot today. You yeah. really know how to cozy up to the well, Knoxville crowd. Now, when you, you broadcast in Atlanta or in uh, Alabama, <laughs> you know, like I do, with a little roll tide tonight. I know you Arkansas fans I'm are you're hurting too. You it. Arkansas <laughs> fans are hurting too. I'm not talking about it. <laughs> Lester last year, you know, was having such an incredible season. And you think another sports, you know. You got your big contract, LaMelo Ball. What'd you buy? <laughs> oh, I got a Lambo. I said to Lester, I'm like, you're, you're making some bank. What did you spend those bags on? And he's like, I bought a camper. <laughs> bought a camper for the girls so we can go camping. And I'm like, so, like, you're going to use tour around? And he said, no, no, but it's more for just to, just to go camping. Yeah. Be, you know, roast marshmallows and the he like. He went straight to the beach after the Pickwick win, took the trophy with him, took the blue trophy with him, picked up the family, went right to the – they had a plan already to go to down by Orange Beach, and, yeah. and they just headed right after Pickwick and took his hundred grand and his trophy and went to went to the beach. That's ideal. I would, I would love to go to the beach at any point. <laughs> Got a lot of beaches up there in Canada, Dave? Yeah, and believe it or not, we do have sand and water in Canada, Ronnie. And gravity. Yes, you guys yes, got it's gravity. amazing. It's hard to believe. Hey, my don't see them a lot of the year, but they are there. My in-laws did not believe Arkansas had gravity when I took their daughter and moved her 12 hours away, so I had to confirm that with them. I like how you were honest and said you took her. Yes, 100%. <laughs> there is, you know. Looks like Taco Ito has moved out of that marina and gone out to some open water. And Jason Christie, did you get the feeling when Jason Christie – you just feel like when he won one, he's going to win three. You know, it just it felt like that, that once he broke through, that he'll win multiple classics. I think he could be our next, I don't know about back-to-back, -back, but our next multiple classic winner. He's got that kind of game, that's for sure. I always wonder, I mean, I believe in momentum, but I always wonder how much of that is, like, momentum works. But it's... I don't know that Jason Christie learned how to win a classic. Things went wrong. Yeah. It's, it's, that's what makes the classic what it is. It's everything that's the opposite of normal tournaments. Well, he's going to get the breaks it, it, that he didn't people, get. Yeah. There's more people. Watch, there's more eyeballs. And, yes, there's experience. But, I mean, I think he's definitely proved that. I mean, he went and won an elite. Not the next event, but the one after that. Right. It's, it's the luck thing. When people talk about luck and fishing, Yes, there's things that are lucky, but when you put yourself in a position that many times, it's going to happen in your favor at some point. He has eight classics before this one. This is All right. uh, still he hasn't completed a day, so it's eight previous classics and four top sevens. You put yourself in the top ten enough times on the final day of a classic, and you have the skills, Jason, it's going to happen. So I think that, uh, yeah, this being his ninth classic and he's already got four top tens, but he admits he, that he shots became, on goal are incredible. He has become a better fisherman. You, you think these guys, because of the level that they're at, that's it. You know, they're there, and that's what they're going to be. He talked about the loss at, in 2018 at Hartwell in a, in a decision he didn't make on Championship Sunday. When he went back and won there last year, he was able to make adjustments he wouldn't have made in 2018. You know, he, when, when his chatter bite, bite went away, you know, this time, forward-facing sonar all you know all of a sudden Jason Christie with a got to go to the docks yeah go, you know going with a uh, a spinning rod doing things that we didn't see him doing the past he is a better fisherman than he was in those other classics that's kind of what I echoed about Gerald Swindle they're not immature but I feel like they're making a lot of mature decisions yeah. that put them in a good position and yeah everybody asked last last year I rode with Christie on the final day at Hartwell for practice and they say 
can Christie win this year? And I was like, he's got two different things, and the biggest thing is the timing. When he leaves stop one before he goes to the next pattern, if he times that up perfectly, he'll win. And on that final day when he needed to time it up, he did. And he trained for that. Like he literally would fish there or any lake that he was fun fishing. He said he would give himself, you've got an hour, go catch one big bass. And he, and he would literally like a drill when he was a basketball coach and he drilled it and he set the timer and went and knew, you know, knew how likely it is to happen. I mean, he's an incredible angler, but that's the truth about all of them. If you look at the evolution of professional bass fishing in the last, honestly, the last five years, I mean, it has been leaps and bounds for the last 20 years. But in the last five years, what electronics has done, what it, it's making anglers change. And it's also the, the increase of the incredible young anglers that are coming up. They are not one trick ponies. You cannot be a one trick pony anymore. There used to be a day where you could dominate at one technique. David Fritz on the crankbait. And yeah. you know, he'll catch him then. You won't make a Bassmaster Classic if you only have one technique. And they, I think they've all pushed themselves to get better. You gotta be versatile and calculated. Like they said, timing wise, you gotta be calculated. Hey, there's a bloater. Carlson buddies when I was over in Australia last fall. Quite a few of them are here, and uh, you know I made friends with some of them. So this is a good little Aussie snack over there. I was eating them. We were probably sharing a pack a day between the two of us when we were over there. But yeah, good little chocolate uh, crack cookie or whatever. But one of the guys brought them to me at media day yesterday. So that's my my boat snack today. Boy. Um. <laughs> Get a choke on it. Easy now. Those Tim Tams have a hard time going here. down. I'm just I'm trying to look for rock really, but there's very little of it out here. I mean it's hard to find. And that's why I think when you find a little bit of it, it's got fish on it. Um, so there's a little shallow one in, sh in shore here, some rock. I actually fished it in practice up shallow, I didn't catch anything, but I'm just gonna do a little float by this and um, yeah I'm just kind of I need I would love to find another good spot and you know hopefully uh, yeah hopefully I can get lucky and find a few more and then if we lose some of the people that are with us we might I might be able to maybe swing by one one place that I think I could catch one at maybe but so are we we'll see what happens here. Are we seeing Jeff Gustafson practice and take his time practicing to lose his flotilla <laughs> to go sneak over and maybe upgrade to that 20-pound yeah. mark? We will see. But Jeff Gustafson, man, long way from home, but feeling like a little bit of home field advantage here. When you dial in something on a body of water, it's incredible how you can duplicate and even build on that years later, and that's what he's doing so far today. Where he comes from is where that technique was perfected, designed. He has done this, he's doing something that he has done for 20 years and competing against anglers that have done it for five years. So, but here's what stands out to me. Those Tim Tams look a lot better <laughs> than the Vegemite Carl Jacobson yeah. made me eat. I need to get some better Australian friends. Well, I'll tell you too, the other thing about Gussie is through his years as a guide and as a tournament pro, he really knows how to manage his fish. And that's what he's doing. He's managing that situation just like he did a couple of years ago. He knows what he can get there. He's the best at catching those types of fish. And right now, that dude's going to be tough to catch. He's on about a 49, 50 pound uh, pace. That's the number I think that's going to win this tournament. And, and, and he's going to be tough to track down. Even Boy, more so. Changed. 17 wow. a day, 18 a day. I'll, yeah. I will take that all day long time. Are you Abraham. on the Gussie train now? I am now. I, I think that he's on the weight train that I thought. <laughs> oh. I think I'm, I'm very, I'm pleased with how Gussie's done. Look at know? that guy uh, there. But the, I just don't want him love. to stop fishing, Dave. I want him to keep, keep the intent. Well, he's not going to stop. He's not going to stop. Won't stop. Don't stop. We've got the weigh-in later today. They will check in on the water, check in and load their trailers up at 3.30 Eastern time. And the first fish will probably happen 45 minutes or so, an hour maybe later than that. Come funnel in from the expo to the weigh-in. See Dave Mercer and the whole gang as they weigh in. Bassmaster Classic Fish. They just mean more this week. Out his cowboy hat. He's trying... It He's trying to make the cowboy hat and the headset work, and, and we're not sure how that's all going to work. It's play. not working real good, Steve. <laughs> all you can that's do is all. try. 
Yeah. I need a neck pillow. And I'm telling you, it would hold up <laughs> everything right here. And then you could take a nap while we're doing the show. Take, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. I need a nap. How about that? All right. I got, look, I'm using my mustache, and it's holding the mic. The mustache is holding the mic. The mustache is holding the, uh, the headset up. There you That's go. That's why I have a mustache. <laughs> are we actually live right now? We are live. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's up? All right. <laughs> the trials and tribulations of being a cowboy. But, yeah. First world, <laughs> first world problems, for sure. For sure. So That's awesome. I haven't. I didn't get a chance to visit with y'all much uh, before we went on online. But have y'all been paying attention to Bass Tracker? Is this the first opportunity that you've seen what's going on on the water? Actually, I've I've uh, drove up here this morning and watched the live for about an hour and forty five minutes. First thing in the morning, but um, you saw a little bit of Gussie then. I did see that flurry from Gussie. I mean, he went on a run for about four catches that I seen right yeah. there, and it was bop, bop, bop. Broke off a big one right at, or lost a big one lost. right at the, at the beginning. And I get what he's doing, being able to try to boat flip some of those fish, because when you have that jig head in there, my experience, they get off a lot of times when you try to play them out compared to a drop shot hook or something like that. So I see why he did what he did. Obviously, he knows what he's doing. He's got 17 pounds of smallmouth. 15 smallmouth on this body of water is going to be tough to beat. And going into this event, everybody always looks at, the X factor and I, I the X factor for this event is how is forward facing sonar going to play out talking to someone that just got a blue trophy and a hundred thousand dollars with forward facing sonar let's hear your thoughts yeah so I got to watch about uh, 30 seconds of it just a minute ago yeah uh, so I don't really know exa exactly what's going on but um, I think I probably know what Jeff's doing just because is he not doing the same thing he did last time identical yeah, he was here. okay so yeah I mean um, I like it. <laughs> I, 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 well, I can tell that. you that. I, I like the forward facing sonar. It catches a lot of, well, it doesn't catch the fish, but it'll show you where they're at. And um, yeah, I picked Jeff to win. Do you? <laughs> sure. Easy. He's leading it. Why not? Would you have picked that yesterday? Uh, I think he was going to be a big player, yeah. I thought, because it's, I mean, the, with the weather conditions and everything the way it is, I think, you know, it's, it's going to line up perfect for him to, to do the same thing. So. Now, is it going to last? That's the question. Yeah. Is it going away? What do you think? What do I think? Yeah. You know, what I, I mean, I, I have all, I think about all of it because that's what I'm paid to do. Okay. Now, I'm asking you from a fisherman's standpoint. Yeah. You know, y'all's, y'all's viewpoint is different. And I've heard several viewpoints this morning to, up until this point in time on what's going to happen or what could happen. There's never a, this is going to happen other than the fact that there's going to be a, some sort of fireworks on the bank to, you know, shallow, mm. you know, that 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 will pick up at some point in time. Now, what it uh, how that affects those 20 foot deep fish. I don't know. Right. Yep. I mean, and I think that's the big question to answer. Well, you look at I mean, I'm just going to use our last tournament for an example that I won. I didn't think those fish were going to stay out there as long as they did. And um, they did. And I mean, there was, you know, so I think, I think there's for sure that it, that those fish can hold up for, for Jeff out there deep. I mean, without a doubt, still early in the year too. You know what I mean? So, right. um, yeah. Well, I mean, you would think that, you know, that those, that a deeper fish would, would not move as much, mm -hmm. but they're smallmouth. Right. And that's another, you know, yeah. you're talking green fish. Now we're talking brown fish, but you know, and, and Nixon or, it was Nixon or Hank, one of the two that was talking about, look, there's things that are happening with the sunshine and the plankton and everything else. There's a firework show going on above them, and they want to be a part of it this time of year. Yeah. And I, I get that part of it. Mm -hmm. So when does all that take place? And so it's all a timing thing. It's the same timing that we talk about with y'all on water. If I would have gone to this point first and this one second, you, your whole – success ratio changes because uh, you know uh, so you know everything sometimes is timing I knowledge just, timing and then according to Hank Parker which I agree with execution actually putting it together I think you know the last time we were here was 2021 2019 correct 2019 it was no the that was the classic 2020 2021 2021 so forward-facing sonar 
was utilized, but it wasn't as big of a, right. like you didn't see as many guys just relying on it as much. Right. And Gussie was doing 2D. He wasn't doing exactly. Yeah. And so. so with that, and we've always heard that Teleco had those big schools of smallmouth, big, you know, they, that they would roam right. or whatever. So now you got a whole group of anglers that do utilize it, that, you know, forward facing sonar is so much more of their arsenal. I'm more surprised that more guys aren't doing that, that they haven't cracked that code, because you look at how fast Gussie did that, and and, and he said he's got two more schools found, no. which is, yeah, that's Scary. dangerous. I don't think it's going to go away when you only need five fish a day. And if he catches five smallmouth a day, it's, it's going to make everybody else have to catch them. And that shallow deal, I just... I feel like it's harder to come across those bites and not that it won't happen because someone's going to have a big bag just like Zal Dane did in the 2019 classic. He had two big bags. Is that how that was? I think the yeah, last he two was, days. Uh, he was a uh, first, second or third. He was in the top. I covered him the final day uh, okay, and he was throwing cool. that swim bait. Throwing that big swim bait, getting those big bites. A mixture of largemouth and smallmouth, or was it all smallmouth? You know, I think that, it, that that early in the tournament he had a couple smallmouth, but uh, you know, I don't, when I when I covered him, it was only green. Yep. So is Jeff in the same like area he fished last time? Is he fishing the same thing? Similarly, mm -hmm. like where we called him this morning. Similarly, yeah. Uh, oh, so it's not the same spot though. He 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 caught those not in the same place that he caught them in 2021. Close. Close. Interesting. If, if I understand it. Right. Yeah. Then, well, I mean, and he wanted to get it, get out of there as quick as he could so nobody would see him. Yeah. And they, because they, their assumption is, is where he's fishing now, mm -hmm. but he's still catching yes. decent fish yep. there. But he has, you know, he moved away and went and you know, he probably was like, I got to go get my limit. And he went and did that. And now <clears throat> he's playing, the, he's playing the strategy game. What happened there? Man, that eye's got to be bothering him bad. He's putting drops in there. Oh, it dries yes. out really bad. Mm. Poor guy. So, Brandon, for those of you who aren't uh, familiar, Brandon suffered a bout of meningitis. And and now Bill's palsy. And, I mean, he's actually got an eye patch on today, which I've not seen him have. Uh, I mean, he, he is a, uh, a physical wreck. He's a trooper. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> unbe no unbelievable. But, yeah. I mean, and, and you know, he, he came close. He finished in the top at Okeechobee. And, uh, you know, I mean, he's did well at just too. And did well at Seminole. And, you know, and now he's at his home, really his home water. Even though it says Salisbury, North Carolina, he is from Knoxville. Mm -hmm. And uh, fished this water more than anybody in the field, maybe with exception to David Mullins. Uh, but. You know, he's and he's hurting. Yeah. Yeah. Bad. You know, a lot of people will be sitting at the house and, and feeling sorry for themselves, but he, he refuses to do that. So he's been an inspiration. So I'm yeah, proud of cool. him. Proud of Absolutely. him a lot. So 100 percent. You see him creeping back there, getting getting pretty shallow. It looks like he's in the back of a creek. Oh, yeah. You know, he's going to be he's been he's been fishing from what I've seen him today for, for the six hours or five hours or however long we've been doing this he's been uh, sh the sh uh, shallow to medium mm -hmm. nothing out deep so I don't even and I don't even know what he had as what do we got there what does he have on fast track uh, he's got three for seven is that right yep. yeah three for seven pounds so. that's pretty good start yeah, yeah three decent fish and the best part of the day is yet to come. Right. Right. Um, what what time are they due in? About 3.30? It'll be 3.30. 3.30. First flight, 3.30. Okay. Uh, sure enough. Second so yeah, flight. You're going to see know. some big catches come across here in the last hour, hour and a half, typical of this time of the year. You got the conditions, these fish wanting to pull up. Um, my experience with this type of weather and the weather that we've had, we tend to get ahead of the fish almost we feel like it's oh my gosh it's so warm out all of a sudden and you want to go to the very very backs of something and yeah and not that they won't be there but the water level on this body of water is so down right now and those fish know they don't like to get back in those places where they're vulnerable they want to be on that next little staging stuff next right. little this next little that not necessarily on the you know the dirt dirt shallow um 
But those guys that keep testing that, and they'll test it here and test it there, maybe not fully commit to it, you know, those are the guys that's going to pick off one of those big large mouth. Right. That's the stuff that's just really that's a, inconsistent. That's that John though. Cox did thing. That's right. And, and you know, what a lot of people don't understand, and maybe you all can even uh, uh, educate me a little bit on it, is, you know, we have six – nighttime, temp, typically in the spring, nighttime temperatures are more important than daytime temperatures. Mm -hmm. And, you know, elaborate a little bit on that. I mean, you know, we – 60. 60 last night. 60 is good. Yeah. That really gets them up. Keeps them, keeps that water temp from falling. So that warm yeah. day that we had, that 60 degrees, it didn't lose a lot, which is a very, very big deal. Well, I mean, and you gain because you don't lose. Right. You know, and then so, so sometimes we sit around and think about, well, the sun's going to shine, the wind's going to blow, it's Water's American. It's going to blow this, you know, warm, uh, warmer water around, and the sun's going to. And we're watching the surface temp, but but really sometimes the 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 fish are moving in the mm. the dark at night. They're yep. night they're night flyers. Yeah, you know, ninjas. And, we, and so that testing that you're talking about with John Cox, that might be the first thing that he does right off the bat. Boom! I'm going to go see a fish rip shot. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to check them again two hours from now. And then I'm going to check them again. An hour from now, or whatever. Well, I thought John Cox just fish shallow no matter what. Well, you're right. My, right <laughs> He's bad, two, bad, two foot bad choice of work. angler right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Brandon Card no, could yeah, be he, that guy. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we take Brandon Card and, hey, this is a uh, – I'm going to go up there and check him shallow. Yeah, and you're going to see a lot of those guys that's got, you know, that – eight, 10, 12 pounds are going to start making that transition. You're going to start seeing three pounder, three and a half, four pounder come across the, score, uh, the board here real quick that they're catching them uh, doing those things. And like I said, it, when I fished here in 21, made the top 10 and the final day, super windy, but it had been warming up that whole week. And up to that point, I was catching them on those little secondary points on a jerk bait. And I decided that I was going to really test out this backwater that had been in the back that I haven't really messed with a lot. Spent about three or four hours fishing in there. Never caught a fish. Never caught a fish. And all of those fish had still been out there. They never transitioned back to that flat. And I thought for sure if I spent the second half of the day back there, yeah. I was really going. And, and so, and not to say that those fish still aren't, um, but it, it, you're going to see a transition at some point throughout this tournament where you're going to have someone fishing a bridge like this, and then all of a sudden, you know, those fish will push back. When and where, yet to find out, but kind of like what John Cox was doing earlier, he's thrown that Fritz side five, threw it by a little stick in dirt, mud, water in the back, and he caught one. That's the type of stuff that you could pull back in there and catch a bunch of them, so. Well, what you just described, all of that is, is what this whole thing's about, what you do every day. For your living, what you do every day is you guess. Yeah, I guess I'm I like going, I, I'm going to I guess these fish will do this or these fish. I'm guessing that this is going. I'm guessing. Yep. And you're yeah. guessing is I like, though, like we were talking about Jeff, obviously he's leading it. But um, to me, that's more consistent way to fish right now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you hope that they pull up. Hope that they go back in this or come in. Hope, I don't like hoping that. doesn't catch. I don't fish. like that. I don't like that. I so guess like, and I hope, you know, I mean, I guess that's what. I mean, I'm still new in my career in fishing, but, like, I feel like the offshore is where I want to be. Like, I'm not – I'll fish shallow. Love fish shallow, but I just feel like that's more, you know, some of my style. And I think Jeff likes that too, you know, obviously. No, there's no doubt. Yeah, so, I mean, we fish He's shallow. He's probably glad to. that you're not in this class. I, I was going to say, like, I was going to go right to where he caught him. I don't know if anybody else did. Like, why isn't there more people over there doing that? You know, yeah. it's kind of funny, but, but yeah, yeah, definitely would have been checking that out and trying to catch some smallmouth. They definitely checked it out in practice. You, yeah. you know that, don't you, honey? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sure I'm they sure, did. I'm sure they 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 ran it pretty good, and it's it's a commitment thing, right? You know, like the traditional, it's a the Tennessee River, cranking, throwing a jig, stuff like that. Their traditional ways of getting bites uh, are still going to produce. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so going out on a limb, going out with your sonar and doing something completely against the grain, it's got to be someone like a Tyler Rivette. You know what I mean? That's that's super 
yeah. confident. I keep waiting to do for that. that to show itself. Right. You, you know? know, a Brandon Polinick who likes to do that. But Brandon's so versatile in other things. So, you know, it just people well, found the, their the groove. The other part of it is, is we've, we've been talking about this morning. At some point in time, lunchtime to the end of this thing, which is the next three hours, mm -hmm. that there's going to be, you know, that that's all it's always the case always every march every day of mm -hmm. very, you know yeah the latter the, the later you go on the day the better that is so there's going to be a little flurry here or there absolutely and i keep expecting for that to show up yep for a shallow water guy and and you know so so we expect those things to happen we're looking at greg hackney right now and and thinking okay this is the master of that late day mar late march day rally yep you know as well with as uh swindle and and a few more uh, but none of these rallies have, have started taking place that would do you we thought we've we've said all day it's going to happen do you still think it's going to happen um I, I, yeah i think there's potential for sure yeah Abs absolutely i guess i guess and i hope is that what yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that that window is yet to be open. I mean, yet. They're, it's going to happen. I mean, you look. You got Greg here. He's fishing. He's fishing for five bites. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I don't know what he has. I was trying to find him on, on here. Yeah, he was. He has. Uh, two just, for four nine. Yeah, there you go. Two for four nine. So. Then you got someone like Matt Robertson, who's probably doing something a little similar down the river. Actually, um, actually, he's not. What does he have? Matt has two for eight four. So he's got three more fish to go to the bottom line, which is a huge deal. What's we, we felt like we, we, we were watching him earlier today, right around the time it happened. And he was kind of off fishing ledges. Huh. You know, drops, about right. ledges, you know, in, in that shallow to mid, basically the kind of stuff that if you're going down the bank and you're hitting the bank, that you need to turn around and throw behind you a few times. Yeah. You know. Okay. Uh, but it, but. But that, you know, those two came pretty quick, and then you can even look at his time frame. Now, that doesn't mean that he's even in service. Mm. That's the other part of that. True. Uh, Hackney yeah. having the the um, the service that he has for his camera and knowing that his cameraman is running his bass track, uh, that's his, his is going to be two fish. Now, whether the weights are accurate or not, uh, or he sandbags because he's the world's worst at that, you know, low balling. I think a lot of these guys are. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> I'm not going to say y'all are any better. Uh, <laughs> hey, I did win the Bass Track contingency okay. at Seminole. Okay. So, uh, yeah. there, oh, you did. Probably the last time that will ever happen. Good it happened by chance. <laughs> <laughs> great. That looks like a man could get right in a hurry right there in that spot, though, for sure. No, yes. uh, uh, no doubt. Surprised he's not really snatching on them and that's one of those deals too you know how it is like you could sit there oh, yeah. you could sit there for three hours and not catch one and then boom you catch three back to back to back <sighs> that's why i don't fish stuff like yeah, that <laughs> that's why i don't fish stuff like that it's it's that, yeah it's kind of like flaky yeah i fished one tournament he just said he saw one jump out of the water there he did three feet. Yeah. a bass yeah sure wasn't a trout <laughs> a carp i don't know <laughs> Are there any trout up We're here? We're supposed to listen when he talks, and we weren't. <laughs> yeah, I know. Huh? Yeah, I know. So the question that we, we've just been asked is how dangerous is what, what he's doing to the, the average guy? Dangerous as in safety, safety. or? Safety. I it doesn't look that bad to me. No, I don't know what's behind him. Right. Yeah, that's um, the, the, it's what mainly it what the there. current will will carry you into. Uh, mainly what the current will. Sure. Will, yeah. But but even then, that current is not all that. Now. No, it's it's coming pretty good off to his left there. So yeah. like, yeah, it could be. I mean, you definitely want to. Yeah, use some caution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wear a wear one of those inflatables. Yes. Um, my Maybe. guess is is that that he's got. A, older. Oh my, he's what? got the power pole down too. He does. Oh, oh, look at there. You there you go. go. And it's a, oh, it's a, small oh, it's mouth. a good one. Wow. Ooh. That's uh -oh. See, nice. maybe this is the power. See if he'll give us That's some. That's looking at this. Oh, skinny it might not it be 18. Oh. It's skinny. going to be close. He's skinny. He He's already disappointed. I think I he's 18. Think, look how long that fish he is. Short. He got a long oh, way no, to go. No, he is short. Come on. No. 
be naked. I mean, he is 18 and a quarter. There you go. There you go, Greg. So what are they? Gosh, two, I feel two like I'm in the boat with them. Two and a half. See, he's you know, washed up on the bank there. Fish for spots and largemouth because they only have to be 12 and 14. But I have decided to, <laughs> during the Bassmaster Classic, to challenge myself to only targeting 18 inch or longer fish. <laughs> Surprised at how skinny that fish was. I love Greg. He's funny. Come on, Greg. It's tuned Give us up. some more. Because there is a little bit of uh, sarcasm in that I mean, state. He's smaller, yeah. he's smaller than the other two. I, yeah, I, I it's guess. It's not easy pounds. to catch an 18 inch smallmouth. I was like, I and there's a lot of those 17 like, inchers in there. Fish, but there. There's no way this one can be 18. This will look like nothing compared to the other ones. So he just caught a two, two and a quarter. And the other two that he has, he's uh, talking about them being much bigger. So that means that he's got at least seven, seven and a half and three. But he's not, that's his, his bass track doesn't indicate that. It's going to indicate six pounds or four and a half, five pounds. Promise you. And it's going to be two and a half pounds heavy. That's very good. Because he didn't want you showing up on him. <laughs> that's true. What do you know? Jason was throwing a spinnerbait. <laughs> right? Was that what he was throwing? I think Christy so. Christy was earlier. Yep. Where was he? There he is. Oh, and oh, we got Brandon Lester. Lester. That was my pick. Really? I said by, by the end of day three, Brandon's going to have a, a good chance, consistency-wise. I did not think this stuff that Gussie's doing, I did not think that was going to happen. But I expected to see someone pushing that envelope or more than enough guys pushing that that envelope. So what what does Brandon have now? Eleven seven. Five for eleven seven. See, that's gonna be that's gonna be in he's gonna be a top ten. And here's the thing about this huh? body of water. Huh? I think no. you're I think you're allowed a bad day. I I say a bad day. A lot you know, that twelve, yeah. thirteen pounds. Because, because I'm telling you, you he's, got more, he's got yeah, more yeah. than that, too. True. You know, Lester's not, not a sandbagger like Hackney, but but that yeah. I'm telling you, he's got more than that. He's got 12 plus, 100%. And it may be as much as 13. So he's going to be in the top 10 or 15. Right. Which is nobody. I've talked to people before. Like, yeah, I'm right where I want to be. No, you want to be in the lead. No, I don't want to be in the lead. Everybody, pay. no, mm. you know. We try to justify our position, mm. and uh, but it, I mean he'll be in good shape, yeah. in position to win. The old school guys back in the day when the when the competitor or the spectators were really really bad would say, "Man, I don't want to be in the lead going into the final day." Yep. Uh, especially on Logan Martin or Lay Lake. Well, that's uh, kind of the situation Gussie might be in, unfortunately. I know. And then, and we'll see how but, you know live has live has kept a, kept a lot of the spectators off the water because now they oh, can yeah. see everything. Yeah, well, you sense. can watch it. We're going to know what the impact better. is at Grand. But, yeah, true. Uh, yeah, Jeff's he's catching them deep though. Well, now you got a lot everybody on the boat with the. I would I'd tell everybody, hey, turn your live scopes off. Yeah, please. and they mine so you know? well, Joey. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> the spectators mind so well. <laughs> they're going to do everything you tell them to. Well, you're right. You're right. And you just they're going to probably over there like trying to watch my bait go down they, and like, uh, catch the fish. Yeah. Like, you just had to deal with it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah but, but, not, but, but the <laughs> weather was different and the location was different. Yeah. You know, and it's a different turn. The, the trees probably helped you out a little bit. Yes, yeah, so they blocked some other people's <laughs> sonar, so it was good. <laughs> no, I didn't have any issues That's at, good. at Seminole. That's I, good. I had a little fan squad out there and. I told them to turn all their stuff off anyway, and they they do listen. That's good. But uh, but yeah, it could be an no. issue. That that definitely could be a potential issue. Well, just being, I just knowing the general area that he was at around that canal, you know, not I don't know if that's where he caught them all, but still, that's going to be part of his deal too. And that's not like now that he showed the world that, you know, the last time. Local but it's still, events, it's evidently it's still working. Oh, it's going to keep working. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's just. How but well I mean, it, can you it get didn't, those bites? They didn't beat it up Lester's that bad. One. Okay. Come on, Brandon. Hey, not very big. He doesn't look, act like it's very big. 
And it's not going to keep. No, it might he's keep. Throwing there. It might be a 14 inch. Little it's got a little trap. belly on him, too. Nope. Some kind of lipless crankbait, right? Yep. Yep. He might be in, I mean, sitting there fishing three foot of water. Yeah. Way out on a bar. Yeah, it looks like probably a point. Something comes out. It's probably got those, see those rocks on the bank back there? Probably some rocks under the water out there on the point. And those rocks played a big deal when I, the last time I fished here, you'd find those rocks, finding those those rock veins that come out. Yeah, rock um, veins. They, they like to get down in those. They hold heat. That water temp's what, low 50s, I think, still, so. Do you know the water temp? Don't have a clue. I'm pretty sure it was low 50. 50s, is what, 52, 53. Yeah, it sounds about right. Hmm. It's a time of the year when magic happens on the Tennessee River, though, really quick. Right. <clears throat> what do you think? How big a bag a guy can catch a largemouth out here, like potentially? Well, we we saw some yeah big, twenty plus yeah you know bags. I'd be surprised if I didn't see that, you know, over three days. Like twenty five. I don't know e about twenty three. Yeah, 23. Mm. I know a college tournament, they had 24 and a half pounds, and they had two large mouth and three small mouth. Or wow. no, two small mouth, a mean mouth. Mm. Oh, wow. weighed like six mm. something. There we are. Yeah. <laughs> We're back. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's going to it's going to become, at some point in time, we will see when that five and six pound fish shows up for a lot of guys. Yeah. Yep. I mean, and they're, they have them. I mean, that four and a half to five pound small, or not small mouth, but large mouth is, is here. The four and a half pound, five to six pound small mouth, not so much. But when those bigger green fish start showing up mm -hmm. and they're, in, they're, they're more numerous than, than what they have small mouth. And it doesn't mean that those bigger small mouth aren't there. It's just like Hank Parker and I were talking in uh, the last hour. They just aren't schooled up. You don't see them. You don't see that big a fish school up like you do at St. Lawrence, you know. So there'll right. be a loner over here and a loner over there, and you'll have to be hunting and pecking. So we're gonna hunt and peck some more and watch some more of this day here after we go to a commercial break, and we hope you stay with us on Live Mix with Joey Sefuentes and Hunter Shryrock. Cold weather fishing on the hot lakes of Texas. Everybody ought to do it once. Now next week, the Bass Masters will be with bassing great Roland Martin for a look at spring pattern fishing, and we'll learn the winning pro ways of... <laughs> All right. Now next week, the Bass Masters will be with bass fishing great Roland Martin for a look at the spring patty <laughs> Now, next week, the Bass... But the bass fishing great Wooler Martin. All right, do it again. Spinnerbait fishing with Charlie Ingram and topwater tips from the great Charlie Ingram. I'm sorry, that's Charlie Campbell. Tune us in. It's a tough mother. You should be there right now. Bye. Spinnerbait fishing with Charlie Campbell and our good buddy will teach us about topwater fishing. That's Charlie Campbell and I just blew it trying to add a line. So thank you very much. Fishing with Charlie Ingram and top water from tip from Charlie Frankie Jr. and the Susie Santa <laughs> Tune us in for the Bassmasters. It'll be a great show. You be with us, and we'll be with you. See you next week. The 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota at the Tennessee River is sponsored by Minn Kota. Call Lisa. Uh, we're back. I don't know. I don't know if he's there or not. Skeeter I didn't go take off. You may do the intro. Progressive insurance. And by Rapala. Okay. Welcome back to Live Mix. We're here with Joyce Fuentes and Hunter Shryrock. We're, you know, it just hit us that, that uh, you know, everybody in the elite series and and even to the open some extent they're fighting to get to the classic mm -hmm. and you and you go and you do that all year and and the first guy out on the elite series was oh gosh i had to bring it up 
<laughs> just a, just a point by a point or two. That's what's crazy about how it's three points difficult exact, is. Uh, mm, that's it terrible. is. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. and you know what it's like. Well, to be on both sides of that, it's really not only that, like just to get here, but just every event in general is always so tooth and nail. Like it's right down to the wire right. every time. You can look back and say, if I didn't catch this fish, I wouldn't have been here. Or if I had caught that fish, I would have done this. Right. Like, that's how good our group is that you can't, every opportunity you get, everybody else is getting that opportunity too. So if you don't capitalize on each opportunity, you just keep slipping down the leaderboard. So every time, every time. You and, here, and here's a guy that he just doesn't care about any of it. <laughs> No. I mean, really, it's here, and it works out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, look how I many, I mean, you know, he's got six six rods on his deck and one in his hand. That's the, small, that's the smallest number of rods we've seen all day. That's a lot for him. And it's a lot, because normally it's just two. It's like, yeah, two or three. But bass fishing is so challenging, and it's hard, and it can, there has a, there's a lot of downtime to it. So John has the perfect attitude. Right. He smiles, doesn't matter. Everything's going to be okay, and that's a that's a really great you know positive attitude to have because fishing is man you're going to lose them you know you're, it's just the way it goes and you're not going to catch them for maybe a couple of hours you a know? lot of like, time between bites he just giggle, right. he giggles his way through yeah <laughs> you know which is great I love John good dude no I think everybody loves John it's hard not to love John for yeah. sure you know and and uh, I just hope that uh, I just hope that people realize that. Well, I, I shouldn't point it out, but he's only got seven rods on his deck. And, and he's yeah. only got one electronic on his deck. And that's the other, yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> you know, we're talking about forward-facing sonar and everything else, and then, you know, there's guys like John that he's one of the best professional bass fishermen around, and he doesn't utilize it. Keep he, it simple, yeah. Yes, stupid. Yeah. He uses his eyes, his instinct, and he goes bass fishing. Yeah. One of the things I read about him, he, he loves to fish in places that he feels like he's in a pond. Mm -hmm. Like a small lake, yeah. small pond, because that's what he grew up doing. Yeah. He feels most comfortable when he's in, you know, a place that he can look around and go, okay, they can only be here, here, and here. Um, just keeps it simple. Goes bass fishing. Well, yeah, just, I mean, you know, can you imagine John? Well, I'll take that back. I would say, can you imagine John 30 years ago before all this other stuff? But I was around 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And this is the way it was. I mean, that's that's the old George Cochran, uh, Larry Nixon, Denny Breyer, uh, you know, Don Butler, those guys. This is how they had to go. I mean, you know, we had flashers and we had a half a dozen rods. Yep. Yeah. You know, and and different it, times. It's exactly. Still, it still works. It oh, still yeah. works. It, it'll, John it'll, just shows us that it still it, works. It'll always work. Yep. You know. And what I think is cool now with our, you know, fishing in the Elite Series, we have so many young guys, but we also got veterans. It's such a good mix of uh, different no talents. Generations. You, it, and, like, just watching some of the other, like, YouTube videos of guys' tournament recaps and stuff, some guys hate sight fishing, love fishing offshore. And I'm the opposite. Like, if I have a bass on a bed, I'm sucked in for the whole week. I'm going sight fishing all week. Like, dumb as a box of rocks. But but it just goes to show how many different, you know, we got guys offshore, we got guys on the bank, guys in between. And so just when you think, oh, everybody's going to be doing this, no. There's a hundred different ways to catch a bass, right. you know, at each each place we go to. And there always has been, but I will tell you this, what what your, your generation, y'all's generation, has done that that we didn't see it so much. I could look at the schedule back in the day and say Denny Breyer's going to do well here. Tommy Biffle's going to do well here. Look at this other leg. Larry Nixon's going to do this. Guido's going to be here. Shaw's going to do. Everybody was a specialist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't get the specialist anymore, except for like a Gussie and a Joey on the forward facing stuff. But it, outside of that. <laughs> you're pretty you're pretty special when i started fishing you're special <laughs> when i started fishing bass tournaments there were people that told me joey you got to be good at one thing like you got to get good at fishing whatever right because that's the way it was right. that i was didn't the way feel it worked. like that though i, I wanted to war learn everything yep. i don't know do you feel the same way like you have do, to. You, or do you feel like you're great at one thing i mean i, I definitely I feel like versatile. i feel like i'm better at you know certain things than others yeah i feel like just because of a confidence standpoint right because 
I'm one of those guys that I felt like I need to learn everything too. But at the same time, I get confused. When you put me out on a body of water, now all of a sudden you got this that worked, this that worked, this that worked. And now I'm like, why all this going on? I oh, I see. Go, I need yeah. to go just go do this. A little Sensory too much overload. info. Too, I see that. too much going on, like yeah. dumb it down a little bit. Yeah. But guys that are good at That's harnessing good that and going, nope, this is what I'm going to do this week. You know, Gussie's one of those guys. Gussie can do a lot of different things. Right. Always has. Always catches them. Um, so, yeah, that's just Well, and the prime example me, of that was Aaron Martin. Mm -hmm. Aaron, Aaron, you know, kind of made a lot of hay on a spinning rod and a drop shot. But And I would be in the boat great. with him, and he'd be like, I hate this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be up flipping. Yeah. I want to be up throwing a spinner bait. Yeah. But I. This is how, I mean, you know, it's the tool that's going to win the game. It's kind of like, you know, the guy that, uh, a receiver on a, on a, on a team that we got to win this game by running the ball, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how, uh, Aaron, Aaron understood that. Right. And, you know, so, but the specialists have, have really gone away outside of the forward facing stuff, uh, that kind of thing. Everybody can throw a drop shot. Everybody can flip a jig. Everybody can crank, you know. Yeah. Everybody can do this or that. I mean, I can remember classics that were won on a specific bait, or not won, made on a specific bait. Now, the prime example of that is an, uh, an angler out of Florida made the classic that year because he did nothing but fish a sluggo, and it was the first year of the sluggo. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> and he I've made the some class. on a sluggo before yeah. <laughs> when I first started fishing. Right. <laughs> the sluggo and the scissor tail shad and all that stuff, you know, the the uh, fluke took all that out of out of out of the deal. Yep. But that was a big deal. And a big enough deal to where you could catch big enough fish for you to make the classic in six, seven minutes. Yeah. And never make the, never even threaten ever again in your life. Mm. A little like, isolated dock right there. Pitch a jig under it. Skip it under there. Be a good one in there. Looks good to me. I like that. <laughs> Black floats this time of the year. Oh, big yeah. deal. Yeah, tell them why they're a big deal. Holding heat. That's right. Holding heat. That's right. Look for the black ones. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like there's a boat ramp there, right? I didn't see it. Maybe. So one of the one of the topics of the day is, is looking at the watercolor for Joey. Jo Joey, that's that's uh, that's uh, that's dirt, dingy water at Greer's. But yeah, but I mean, really and truly on the Tennessee River, that's pretty daggum green. Mm -hmm. That's pretty oh. clear. Oh, it's pretty clear. Yeah, it's okay. really, really clear. And we've not seen this kind of clear in in past events. Yeah, we had a lot of a lot of dirty not dirty but fishy water when we were here the last time so to see you know being that low water that it didn't be in that clear that it's tougher to trick those fish into biting right you know you see a lot of jerk baits right. and stuff like that a little more translucent colors with crank baits and such well hmm. i mean you know everybody yesterday morning or not yesterday morning but tuesday morning practice it was raining they're like, bring it on. We need three inches of rain to <laughs> dirty this water up. You know, get us some color. Did it change it? No. 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 It's probably because they had so much rain before that it just, just. Well, I mean, it just didn't rain. It rained, but it didn't pour. Oh, just you know slow. What I'm yeah, it wasn't like it a was flood. Just a, it yeah. was just a miserable, danky day, not a pour down and, and wipe them out, frog strangling kind of deal, which is what they wanted. Right. Very familiar with where Gerald's fishing at here. Really? Yep. All right, give us some Pretty insight sure. on what do you Pretty see here? Sure. What's he fishing? Come on. Let's hear it. The area, I think, I believe, that's the same area that I'd fish. I think off to his left, that's there's a bridge. We're and going off naturally, they cut him away. Yep, that's where he's at. Oh, there you go. Yep. Oh, you were right. There yep, is the so bridge. That, so that whole area there, a lot of all those little secondary points and stuff, main points but i call them secondary yeah um caught a lot of fish on a jerk bait there in our last event and i spent all my time in this backwater here on the final day 
trying to get a bite, trying to get a bigger bite. Um, I just felt like if I was going to move up. So uh, he's in a good area. There's a lot of uh, there's old tournaments out of that boat ramp there. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. Retreads. <laughs> some fish jumped, dumped out right there. Yep. Uh, you know, when it's tough fishing, you look for little things like that to get a bite. Yeah. So who said you thought thought you saw the boat ramp? Because the boat ramp was there. Yeah, there's yes. a little boat ramp. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Looked like a big one. Yeah, pretty yes. good size one, actually. Yeah, yeah it looked good. So That's here's everybody's, set, you know, favorite as well. I mean, and you know, we've been on a trend of back-to-back -back classic winners, you know. Uh, so now we got Christy, and what is he? Where is he on the tote board? Because I'm gonna tell you, his weight's gonna be light on Bass Track too. He's got five for seven pounds and 14 ounces. So he's got about 11 pounds. <laughs> maybe, maybe 14. <laughs> yep, yep. Maybe 14. I'm not gonna maybe say it's double that, that high. high. I'm not going to say it's that high, but I'm going to say 13. 13. 13. You think? Yeah, yeah. 11. I'd say he's got 11 right now. Yeah, 13. I, I would say 10. <laughs> I would say 10, but I'm not, I'm, you know, you guys are. But, I mean, even then, I mean, it's the things are, if things go the way they say they're going, then it's still playing into his hands. Because sure. there's going to be an explosion of fireworks on the bank, and he's going to be there. But it could just be. It's those two bites, you know, yeah, one three bite, and a, three and a point. half and a four and a half and boom, you know, you save your day. That is the frustrating, not frustrating. It's the stressful part about fishing this time of the year is, you know, you know that it's you got to count on getting one of the one of the two of those bites in the afternoon. What do you think Jason is stressed out right there? Um, I wouldn't say he's stressed. That's just Jason's being Jason. He's going to he. He's done this a million times. Yeah, he ain't stressed <laughs> out. He's, he's so <laughs> good. At, I mean, no. just winning tournaments, this isn't nothing new to him. And now right. that he's already won a classic, um, all that weight's off your shoulders. Like, even if he never does win another one, he, he knows how to fish to win tournaments. And we've seen him come so close in other classics. But you can't knock the guy. I mean, he's stuck to his guns and did what, you know, he won all those other tournaments up to that point. So, yeah. yeah, he's always a threat. You never count him out. Always a threat. And he's doing, he is throwing a spinnerbait, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Looks at, I mean, Look I look at the wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some good looking trees coming up. Mm -hmm. He's probably going to catch one. Oh, my. Yeah. His, now, he, he may be salivating, mm -hmm. not stressing. So. Yeah. But you yeah, go, he's not stressing. He goes down that bank right there and, like, doesn't have a bite. Ooh. Why they haven't got up there? See, it's just not oh. that good yet. Yeah, but it's it'll get better. And you only you know they run across as one or two, boom, it looks good. But it makes you think that all these fish are moving up. And like I said, we tend to get ahead of the fish sometimes, and that's the tricky part. If the water was up higher, it would make a considerable so. difference on those uh, those fish being there. Oh, yeah. Just a few inches. Just a few inches it's on just some of that It's crazy stuff, that, you know? the, that it, they have it down still this far on this body of water. Other places, like I live on Chickamauga, they'll raise and lower it a couple feet in a week this time of the year. But here, it's just surprising that they have it still this low. And it makes this place fish a lot smaller because of the stuff that's available. I heard them talking about that earlier on. Yep. Uh, live, you know, at how much smaller everything is because some of those those bars and stuff like that, stuff that held fish are out of the water. Yep. Hmm. That's all I got to say about that. Yep. He's like, <laughs> why didn't I get a bite in a tree? I know. It. That's I'm what sitting there saying. watching him. I'm like, you know, you know, you just feel like it's going to happen. He's I looking mean, back know. at it now. He's like, oh, man, why didn't I get by that <laughs> But tree? look at that big, dark stump right in the middle of that. Yeah. You know? uh, and that you, you're talking about the dark float. Those are the dark things that I, you know, the, oh. there, you know, that dark right there. That's the biggest, darkest piece of wood in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it, see, it runs out. Yeah. So I'm telling you, he's catching one right here. 100%. Boy, you would think so. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm often 100% wrong. You're talking about that <laughs> guessing and hoping. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm the biggest guesser and I hope her. Guessing's okay. Hoping's the bad part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're hoping for fish to do something, that's, they're, they're setting you up for, for failure. Those conditions, though, are just ideal for what he's doing. Right. Like 100%. Just and beautiful. Especially with the water being a little clear. Catch one off that tree right there. It's kind of got, I kind of feel like if we were uh, at Greer's Ferry in these <laughs> deal right here, we'd be, we'd be whacking on. Oh, no, no, no. No, if we were on Greer's Ferry, we wouldn't, we would be fishing all this stuff and wouldn't be getting any bites. It's the Dead Sea. Come on. <laughs> No, it's not that bad. We would be catching fish. They all be 12 inches. But uh, this kind of reminds we'd me of Dardanelle flipping, water be, right here. We'd be flipping bushes because, of, at, well, not at this level. We'd be looking at those bushes saying, man, I wish the water was in those bushes. Yeah. Which is what he's saying about that uh, lay down out there on the point there to your right. And, you know. Well, they could just be on straight rock, chunk rock on that spinnerbait too. Oh, yeah. So, so how do you decide? One how, do you, how do you narrow that down? Both of y'all, tell tell everybody. We got a got a deal here, and you're. I mean, we're seeing him throw it at a lot of different things. So, uh, good thing is, is you can use a spinner bait and cover a lot of water. But yeah. how do you, you know, tell us a little bit about some of the maybe your tricks on, on narrowing that down. Where you're going to put that thing? Because he didn't even go to the back. What? He didn't go to the back of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you just got to practice. And that's what he's doing? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I it, mean, this, yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, obviously he, um, he, during practice, he probably spent a lot of time in the back of those pockets and he just didn't feel like it was happening. So he's just hitting the very tips, the, the, the points, you know, the first hundred feet or whatever off the, off the point, 300 feet, and then going to the other side. So, um, not to say he's not going to go in the back of a pocket eventually, because if he doesn't get a bite doing this for a while, he'll start going in the back of a few pockets. But, but yeah, you just you just have to pay attention to where you get your bites. I mean, it's pretty simple, and then you just look and look for things that are similar. I mean, mm -hmm. no, 100 percent. There's there's a reason why he didn't go back there fishing that first third, first half. Big deal this time of the year. You know that those fish are staging up, and really, you know. At a place like this, you got to fish everything. Uh, you'll get in little areas that there's fish, but you might catch one off a rock transition, one off a laydown, one off a stump. You can't really just go, you know, the style that he's fishing, he can cover so much water. Um, it's it's hard to nail down a pattern. Yeah, you know? it, yeah. It, it'd be silly to skip up that cast. Um, but he's there's something that he's doing there that, that, uh, that has him eliminating part of that oh because yeah. you just said you know you got to hit that stuff and i saw him before i've covered him a lot and there, there's things that he does that i that uh, at, at hartwell when he lost the buy and i'm like wow aren't you doing of course i you know it's easy for me to second guess i mean but you know i want to know what his mental process and, and physical process is there and and why didn't he hit go? Oh, there you go because he's gonna catch one out there yeah, that's why Big he's probably mouth. not running the. Uh, is that a smallmouth? No, mouth? no. Oh, no. it's a large. Oh, he's throwing a bladed jig. Oh, he is. Imagine that. That's Something good. else he's good at. That? Now, okay. That one now, is let's see what he calls here. Because this is the best chunk deal. I mean, that fish right there is easily two and a half pounds. Yeah, it's a fatty. Two, so, 260, 270, maybe not, two and a half. I'm telling you, it's two and a half or better. Mm -hmm. Let's see what I a small agree. one is. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't get even a think twice about it. He, he get, knew which one it was. He didn't even get a chance to look. And he didn't open it up in the big That side. one he threw back was like high high pounder. Two. You know? So, yeah, it's he almost said two. two pounder. I, I saw yeah. enough, too. And he put that down as two. So, you, you can go ahead and add two and a half, three pounds to, to what he's got. Just 100%. So. Did yeah. you see how he was fluttering that thing? Yeah. He'd throw in that little half twitch in there. Oh, yeah. Th those little stops and pauses he knows and decisions to where to do that are the key.
to learn so much for for guys like me watching Jason Christie. Mm -hmm. so it's what he's not doing and then the little extra things that he is doing that that he'll never tell you. <laughs> and I'm keep at, I keep asking guys, hey, tell me what so maybe he's told you. You know, but evidently he's not. Oh no. He he thinks different. He's a like lot of Hagney in just a different way. Well a lot of times we do things just naturally. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We just kind of feel like and we, it's hard to explain. Yeah. You know, no, you just kind of do it in certain deal. situations. It's natural. It's I don't know. Instinct yeah, instinctive. Sure. So, we right. don't want to give you all the secrets anyway. So, Dude, I wouldn't. I can't keep a secret, so don't give me any. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make secrets work. I'm going to grab this uh, deal here. So we, we still have Gussie. He's up there in the top. Brian Schmidt. Oh, there you go. Is in second. See, and we've not even had. Of course, we don't have a have a ca camera on it. Scott Canterbury's in third. Uh, Brandon Lester's up there in fourth. Jade Chikarit, he's in fifth. Uh, Chad, I can't help me read. Where's that. your glasses at? Your My, readers. I, I, I'd have to take. I'd have to take your cowboy off. Where are we at? See them, Chad, right here. That's Brandon Card. Brandon Card. <laughs> I said Chad. It's, Come on, Paul. Paul. <laughs> Quit it. And then you got Hagney. We know Agnes fudging, uh, but we got two more hours, two and a half more hours for most of these guys. Yeah. Fish. Some of them's got three hours. Wow. And There'll be some good fish caught this afternoon. It will be. I think so. Unfortunately, we're not going to be sitting here watching them. We're going to go have to work this show, and I hope that you'll join us tomorrow for live mix, and, and we'll have Joey and, and Hunter back on uh, one of the hours tomorrow. We will uh, have a lot of the guys that we've had. We're going to include some Bill Dance in here tomorrow. Ooh, oh, that's cool. Can I come Rick on with Clown? Bill? I want to be on uh, with Bill. You don't have to fight Iconelli for that. He's a wiry. Fight. I don't want to fight Iconelli. Okay. He seems scrappy. <laughs> He's a little bit too scrappy. Join us tomorrow on Bass Live. Or, excuse me, Live Mix. I'm obviously very tired. Yeah. Thank you. Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota is sponsored by Humminbird. Yeah, it's Bassmaster Live, very special edition of Bassmaster My Alive, of course, because it is the three most important days in the world of bass fishing. The 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. That is Fort Loudon Reservoir, the upper end of the Tennessee River. Jeff Gustafson is our leader, 17 pounds and four ounces, a healthy, beyond healthy lead. For, uh, for today's uh, uh, circumstances here, Brian Schmidt is in second place, five pounds back. Scott Canterbury has moved up the leaderboard, as has Brandon Lester, the Tennessee native. Jay Shakurik, Brandon Card, Greg Hackney hanging in there in the top ten. Lee Livesey, John Cox, and Jason Christie. We welcome you to Bassmaster Live. We welcome you to our headquarters here. Uh, this is the uh, Bassmaster Classic Outdoors Expo uh, presented by U.S. Army, and we are so happy to have you. They just opened the doors to the public, and on a work day, you can't even move in this place. It's just unbelievable, Davey Hyde. Yeah, it's really incredible, and, and we we sort of expect this, I, th I guess, for the Bassmaster Classic, but there's always a part of me that's like, are they going to show up this year? And it gets better and better every <laughs> single year. We heard some people saying there was a line all the way around the building waiting to get in here at 12 o'clock on a Friday. Unbelievable. Well, we need to introduce our guest in between us here, Dakota Meyer. It's always kind of a tradition yeah. to have Dakota with us. Uh, Dakota's a great American hero, the youngest recipient of the Congressional Medal of, of the Medal of Honor. And uh, Dakota, it's just a pleasure to have you again. Glad you could make some time for us kind of explain to everyone why you're here every year because yeah, no, we, we no, love it no thank you so much it's always yeah. awesome to be here this is the fourth year in a row uh you know so being able to come out here and spend some time with all these great people uh you know but i'm out here with toyota and the u.s chamber of commerce and just spreading the word about you know how great how great our service members are so that that is awesome and you know you and i i, I get to talk to you every year we come you know i was in the military for a little while myself and my son's in the military now so i certainly just yeah. feel like we have this bond uh, you know brotherhood together but tell us i know you're real interested 
interested in, in getting veterans back to work, working out in the civilian world, the community. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, like I, I teamed up with Toyota over 10 years ago, uh, you know, uh, on this transitioning issue. You know, we, we, we teamed up together and we said, hey, we're going to go and help, uh, you know, veterans transition out and make it achievable for them, right? And, uh, you know, we built the ResumeEngine.org, HiringOurHeroes.org, right? And, uh, you know, just been ever since just trying to find, you know, better ways to help service members transition out and, uh, you know, put them back in communities and help them, uh, you know, go and take those same, the same patriotism and the same, you know, the same skills that they've, uh, you know, uh, took and, and defended our country with and take them and, and infuse those back into the communities that they are part of and came from. And we were talking just a few minutes ago. It's, it's really not rocket science. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I was, I was scared to death to leave my job of full-time Army Guard to to pursue my dream to fish for a living. I, and, and I think so many times, whether you're in the military or, you know, change is every, we're all somewhat nervous about change. And I think that's what more of an issue than it really being a big issue like sometimes maybe we think it is. Well, yeah, and that's what, that's what Toyota's done so good with, you know, the HiringHeroes.org is, is helping remind these service members of the skill sets that they have and, and how to take those back and put those back in the communities that they fought for, right, which is, you know, so much more important. You know, I, I look at it as, you know, we remember the World War II generation as the greatest generation. Right. And, uh, you know, we're at a very unique opportunity right now that, uh, you know, I don't think that it's just because of the battles that they won. But I think it's because of what they did to come back to their community and pull this country and to go back and be the leaders amongst, you know, uh, in this country. Right. And, and, and show people that, that hope and being good is 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 still worth it. Right. And, uh, you know, I think that that's the same thing that this 9-11 generation is, is we're still the jury's out. And, I, you know, I think that we're just out there pushing, trying to push the needle a little bit further to, to empower these great you know, men and women and their families with their, you know, their spouses who, you know, serving our country is a family business, as you know very yes. well. And, uh, you know, being able to empower and give them the, the, the skills and the, the tools and, and the roadmap on how to go out and be successful. Well, a lot of successful people that have served their country. And like I said, Absolutely. we certainly hope to have more great leaders. I mean, if, if there is one thing, I think everyone that's ever served in the armed forces of any branch, you learn some leadership roles, some Absolutely. do's and some don'ts. And I, I think you're exactly right. We need that more in, in our country, in our communities right now than ever. Absolutely. Dakota, when a, a transitioning veteran, say from the Vietnam era or, or from uh, deployments in the Middle East, do the, the issues they face change as we go through the years or are they basically the same core things, the, the things, that, the hurdles that people face trying to successfully navigate that? You know, it's, it's all, I mean, look, it's, 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 all, it's all back to the basics. It's all the basics of it again, right? We all have the fear of the unknown. We're always transitioning, you know, yeah. you know no matter how you look at it. And, and look, you know, you, you just take this group of people who have, have, you know, already shown that they have the skills and that they have the, the, you know, the, the foundational pieces, the principles that every company out there is looking for, every organization is looking for, right? And so we're just taking those and, and, and putting them in a different package and helping show them how to go use them. All right. Well, I, you know, I, I wonder what the average citizen who's not aware of all these things, but would, would, would if he were or yeah. she were, would step up and try to do something. What? Who can they get in touch with? How, yeah, can, how can they be a part of the yeah, solution? Hiring, go, you know, go check us out at HiringHeroes.org. Uh, ResumeEngine.org is, you know, a lot of service members don't know how their skills. I was a sniper when I got out. There weren't too many job openings for snipers. <laughs> yeah. But if you took the, the if you took the, the, the qualities and the skills that it took to be a successful sniper, you could apply those to anything, right? And so, you know, ResumeEngine.org, HiringHeroes.org, um, career spark.org is for the uh the spouse side right you know i mean and that's the one thing i mean you look at these spouses who have who have stood next to and helped uh, you know contribute to you know the the service members lives and, and all that aspect of it i mean it's just a, the huge assets that are, are, are untapped it's always struck me that, that if all of us could, could stand to learn from the, the personal responsibility that the veterans have inculcated into into their thinking and so forth. I don't know who the, the military official who, who made a, a statement to a commencement yeah. audience a few years ago. He said, you kids, if you'll just do one thing, mm -hmm. if you'll just make your bed yeah. when you get up in the morning. <laughs> People thought, well, Gen that's corny, but then and you think about it. No, that's not corny a at all. A Admiral McRaven. McRaven. Yeah, Admiral McRaven. McRaven. Such a great guy. Well, great friend. Meaningful. Meaningful, Meaningful right? Stuff, and, and, yeah. and that's, you know, I think the most impactful thing that we could all be is, is an example. Yeah. Right? An example of what good is and what hope is exactly. and what right is, right? And that's that's what, you know, these service members have done is they, they took that example of the American spirit, they put on the nation's cloth, and they've gone and represented those ideas and beliefs across the world. 
against the most fierce enemies there are. And so, you know, putting them in, as part of a company and putting them inside of, of, you know, corporations and getting them back in our communities is what we need right now to be able to go and put that same passion and lead, you know, the country to where it needs to be. Saying thank you for your service is a nice thing to do. It's a very nice thing to do. It's but my there honor more, to do it. Yes, there's more that we, that we can do, that, that all of us can do, right? Absolutely. We can all do it, right? We yeah. can all do it. We can all go back and, and, and you know, and, and, and lift a hand out, right? Instead of, yeah. instead of, instead of you know, trying to figure out why or this, we, you know, just go, go and, and, and help your neighbor, right? And that, that's the most important aspect that we can do. Go and, and, and be the example. Wake up every day and, and show people that being good and doing the right thing is still worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. Boy, do we need a little more of that, a lot more of that this day and time in our in our country, in our world. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely incredible. Appreciate you, you being here. And I hope you keep coming back every single year. And Toy, I, I got to mention this. I see you had a Toyota hat on, and you mentioned they have helped you uh, in your endeavors. But but it means so much for them to be involved in fishing, but then also, you know, our country, the military, and, and helping you, yeah. you know, help others uh, that, that – that really and truly, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head that, that we just need more of in, in this country right now. The leaders and the leadership that we have there uh, is yeah, you know, like no other. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's what Toyota's done. You know, I've been with Toyota. It's the longest relationship I've ever had. Uh, you know, I've, I've been with them, uh, you know, and, and they, they've been the ones that said, hey, let's do this, right? Like, you know, they, they believe in good and they believe in people and they believe in, in, in you know, our, our service members, uh, you know, and they've been there supporting it since day one and, and you know, they're, they're continuing to do it. Yeah, great company. Great Obviously. company. Great company. How many how many days a year do you spend doing this good work that you're doing, Dakota? Quite a few. I don't know. I, I try to, every, every time I get a, a two seconds of somebody's ear i feel like i'm trying to trying to you know remind them of of that that aspect and trying to push it you don't have a motivation problem no i don't <laughs> okay. no i don't <laughs> that yeah. is good to know where are you off to next what are what are similar events that you yeah, you so get to go see so i'm headed back to austin texas uh, you know, that's where I'm from. Uh, you know, next week I'll be out, you know, p doing the same thing, trying to build community, you know, going around doing workouts and, and trying to just remind people that, hey, we do live in a great country, that hope is still here, right? That, that, that you know, we, we look around. All you got to do is look around. I mean, look, look in here. Look yeah. at all these great Americans walking through here and enjoying the, the, the you know, the Bassmaster Classic, the sport, right? I mean, how awesome is this? Yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's just, a, <laughs> it's, 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 it's our people. Right, yeah. it's our people. That's, that's the way to think yeah. of it. You know, it's terrific stuff. Dakota, Thank you so much Thank for always me. making time for us every time you come by the Classic, and we hope you're here for many a Classic Thank to you. come. I hope to be back. All right. Yes, good sir. job. Good yeah. you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Well, let's take another look at our leaderboard. We started out with that, see if there's been any changes since we opened up our segment here. And there we see Jeff Gustafson. But some, the rest of these guys got to get on the stick, Davey. They do, but I think we've got one or two that maybe the Bass Track hasn't updated. I yeah, think it I might be a right couple there. anglers a little closer to Gussie, but he is the man in the driver's seat today, no doubt about it. Brian Schmidt right after that. Scott Canterbury, Brandon Lester. We're uh, getting into the short end of time on the first of three days of fishing here. Brandon Card, Greg Hackney, and Lee Livesey. John Cox has joined the top ten as well. The 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota at the Tennessee River is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Well, we got a couple of hours left for our anglers, our 55 who are out here fighting hard today. They fought hard to get here, the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic in Knoxville, and they are fighting hard through today, and they'll have tomorrow as well. Full field tomorrow, all day long to try to make it to the top 25. Jeff Gustafson of Ontario, Canada, put on a show this morning. Vertical, smallmouth fishing, Teleco Lake, Brian Schmidt at right there in second place. Scott Canterbury and Brandon Lester right now. Let's take you right into our Ooh. Toyota Midday Report. Why don't we do that, Tommy yes, Sanders? Yes. And I'm not going to lie, oh, Yamaha, Davey. I, I, I really hate to sound selfish. Looking at this Yamaha Midday Report, I thought you and Dakota were going to take that together. I was behind the stage. I'm like, go ahead, guys. Absolutely take it. Been a slow, painful grind for the angler from Alabama. Gerald Swindle kind of... A lot of us pundit goons up here thought this could set up in his wheelhouse. So far today, really not the case. You see how clear that water is in a lot of these creeks. Gerald Swindle right now sitting with three bass, unofficially four 
and a half pounds. For some reason, every time Ronnie goes practicing with someone, we get all excited <laughs> about how many they're catching. Ooh, they're going to catch like <laughs> 62 pounds. <laughs> no, I think Gerald did have a better practice day on Wednesday than he's having here today. Yes. From there, we're going to actually head back up for Loudon. Not very far from Gerald Swindle today. Greg Hackney fishing below this little spillway where he said he had a big, big practice, really just in this general region. A lot of our locals know that exact spot. Hackney right now sitting with four bass, sitting with nine pounds. And here's the interesting thing. Caught two smallmouth under that spillway over 18 inches, but lost two key, key bites early this morning. Gerald Swindle, or sorry, Greg Hackney, still in the mix, though, sitting with just under 10 pounds. Please tell us a little bit about him calling you this morning. And say it. I want to start <laughs> it on was the a listen, one. man. It was the most bizarre thing that I've had happen in a classic because Hackney doesn't talk to any of us throughout a Bassmaster no. Classic. That was not the case. Making a phone call this morning saying, oh, I'm starting on the big ones. And, well, he did that, and he caught us a couple good ones. Going to slink on down Fort Loudon right now. Taku Ito, one of the anglers that we really had our eye on Front-facing sonar, pretty much all he does, his wheelhouse. Not the case. You got to practice with him on Wednesday. I did here looking at the Yamaha Midday Report. I'm not surprised that Taku's struggling a little bit. He tried multiple days in practice to tr try to go figure out the smallmouth bass, and that's why you really have to appreciate what Gussie and a few of those guys are doing catching up because Taku Ito is one of the best at using his forward-facing. He has four of them on his boat, four. but he was not able to to figure these smallmouth out That's a here. cheap proposition, having four, four lives on your boat. Four. <laughs> Taku Ito fishing his third Bassmaster Classic here. John Cox fishing his fourth Bassmaster Classic. Taku Ito in, currently in uh, 14th place, and John Cox currently in 12th place. Both of them have three keepers in the boat. Yes, actually, John Cox did upgrade with one more, Tommy. Okay. He has four in the boat right All now, right. sitting with nine pounds and he said i have got to find colored water the last time we were here on fort loudon and teleco we saw a lot of dirty water but really without a downpour and i throw it to you davy look at what john cox did this morning is there a shot with a downpour that we can get an influx yeah, of color? Yeah, I, I really think, and we always try to be optimistic. We want these guys to be catching more and more fish. Uh, if we get the rains they're calling for, the intense rains, but brief tomorrow morning, they can certainly change things up. And that's what John Cox says he wants to happen. He wants more dirty water. So he may very well get his wish. Again, John Cox, is, as, as Zona just mentioned here, is upgraded into 10th place right now with four fish. And now Seth Fighter got us started off with the first good one we saw today. Yeah, actually, Seth Fighter catching the first one that we saw on camera of this Bassmaster Live. And Seth Fighter having a miserable practice last weekend, figuring a little something out on Wednesday, doing a lot of shallow cranking, throwing a little bit of a spinner bait here and there. Seth Fighter, though, sitting with three bass just under seven pounds. Going to need to make some late day moves from the Minnesota Angler. Seth Fighter, our 2021 Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Seth Fighter, someone certainly not going to give up. You don't count him out with just three fish. Still got a couple hours to fish and uh, bring hopefully two more to the scales. Brandon Card, who grew up in this area and moved away, moved back, but a lot of experience here, a lot of experience on Fort Loudon. And really, if you look at what Brandon Card has done on Fort Loudon, eerily similar to what he did when Gussie won here a couple years ago, kind of fishing in the Little River region of Fort Loudon. But man, that water very clear. But if you look at what he's done today, really has fished a lot more isolated cover in that four to eight foot range. Maybe that's some other anglers have overlooked, but definitely with a solid limit right now sitting just under 11 pounds for Brandon Card. Brandon Card's incredible stories and really horrible health problems to start his year, but what a comeback he has made. Here is the man trying to come back and win two classics in a row, Jason Christie. Yeah, it's really surprising to me. He, he's another angler who said he had a very difficult practice, but you just got to think that Jason Christie's going to figure those shallow largemouth out with a spinner bait, a jig, like we saw him do last year at Hartwell, but it is just not happened for it. Yeah, and Jason Christie, one of the anglers that said, man, if I can get wind, I've got a spinner bait bite going and I've caught some really big ones. And Christie, one of those anglers that said, I have to kind of listen to practice wherever at least I got a bite in those frigid temps last weekend, have to reload with some big ones. We definitely have not 
seen the caliber that he caught in practice last weekend. Brandon Lester, a Tennessee guy, Western Tennessee guy, but claims a, more of a, oh, Tim's Ford Lake area type of uh, allegiance, but he knows how to fish around here. He knows the Tennessee River. That's the main thing about Brandon Lester. And, and looking at this, this midday report, it is amazing how different these anglers are fishing. Really good, knowledgeable anglers of the Tennessee River here. Brandon Lester, Brandon Card, our, our reigning champion, Jason Christie. You just keep thinking, man, they're all doing different things, and one of them has got to really start working this afternoon. It, it just really has been slow going. A lipless crankbait you hear, see here with Brandon Lester. Brandon Carr throwing a shaky head. Uh, a lot of finesse-type baits in that clear water. You see Jason Chrissy with a spinnerbait, and it has just not happened for those green fish so far today. Ontario's Jeff Gustafson has won one tournament on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Guess where it was? Right here. Yes. Pretty much right there where we see him. And it was really a slow first 90 minutes for Gussie this morning. Lost one big fish that we put at. We put it at about four to four and a quarter pound, and if he would have caught that bass, talking to his cameraman, Brian Evey, his smallest right now, two and a half pounds, and we have him unofficially right now with 17.4, and as his cameraman said, I believe it's a little bit more, and here's the interesting thing. A lot of anglers thought that that area in between Loudon and Teleco would get absolutely cannibalized today, and really the winner of that tournament in that region so far definitely Jeff Gustafson and the one thing where we saw him do his damage he fished it for about 30 minutes pulled the trolling motor gone yeah we're certainly glad to see him do that so should be some more exciting things for him might have to wait until tomorrow morning though. Yamaha midday report Yamaha Tommy. midday report thank you very much feeling it bud that's our playing field. Those are the 10 anglers we have on camera all day today, spread out through Tel Teleco and Fort Loudon. Both of those fisheries, about 15,000 acres, 30 total. Let's get out to a man who has made a pretty good move in the last 90 minutes or so, and that is Brandon Lester, Fayetteville, Tennessee. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I think it'll definitely call one. Yeah, it's a 14 and a half inch. Maybe I heard the other comment that you made that, that you were hoping that our bass track was a little bit off today with some of our largemouth anglers to tighten this race up a little bit going into Saturday, boy. Yes. Yeah, no. Yes. <laughs> I think it is, don't you? I do. I absolutely do. That's what keeps it interesting. You know, if you can keep some of those largemouth fishermen in that 15-pound bracket today. Gerald Swindle like Gerald? I don't know. He's close, man. He's close. He don't weigh much, but he's he's going to get measured. I can tell you that. Boy, that wind is blowing. It is warming. The lake level is rising. He is long. All the things you need. Fourteen, fourteen and a quarter. We got four. We got three and three and three quarter. You know, we got one that we almost there, but ain't there. It's all about the attitude, baby. One of these can two, be two four pounders back to back and right back in this thing. All right, another one in the box for Gerald Swindle. Let's take it out to Robbie Floyd. Robbie, we understand, is with JT Tompkins. Too, like, I wasn't wondering if he got it. There's Robbie. And again, dude. Fish in the boat, and then what happened? Yeah, I was driving in a lake, and an unfortunate event happened. I, spun, I 
you know, threw an ear on my prop and um, whenever I went to go to the bank to pop it loose it ended up being a lot tighter than I was expecting and um, I don't have a breaker bar in the boat to get it loose so I'm having some mercuries and awesome you know uniform out here out here so they're coming over to me help me get break this prop loose and hopefully get me back out in the water give you a little time hopefully get your limit now tell me about your fishing day I know you're not out here fishing you're waiting out here in the middle but how's your fishing day going yeah I mean this morning I, I, I caught a fish in the first like probably five minutes of my day and um, then I went around caught another one close you know two two and a half and then caught a Caught a couple 17, 17 and a half inch smallmouth, and I had to throw them suckers back. And that's the unfortunate thing when you're going for smallmouth. But I've had a lot of short strikes, you know, had a lot of fish like bite my chatterbait, and you'd, you'd come off, and then I flip my jig in there to just dunk it. So they're definitely in a funk for me. But um, we're definitely, as soon as we get this done, I'm going to go back there swinging. I'm not giving up anytime soon. So in, any second now, uh, the Mercury Tech will be out here to hopefully change that propping and get out uh, and get another couple of hours fishing here in his first day of the Bassmaster Class. But Robbie just getting it Thank done you so just much. Killing yeah. it all. Day oh, long. Absolutely, always as does. always, J.T. Tompkins fishing his first classic from South Carolina, along with our own Davey Hyde there, yeah. Myrtle Beach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. open winner, won at Chesapeake. Uh, he he yeah. did. He's, I think, two open wins in just a few years. A uh, uh, bright young star in our sport from, yeah. from a very busy place. Hard to get Carolina. him down, it looks like. He's, he's yeah. totally positive he's going to make it happen today. A couple nice catches from Corey Johnston. He's moved into second place. With 13 pounds is listed as a 4-6 and a 4-2 in the last 10 minutes. Like, there we go. There's a nice mark. Come on. Now, Such, are those the ones that are loading, it, so loading in from earlier? I th they think oh, they could be. Well, they could too. be. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying they are. It took a while. <laughs> Unreal. And then when you do get a bite, they're just like, they think they just like, Barely grab it. Cool. Looks like Gutsy's back in the canal. Yep. Yep. That's yep. a big one if it's a small mall. Smart move, in my opinion. Hmm. How about a five pounder from Brandon Polinick? He was in the fifties. Wow. He needed it. Jumped up to yeah. nineteen. His second fish. He's got a one pounder too. The big one didn't get it. <laughs> so Z things are starting to pop. I don't know if it's because we're just now getting service for some of these guys, or they're actually starting to bite. But for whatever reason. Brandon Lester hooked up again. He's oh, sure got a lot of bend in his rod. Holy smokes. I think it is a bass. I think it's a foul hook bass. Take them however we can get them. Pretty sure. That'd be a limit for Brandon, right? Yes, yes. So, yes. Yeah. We He's got all bona fide keepers now, anyway. He's an angler that if he does exactly what he's done so far today or another day, could have one of those 20 pound, you know, Got to think one of the days like Gussie's had today, maybe not brown fish, but I mean, you've, you've got to think that one of these guys that has that Decent unofficial 10 to 12 pounds right now that one. with the last two hours of fishing here, man, we should see some big large mouth. Yeah, that. should. I mean, it's the end Bumped of March. Bump to 15, right. yeah. Bump to 15, 16 pounds by the end of the day. Oh, big hackney. Won't keep. Oh, boy. Won't keep. Got it good, but. Not 18. It's a nice one out. Maybe 17.
Maybe 17. Mm. Mm. Now see, when you're catching all keepers, it don't bother you. You're like, man, small my fishing's okay. When you catch a 17 inch one and throwing them back, not so much. Oh, I'm amazed he has stayed up there all yeah. day long. And he think? has a lot of other stuff to, I, I, I think those, you know, obviously the two big ones that he caught and losing two big ones that he said he knew was over 18 inches, I think it's just held him there. Did he think the wind was going to help him or hurt him? Didn't seem like he really cared. But I mean, he had some big, big largemouth days jig fishing in practice last weekend. Jacob Parazic just landed a three pounder, become our 13th angler with a limit. He's in uh, ninth place right now with about 10 pounds. Good to see Jacob get his limit, but gosh, you look down that list. There's some phenomenal fishermen in this tournament that have not been able to catch over two or three fish so far right. today. It's absolutely incredible. Well, last time we were here, day one, we had only 30 limits, day two, 33. Don't think we beat that today. Probably not. Not no, on track, I don't too, think so. as it stands right now. So seeing Gussie right around 18 pounds now, does he go right to that school tomorrow or does he try to catch one or two in the canal? I think it really depends on if he believes anyone was close enough to see him and find where he caught those fish today. Yeah. Only he knows if there, there was, was one angler people. near him. Yes. One. You know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> So I guess you have to keep that honest. Uh, if not, I'd start in that canal again. Try, try to catch, catch that one that right. like he lost this morning. It's so it's so hard, you know, in tournament fishing, it, it's not as simple as go to your best spot, stay at your best spot all day, every day. There's there's other strategies in there. So let me just throw you a question. If you, obviously there is a lack of limits today, and I'm sure there's Oops. Half the field probably practiced in that canal. Could get a little busier there even tomorrow. R really? No, you're right. I'm, try it out I know. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. More than, more than a few people stopped me okay. out here while we were on our break. Says, why, is, why aren't we seeing more people vertical really fishing in 20 feet of water wow. right now? I think know. you will by the end of the weekend, <laughs> friend. I told him to hang around. Right. It's probably going to happen. Fishing and catching, doing that is two different things. Like I said, you, you see yeah. Brandon Polinick and, and Taku Itu throwing spinner baits and crank baits don't think they didn't try it and they're oh, pretty good and with their let, electronics let's, let's also gussie's caught six keepers that's right it's not like yeah let's, is, let's not call it a bonanza yeah. true the numbers are wide. i wonder how many corey's caught we've been a little yeah, off do on not his know. service and do not right. know wonder if he's caught right. only six or seven It's almost like Gutsy is playing offense and defense here, fishing. He can catch a four pounder from that canal where a lot of the other anglers are going to be fishing.
John Cox has stayed with the crankbait in his hand all day. He has. And he has stayed in that color water all day yes, long. He, has that too. he said he was looking for stained water. He found it and he <laughs> has camped on it. Okay, put the brakes on. Interesting, besides Gussie obviously fishing in between the lakes down on the lower end between Loudon and Teleco. Only one angler Jeez. now. Only one angler in our top 12 in Teleco. One. Wow. And he does not have a lot of company being Jacob Rosnick. There is not a lot of company around him. Well, now I know what to do to get by the rest of the evening. That's, I don't feel like I'm running around. I'm chicken with my head cut so off. You, you talked to some good you local anglers right leading up to this event. Too far back in the creek. Do they the lake or you can win right tournaments in Telecom? Like big pocket, I think. Where... One day events. One day events. The, the, it, it was said the, the tournament, and there, there were some massive, massive stringers caught here the last month. That big stringer that was caught last week by a local, I've had 23 something, that was a one day tournament that was thought to be caught that was out of Teleco. We're pushing on closer and closer to weigh in time, check in time for these 55 anglers. Jeff Gustafson with a good looking weight right there, especially in the context of today, Ew. 17 pounds and a quarter. Or, or a third. Corey Johnston keeps catching them all day long. Brandon Lester, Brandon Lester's best classic finish of his eight classics happened right here in 2019. Scott Canterbury, Shakura, Benton, Card, Peroznik, and all the rest. We will be right back. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota is sponsored by Humminbird. 55 anglers out there who have worked so very hard to get to this place, so hard throughout their throughout 2022 and throughout their entire careers. They've had to beat a lot of people <laughs> low, low these many years, but here they are in Knoxville, Tennessee. Some beautiful shots of our fantastic host city beautifully mm -hmm. nestled in here. And the what it was Foothills. popping last night, Tommy. Oh, man, oh, man. We had the fireworks. The yes, fireworks were like, as you would say, setting the sky on fire last night. Exactly yes, right. absolutely. We're Tom. happy to be here. We're all happy to be here. Hey, we have Mercury move yeah. of the day. Let's I think, think about it's fairly that. We, easy. We got to run that we, down. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was a slow, grimy morning for Jeff Gustafson starting in the canal in between the lakes. But then things started to happen, and they happened in a hurry. If you were not with us this morning looking at your Mercury move of the day, Jeff Gustafson from Canada, the interesting thing, doing that damage, as you see right there, in about 25 minutes on one key little rock pile and pulling his trolling motor and bailing out of that area for the rest of the day. And here's the thing, Davey, you know this, when we do our interviews after the weigh-in, during the weigh-in, when the other anglers see it's Gussie in this tournament with all smallmouth, all of our anglers are always guessing, hey, what might he be doing? A there is no guessing no, no. with what Gussie has done today. Your Mercury move of the day unofficially, very unofficially, with 17 pounds and four ounces, Jeff Gustafson from Ontario. And that's what makes it even more impressive, in my opinion, that other people knew uh, yes, for a long time that he was going to be doing this. I'm using a few different different sizes, mostly the four inch Z-Man jerk, scented jerk shad, um, and just putting it on a minnow imitating jig head. My, my buddy, uh, Brian Gustafson at Lake of the Woods Sports, up where I live. Uh, he makes this smeltnator jig and I've used it for like 10 years. It's, it's awesome for this. Um, Northland Tackle, another sponsor, they have one called a Mimic Minnow Jig that's pretty good uh, as well. Um, but yeah, just a lifelike head and um, pretty much doing the same thing that I did here in 2021. Just, you know, it's a way that I like to fish and I'm confident doing it. And when these smallmouths are in, you know, the water's cold, it's kind of deep. It's, it's just a really good way to fish. And in this canal, the bottom's kind of covered with slime and stuff. Um, and then with the current, like when you get around some of these rocky spots, if you try and put like a Ned rig or something down there that um, to drag on the bottom, either you get sort of slimed up or um, you get snagged pretty easy. So we got, we're going over a little 
something here that looks interesting. Just a real lazy looking one. Nice mark though, but. That was her Bass Pro Shops oh, top got a little couple, couple of them. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Guys, unfortunately, uh, I may have made the mistake and did not trust Gussie's smallmouth pattern to translate two years later. Uh, welcome to the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon. We're at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge and talking about Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing and uh, Mercury Drain the Lake. I didn't put them on either one of my teams. I was, I was unsure. I thought a lot of people would be on the bandwagon and it may be different, but projecting out this tournament late March in Tennessee, we didn't think the waters would be lower than they've ever been here this time of the year. We didn't think that it would maybe be as cold as it was with how early the spring had hit. So some of the fantasy teams, though, they're representing. They're all right. I, I was not happy to see JT Tompkins with some mechanical issues. But otherwise, Lee Livesey, uh, Matt Robertson, and Stetson Blaylock all doing pretty solid today as well. And then we go over to Drain the Lake. And this is an interesting deal. If you This also counts to your regular season. If you're playing Mercury Drain the Lake and you're using one angler one time per year, you got to be specific when you use them and make sure you use them when they do well. I decided to save Gerald Swindle for the Classic. So did Keith Combs. I'm using Lee Livesey, both teams. I decided to use Brandon Card, and that's paying off big time this week. He is honestly the only local in the field. Uh, Mark Frazier, Kenta Kamira, David Mullins. I picked all my people before official practice. Did not realize Mullins had as tough of a practice as he, ha as he did. And Brock Mosley, he's a guy who's honestly due. We talk about guys who are due a lot. He is due for a big win or for a break, for breakthrough performance. Um, but how that equates to the actual best Drain the Lake team so far today, this is not the perfect team, but the best team so far this week. Greg Hackney, 11th place. Jason Christie, 14th. Third place, Brandon Lester, 17th for Fighter, 32nd for Cobb. First for Gussie, second for Corey Johnson, and sixth for Shakirat. Interesting, this uh, this player who used this team, they used Gussie, Chris Johnston, or Corey Johnson, and Jay Shakirat, all who should probably factor at the St. Lawrence River later this year. So, a couple guys getting used in that team, and uh, make sure you also send in your photos on how you're watching Bassmaster Live this week for the Bassmaster Classic. Hashtag Bassmaster Classic on all social medias. We'll be gathering those to show them off throughout later the show each day. I think a couple times a day, guys. Ronnie, I think you motivated Jeff Gustafson. I did. According to him, you he did. Yeah, yeah, he took a little exception to your... Ah, to your <laughs> well, I mean, having a time out there on the pontoon already. Oh, wow. It's warm enough. It's about it 80 is. degrees this afternoon, isn't it? absolutely is, Tommy. Yes, yes, it is. We're not no waking that bridge. Of course, no, it's, legal to run. it's legal to run through those bridges. I didn't want to tell Ronnie that Mullins is the only angler in our field of 55 without a fish yet. Hey, I'm uh, glad you didn't tell him that. Wow. Such, <laughs> you know how it is, Such. I, I do. Uh, I, I do. My, I I've done teams, it. I've set my Drain the Lake team for the whole entire season before we made a cast this year. So. Yes, uh, I, and I sent your mind, and yeah. I haven't seen yours yet. Yeah. Well, I show your, I show mine literally every day on live. But if the rest of the know, events uh, all year, the seven left are hooked up. <laughs> Stay on, baby. That's a real good one here a for Brandon. That's a big one. Stay on, girl. Oh, boy. Stay on. Stay on. You're good. You're good. You're good. God, I can see my jig way too much. Yes, baby. Yes. I told you it was going to happen. Give me some on that. Boom! Thank you, Lord. Yes! Dude, I come over a rock and that old jig went thunk. Yep. That's something going to have as long as my leg. Y'all look at that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What a beautiful fish. Check out this coal Gosh, we're about awesome. to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Help him 
three pounds, probably. Smallest is a one and three quarters. So two and a quarter at least. Well, I know what that means, Tommy Sanders. Oh, I think what? it's pretty easy. Oh, I see what you're talking Cue about. Cue the music, Anthony, yeah. in the truck. Yeah. We just made the comment that one of these anglers was going to take a big shot this afternoon. Warming temperatures, warming water temperatures. Some of these anglers kind of hovering around in that 10 to 12 pound range. Not the case anymore for Brandon Lesser. Biggest largemouth we have seen today, by far, yes. we have seen today. Heard him make the comment, I am seeing way too much of that jig hanging out of that big old mm -hmm. Tennessee River slouch right there for Brandon Lester. Big shot right there. We'll keep him in the mix. Your power pole replay. Oh, the afternoon. Brandon Lester, a big favorite coming into this tournament. Yeah, and we just talked about him uh, hanging around today. Well, he's done more than hang around. He's going to be uh, yes. you know, one of those weights that he'll be happy with. And the one thing that Brandon Lester, we got to talk about it earlier today on Bassmaster Live. He said, man, I just I have to stay within a quarter mile of the main lake on Fort Loudon. I don't want to get in the back of these creeks. I don't want to start bumping heads with other anglers. Definitely the biggest shot we have seen from any of our largemouth fishermen wild. here on day one. Exactly. I can't fish them today because it's so windy out on the river, but this one just happens to be protected. And I pulled in here, man, and like my third flip, I caught a four and a half pounder. I told Jake before we left that other spot, I was like, man, we need one more big one today and we'll, I feel like we'll have survived. You know, I told y'all this morning, my whole goal is not to be leading after day one. I just want to keep myself in contention. And I feel like we've at least done that at this point. So we still got time. We might catch another old big one, but that was a pretty awesome deal right there. <laughs> Just a pound and a half, a pound and three quarters back uh, unofficially, according to Bass Track, of our leader, Jeff Gustafson. And Brandon Lester's been on a roll the past 15 months. Got his first open win, his first Bassmaster Elite Series win, finished second progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year in 2022. He's a, he's a man with momentum. I know Brandon Lester needed that bass. We needed yeah. that yeah. large <laughs> oh, bass. Yeah. We needed that. You can't that. say that loud enough. So, Z, it's interesting, very interesting. You talked to him and he said, I need, need to stay close to that river mouth. Yes. Out of a lot of situations on this river. Old pig and jig has. <laughs> yep. No teller. I've got my notes here from 2019 talking to Brandon Lester. And I wrote down uh, him saying, I don't think a lot of people realize they're in the backs of these places, not very far from the, where they're spawning. And he sputtered a little bit in that event. He ended up having a good right. one, but I think he learned a lesson that maybe don't spend quite as much time right. in the backs, even though they're loaded well, with shad. I, and the other thing, if you really go off of some of the tournaments that we've had here, you can get in a numbers game yes. back in there, and you're not in a quality game. You're you're in a quantity game. 100%. And the other, th and he said this was key. He said you do not want to get stuck behind your wheel fishing the entire Fort Loud. Hmm. Get in a general two to four mile stretch and just pick it apart. And he said, the only person I want to fish behind is me. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh. Indeed, Tommy. Well, I, Indeed. Uh, I, I reckon maybe. John Cox is not uh, spending too much time behind his wheel. He has definitely no. stayed in one area all day for us. Jeff Gustafson, another one kind of staying grounded. Uh-huh. Just working it right on out of that lay down. <laughs> that might be number five. That might be, I don't know. Let's put him on the... <laughs> that sucker was so long up in there. I was getting frustrated. Everybody coming in. I was like, gosh, I need to get on some fresh water. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Long. I love that. Yeah, right on top do. of that That's cooler. Awesome. We got five. That's so great. Because tomorrow, I think they're really going to bite with that rain. All right. 
All right, we did good. We did good. All right, come on. It was number five for John five Cox. Fingers. He's going to fish on, try to upgrade. Let's head on over to the Toyota booth here. That guy in front of us just caught one right there. Bassmaster Classic Outdoors and Expo, and Ronnie, Ronnie Moore has actually made his way over there, standing by. Ronnie Moore, let's throw to him right now. Bassmaster Classic Expo. We're in the Toyota booth with Elite Series Pro Daryl Gleason, and we're talking about bonus bucks, Daryl. That is kind of a key for fishermen: how to make extra money when you're doing six, when you're being successful on the water, and that is what bonus bucks does. And you've had that as your brand for forever, basically. Yeah, a long time, man. Toyota actually like did this contingency program starting around 2008. It's And what's super unique about it is you don't have to win the tournament to win the bonus bucks. You just be the highest finisher in the program. So yeah, like starting at the lower levels, the nation, all that, it, all the opens. So like it's something everybody can do. And it's also a great way to support those companies that are supporting industry and supporting all the fishermen and not any other truck paying you to fish. You know what I mean? So it's pretty cool, especially when I was starting off. I was a school teacher when I owned my first Tundra, fishing lower level stuff and working my way up to the Elite Series. And so those little extra bonus bucks checks, man, they keep you going. I heard uh, you have ran a Tundra for a long time, but I heard there's going to be a pretty new one with a bow on it. Tell me about your new Tundra that you're going to get in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm finally getting my new uh, my new one, um, hopefully in about a month or so. Really excited about that. I'm getting the hybrid. Uh, it's a V6. I don't, I'm not a very technical guy. Tons of power. The, the normal reliability you get from a Toyota and uh, improved gas mileage, which is a big deal. So I'm pumped to get it, dude. I ran a Tundra since 2008, traveled all over the country doing so, and not one single time has it failed to crank and get me where I need to go. It's never been in the shop. I've never had problems with them. And for a tournament angler, that's huge. You got to get to your next stop. You know it's going to tow with, like, great power. Can't beat it. Toyota's been a great partner of Bass for a long time now. They're the presenting sponsor of the Bassmaster Classic this year. That's a big deal. It's the 53rd running in this event. Knoxville's going to show out. We could shatter the records that they once shattered years ago. You started your season off on a pretty decent foot right. to make the Bassmaster Classic. You've been to one before, winning an open. You've got an open coming up on your home lake in a minute. There's a lot of paths for Daryl Gleason to make the 2024 Classic on Grand Lake. Oh, 100%. And I'll be honest, you know, like when you say dreams and goals out loud, it shocks you when they come true. Like how many of them come true? I've already booked my RV spot for grand. I, I have. I, we're off to a good start and uh, just got to be confident and have the faith to get there. I got to fish the 50th edition and it's life changing, dude. Life changing. So. That's fantastic. Already booked his spot for the 2024 Bassmaster Classic at Grand Lake. I like that confidence for yeah. sure. Off to a great start this season. From the Toyota booth at the Bassmaster Classic, back to you guys. Well, thank you, Ronnie and Daryl, right there. Some good stuff as we uh, head confidence the right there, hour. Tommy yeah. Sanders. Confidence. Yeah, that's putting m money down. That's confidence. That's I would real just confidence. Have right to ask there. one question: Is it a refundable deposit? Ah, oh yes, my! If it's not, David. then I'm. A, I, I, he's got some confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Gustafson, number one with 17.4. Brandon Lester, 15.8. Corey Johnston, 13 pounds even. Two of our top three are of the Canadian persuasion. That's an interesting moment in Bassmaster Classic history, that is for sure. Corey Johnson, Brian Schmidt, and all the rest will take a break and be right back. Yes. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen! Live coverage of the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota is sponsored by Humminbird. Bassmaster Classic, Knoxville, Tennessee. The Bit. doors just opened to the expo, and we're in the Academy booth. Mike Nelson's here with me. It's a big week for Academy. It's a big week for all the brands as well. Tell me about the exciting rebranding you guys have been doing in this fishing era of Academy. That's right. So, so this year in February, we just launched our H2X fishing brand. It's a really big deal for us. It's a soup to nuts brand. We have everything from tackle, storage, we have soft plastics, hard baits, fishing line, rods, reels, combos, all specifically designed to make angling more easy. We have a lot of customers in our store that just find our, our uh, fishing assortment, you know, it's very broad and overwhelming to some people. So we really took H2OX, we made it into a brand that makes it easy and educational for anglers. So we uh, built a lot of extreme value into this product. Um, we have stuff that elite anglers like Sess and Blaylock are out using right now on the water. Everything down to a combo for $79 
$100 that has the line on it, the lures with it, and everything you need to go have a good time on the water. So we're super excited to kind of unveil this this week at the Classic. Um, it's been a two-year effort. We've been working on this for over two years with really this goal in mind, this day in mind, to show this to the public, and we're very excited. The feedback has been great so far. Mike, that's what I was going to bring up with Stetson Blaylock. Yeah. This isn't just something that the company overall decided to do, uh, you know, R&D and, and come up with products. You have pros who you have to trust and get feedback from. And, hey, two third-place finishes in the most recent classics for Stetson Blaylock, that says, hey, that product, I can trust it in the biggest of, of tournaments in the world or if I'm going to the pond down the street. Hey, that's exactly right. We're rooting for Stetson this week to improve those two third place finishes. We think he's got a great shot at it. And he's going to be using our Evo line, which is the Elite Series stuff. And he does have confidence in it because he helped design it. And I got to tell you, we have great product designers there at Academy. We design all the product in-house, and we really work with our suppliers to have great product. But it's people like Stetson that can really tweak it and put those real finishing details on it. The actions on our rods are just perfect because of that. I personally learned a lot through the process. Our rod designers learned a lot through the process. Uh, we've made everybody better because of uh, Stetson's interaction with us. And so we're super excited. Our reels are top notch. You know, they're all aluminum. He's tested them on the water. Um, we've got great feedback from him, and we now have a finished product we're really proud of. People are going to want to know now after they see this is where and when can they get it. Obviously, Stetson's had it. He's tested it. But now we've unveiled it to the public. When and where can these guys and gals go and get this product? That's right. Well. We are exclusive to Academy with H2OX. So Academy Sports and Outdoors is your one-stop shop for everything H2OX, and that is at every store in the nation. We have 270 stores plus, and probably one coming near you if you don't have one close by right now. Also, academy.com, that is where you lean into our full assortment. We get every rod action out there. So anything that you want, you can have either shipped to a store near you or shipped directly to your house via academy.com. And I'm assuming as well, if you're here in Knoxville and you want to get over to the Academy booth, you could probably snag one for a pretty penny and knock it out of the park, take it home with you from the Bassmaster Classic. So from the Academy booth, we'll send it back to you guys. Well, this is the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota. We'll take it back out on the water now. We're going to find uh, Taku Ito, Takumi Ito, fishing in his third classic. His best finish was last year, seventh place at Lake Hartwell in South Carolina. He was 21st here at the Elite event in 2021. And one thing, Taku has definitely stayed in the region of some of your leaders today. He is. Yeah. He has fished the right water. Real slow start, but fought his way into the top 25 yeah. and has remained there. And looks like he's hooked up again. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. All he is right. a large mouth, power fishing hammer, Davy Height. I got to tell you, a good story. please that crank bait right there. Yeah. A friend of his made one for him. I actually made two, but they're different colors. That is the only crank bait like that in existence. Really? Sent from yep. Japan. Easy. So. <laughs> did you ask him for it? Okay. <laughs> oh, you know Let's I go. did. I said, "What are you going to do if you win the Bassmaster Classic on that?" One of a kind crankbait. I don't think he understood what I asked him. He said, I don't like crankbaits. <laughs> Four, five, okay. Yeah, he said a good friend of his made that bait. Uh, is it okay? Thank you. Solid fish right there for Taco. Solid fish. Absolutely. Definitely starting to see the presence of a lot better average size largemouth than we saw early this morning. Mostly the mid lake range of Fort Loudon. It's very obvious. Other than what Gussie's doing, you know, it's a different deal, but there's a, there's a section of Fort Loudon yes. that, that is happening on. And if you're in it, yes. you know, it's not going to be easy, but and if, if you're, you're not, not in, in it, it <laughs> it's not going to be good at all. That one went in as two pounder. Five fish in the live well for Taco Ito, and he's hooked up. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's gonna be fun, but it's gonna be keeper. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Easy. Easy. Solid keeper there for Tucker. <laughs> You that okay, thank you very much. So. I mean, this expo has done blowed up, Tom, for a unbelievable. Friday. My gosh. It's amazing. It's true. It really amazing. is. The whole bass fishing yeah, fly. <laughs> comes it's from. I, I just talked to a couple from Arizona. <laughs> I mean, wow. from all over the, yeah, all the world. Like the world, literally. <laughs> Tomorrow, it's going to be raining a little bit. That should make it plenty crowded. Yeah, I would say. Tomorrow, wouldn't you say? I would, I would totally agree with that. It's going to be where it's at. Acne's hooked up. No. Oh. Time to go. I mean, when I could catch them things on a dang bladed jig, in the mouth, like he bit. Like I ain't lying, like he bit. He got a set of lips, but you just can't lip him. Could be the quote of the day. <laughs> got a fat lip but you can't lip him amen Hackney on the move first time today oh wow, yeah that was it that carp was the final straw yeah yep. that was it I could just and Tommy you and Zona can too just imagine what he's saying to himself right now <laughs> <laughs> Gussie looks like he's looking at one. About to bite. A little more heat in the sun now. cameras on thought docks would play I think we've only seen two bass caught off docks today one by John Cox one from Swindle I think you're right I think you're right really surprising with the sun out but it's, it, it's a water temperature rising to me the docks are never as good when they're just so much clearance between the water when the real high and the dot yes even though there's shade there but 
I don't think they like being exposed. We don't have those high. those stocks that high in Michigan. We don't, no, we don't no. have that. <laughs> See, Brian Schmidt just caught a four and a quarter. He's wow. almost up to 15 pounds, third place. <laughs> Two seven out of the lead. It's great a little while ago to have uh, Dakota Meyer drop by the set and visit with us. Uh, Ronnie also had a chance to uh, talk to him about his partnership with with Toyota and the great work that they do that took place a little bit ago. Let's see if we can roll that interview right now. Ronnie Moore here day one of the Bassmaster Classic in the Toyota booth. I got a special guest with me today as all the fans are kind of crowding in and piling in Dakota Meyer 2011 Medal of Honor winner. Uh, I'm so thankful that you're here. So thankful for what you've done for our country. I feel like I've talked to you four or five classics in a row because of your hiring heroes program, your efforts that you've done coming back to the States. It's helped a lot of people. Tell us about kind of the progress you've made the last few years. Yeah, you know, I, thank you so much. It's always awesome to be here. It's four years in a row. Uh, I teamed up with Toyota in 2012 and, uh, you know, just uh, seeing, seeing this issue of how do we help veterans transition out of the military? You know, put, put, these, put these members with great assets, with, you know, great foundational pieces and, and principles, and how do we help, you know, them with their, their bridge over into going back into the society and, and the communities that they fought for? And so, you know, we did that. We teamed up. We started HiringOurHeroes.org. Uh, you know, we came out with tools like ResumeEngine.org, helping translate those skills over to, you know, what, what is needed and how that applies, how, how their military service applies to, you know, their communities and in the workforce um, you know so it's just been it's such a such a rewarding deal it is because we see so many veterans there are veterans that that fish in the Bassmaster Elite Series that fish professionally across the country they have the tools they have the leadership they have the charisma at times but they don't have all of the things that maybe businesses need nowadays like resumes or profiles things like that you guys get to equip them in that but also when you guys are here you meet so many veterans as well that don't even know about hiring for heroes here and and you get to equip them with that information to maybe kickstart the next half of their career and their life yeah you know look I mean it's not it's not a matter of not, not any work that we have to do with them. They have all the skills. They have all the assets. They have all the resources. Uh, it's just about how do we help them, you know, package that going out. You know, when I got out, I was a sniper, and there weren't too many job openings for snipers. But, you know, once somebody came to me and said, hey, look, look at these skills that made you a successful sniper. If you take those same skills and you apply those over to any job, over to your family, over to your own home, over to your community, you know, these are all applicable seal, uh, uh, skills that, you know, are, are very needed and, and very sought after. And so that's what we've been doing, you know, Go to HiringOurHeroes.org if you want to support, you know, you want to find more out about the organization. Uh, ResumeEngine.org if you're looking on how your skills, if you're one of those, those service members out there that don't think that you have skills that could translate over, uh, you know, go to ResumeEngine.org, right, and, and it will it'll remind you of just how valuable that you are. We wouldn't be able to do the sport of professional bass fishing without the sacrifice of all of our heroes that have done so much for our country, so much for our freedoms. We appreciate everything you've done. I'm so glad you're at the Bassmaster Classic. I know that it's life changing for what you did and the, and the things you did in your career, but I know someone's life is going to change this week and hopefully they do good things with all the, uh, the publicity and the championship. So from the Toyota booth, day one of the Bassmaster Classic, back to you guys. Thank you, Dakota and Ronnie. Good stuff right there. There's the Sun Sphere that's uh, uh, left over from the 1982 World Fair. Just a striking, striking thing that uh, represents our sun and where we gain so much of our energy. Jeff Gustafson, the man from Canada, on top of the leaderboard as he has been for the past four or five hours. Brandon Lester of Tennessee has certainly closed the gap on him in a meaningful way with 15 pounds and eight ounces. Brian Schmidt, Corey Johnston, Scott Canterbury, Jay Shakura, Drew Benton. Brendan Card, Jacob Brosnick, and John Cox. We will be right back. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota is sponsored by Humminbird. Final hour of fishing here. That is our fantastic host city of Knoxville, Tennessee. Hosted this event, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic back in 2019, and we are back here again in 2023. 55 anglers out there today. The same 55 will be out there again tomorrow, striving every minute of, of the day of the eight hours of fishing to try to make it into the top 25. That's the way you can pass on to Saturday and have a shot at the World Championship. Jeff Gustafson from Ontario, Canada, the man on top as he has been for a good long while. Brandon Lester of Tennessee. Fayetteville, Tennessee, 15 pounds and eight ounces. Brian Schmidt, Corey Johnston, and Scott Canterbury make up our top five. 
Ooh, all eyes on yes. this guy, huh? Indeed, Jeff. my friend. Ooh. All eyes. He was the Mercury move of the day about two hours ago, and he's starting to pile on the elements, if you know what I mean, Tommy. Ooh. VMC on point today, a 25-minute flurry, which bodes a little bit scary for the rest of the field going into the weekend yes. here at the 2023 Bassmaster Classic. VMC on point. Quick work today for Gussie, Jeff Gustafson. All of his work on the lower end of Teleco getting it done. We have him at 17 pounds and four ounces. Kind of call that a little bit low, Davey Height. VMC on point, day number one, Jeff Gussie Gustafson. So impressive. He did all that in about 25 minutes. Yes. Certainly red line on point. I know our uh, <laughs> I know our fans were excited about that. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio in the Outdoor Expo. I'm at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, and I wanted to get one more mention in before I head over to the weigh-in to get ready for the fish to be brought in. We've got some fans watching from all over the world, all over the other countries, all over the United States. Paul checking out his setup. He's got multiple screens at work dealing with Bassmaster Live and Live Mix. Boomer Yak watching it as well, gonna try to join us for the classic later, but he's stuck at work today. And then this one, I know Mark Zona will like this one a lot. Yes, I will. We've got two international flavors here. We got South Africa cooking up their Friday night dinner. What? Got some food on the grill. It looks like steak, maybe a little bit of chicken as well. And then we've got some folks up in the boom. I'm cranes. not seeing the steak, Ronnie. I see, it's I'm right not there. seeing it. It's right there, Z. Right, right that's there. a big chicken plug. That's a big, I, I that's don't a pork know. chop. That's, it might be a pork chop. It's got a big old bone in it. I know Here's it's not chicken. And then we got some uh, Canadians so. up in the boom lifts doing some uh, so doing some wiring and electrical, um, taking care of that, cheering on the four Canadians that we have here in the Classic this week. So use hashtag Bassmaster Classic on all social media, and we will try to show you all at the Screen Knowledge when yeah. we can. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Absolutely. We love that stuff. Tommy's going to be tweeting out them because we're going to have to get through so uh, many. Oh that mystery meat was absolutely constantly. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> take a picture of grilling a steak and send it to us. Not yeah. a pork exactly. chop. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like still waiting on a steak. Bone in. I yeah. mean, we All asked right. for food, and now we're getting picky. I just, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, okay. it's the classic. Right. Go tomahawk. Yeah, exactly. Get the big rib. There's our 10 that we've been with all day long. And, of course, uh, Jeff Gustafson. There in the red hat, the man who has done the most damage today to the rest of the field here. His fellow 54 anglers have worked so hard to get here. Well, Brandon Lester is just being typical Brandon Lester. He's just sneaking right yeah. on up there in oh, the second yeah. place. Lincoln, I know we call the... I know we call Greg ha Hackney the filthy possum, but Brandon Lester's got a slinking way about him. <laughs> So I got to ask you, Z. Let's just—I think some things are going to change between now and weigh in, Tommy. Oh but yeah, yeah. Would you rather be going into tomorrow morning, Brandon Lester, or Gussie? I know what you first thought is going to be Gussie, but he leaned—he's got three places allegedly. Right. He leaned on two of them hard. <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> Where Brandon's just kind of slinking around, catching them. I really would like to have seen if Gussie put the pedal to him today what he could have done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I guess it, it has taken – it has not been a pretty day for Brandon Lester, but he has slowly chipped away yes. at Gussie all day long. I, I'm more up for the 25 minutes and done deal. It's just <laughs> – Yeah. I'm with you there. But, I mean, there's something to be said with – Pecking along, catching him on a lipless, catching him on a jig, catching him on, uh, you know, different things. I think going into day two, really, especially with the storms that we're supposed to have early tomorrow, who will that help? Who will that hurt? You know what I'm saying? I, I did hear Gussie mention this morning the wind was giving him some issues. Yes, and so, it's supposed to be windy tomorrow. Yes, so I, I think Brandon Lester would maybe it, just assume the wind blow is not. And I, I'm just looking ahead in the championship Sunday. You could not ask for better weather for what Gussie's doing on Sunday. True. Mm. High skies, zero to five mile per hour wind. One more question. Do yeah, we see he better? His, do we see his third spot tomorrow? Gussie's. I save it till Sunday. Say no. Even with ten pounds? 
Because we all talked about maybe the winner could have a 10-pound day. I said we don't see it. If he goes there and catches what he did today on his second spot, he catches five keepers on that and gets out of there. He, he's just waiting for something. Yeah, I think so, too. But if he's got 10 pounds tomorrow, yeah, then, we would. then we would. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, lot of strategy. A lot of strategy. You know, we don't – Chet, Gussie's one of the nicest dudes on the Elite Series. He was ratcheted up tight before this tournament. That's right. Seeing as much pressure as that canal – got in practice and the last two years <laughs> um he was he was wound pretty tight did he find these two other places outside of the canal on wednesday or last week last week yes not wednesday he did not add on anything and we don't know if he's added anything today he's had a little time to poke around and right do a little looking True. around this and that Very true. Well, Brandon Lester has been bringing it for the second half of this day, I will say for sure. Brandon Lester has done. I hate to correct you. I never do that. I stay in my lane. Oh, 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 oh I got you. Brandon Lester? Yeah. <laughs> Has knocked it out of the park for the last oh. year, friendo. No, no, no but argument late today, there. we had our little midday break and made the comment, man, we need to see a big largemouth here out of Fort Loudon and Teleco. We got to see that. A little bit of jig fishing. Most of his work done early with a lipless, little bit with a bladed jig. Picking up a regular old school jig like we saw him do on Gunnersville a few years back. Hey, Brandon Lester, you are by far and away. That right there was a knockout punch. I'm talking about a silver bullet. You are the powerful replay of the day, my friend. Got his first Elite Series victory last year. Pickwick Lake. Finding something a little yeah. bit to where he could kind of sneak off a little bit. Well, it, yeah. <laughs> Do yeah, some special saw, things. Saw so, yeah. a kind of that mid-depth range that yeah. well, people were That's kind overlooking. Of of you nailed it, though. First day of the class at Gunnersville, about this time um, of day, he caught I mean, one on a rock bluff yeah, on a jig that happen, it's gonna made happen. his day. Finally, we made a good decision, got back in the back of that creek, got us a limit, and then we stopped and caught that big one a few minutes ago on the jig. I'm got about, probably take us a good 25 or 30 minutes to get back from where we are right now. So I've got probably 30 minutes of actual fishing time left. And I'm contemplating whether I want to finish out just flipping my jig down this bluff or I've got one more back of a little pocket that's got some bait in it. I kind of like to go check it and see what's going on back there, but this jig's feeling pretty right, so I may just ride it to the end today. Probably got a better chance at catching a big one doing this anyway. This is just a deal where you're not gonna get a ton of bites, but heck, you're not, from what I've seen, you're not gonna get a ton of bites doing anything on this river right now, so. You don't have to catch them all. You just got to catch the right ones. Brandon's got that four and a half pounder we just reviewed there just a few minutes ago. A couple of three and a halfs to go with it. A couple of twos to make out his five. You know, one other big, big advantage. Gussie was a later boat number today. A lot later boat number. He will not be tomorrow. Yeah, they invert the field. Yeah, right. that's a good point.
I think that'll be huge tomorrow. Although I will say, I think he got to start where he wanted. Watching him so right. much two years ago, where we saw him early, where he lost that big one, uh, he caught a lot of fish there two years ago. Yes, yes. Be interesting to see where he starts tomorrow. I'm, I'm, I'm really wondering whether he'll start where he caught his five fish limit in 25 minutes or in that canal where he basically caught nothing. Or where Corey was at. Get all spicy. Yeah, because <laughs> he may have wanted to be there. You mentioned Corey Z, and it's odd. I've got the Bass Track map, and he's been up near downtown Knoxville for some time. He's in the middle of the river, I believe, but he's gone for 13 pounds. And I, I called, uh, texted his marshal, and the poor guy's sick back in the hotel room. They had a replacement this morning. No. So I couldn't find out exactly why he's up there. Such, I want you to get to the bottom of that right there. A little bit of bonus coverage to share with you right now. First Australian to ever qualify for the Bassmaster Classic as course fishing. The person of Carl Jockamson from Toowoomba, Australia. And we got some footage of him, a couple of catches from earlier today. Yeah, Carl definitely fired up. Said his biggest dream of his lifetime besides getting married and having a child. Fishing the Bassmaster Classic, taking quite a few years to get to this point, but it's been a Slow day for Carl here. Big contingent from Australia up to uh, cheer him on. Let's take you out right now to Carl with Robbie Floyd. All right, guys, I want to point out a couple of things. Ronnie, you were talking about that barbecue that the South Africans have. They're not a barbecue. It's called a briar. Dave, whether it's whether it's chicken or beef, it's their version of barbecue. Just wanted to point that out. But also you're talking about how the lack of dog bites. Uh, things have brightened up here at the end, so you may see some more activity. This past 30, 45 minutes, and Carl Jogginson a moment ago, when you exact moment you were saying we haven't seen any under the dogs, or there are only two, he caught two in about a two-minute stretch. So with the sun getting brighter and coming out late in the day, will we see that last minute jump up to the top with a big largemouth? In Carl's case, he caught a largemouth and a smallmouth under the dock. Roddy, thank you very much. Good stuff Carl right there. Jockinson. Robbie has just stoned it yet again on day one. Has what? Stoned <laughs> it. Oh, God, that's, yeah. Thank you. All right, I never heard that's a good one. Uh, he is doing all that work out on the water and also monitoring the food, the, the pictures. Food, the and food pictures and stuff. That's that's not the easiest thing in the world. No, it's not do. out there in the wind and the Oh my gosh. Sun. Yeah, he's He keeps us honest on so many fronts, I can tell you that. <laughs> So back to Corey being not far from check-in. He thought, might be he might be kind of playing like Gussie. I thought the He's same got thing. his target weight, and he just I thought the exact same thing. Yeah, I thought he had more weight. Yeah, yeah. No, he might have around. more weight. Yeah. And if he's got more weight, that that also explains why he might be close to check-in. Jason Christie, uh, I'm right there. Don't know if that will measure. No, it will not. Our defending champion. Jason Christie hanging in there in 13th place currently with just under 10 pounds unofficially. Just Gustafson pretty. still the man on top. Steady risers on that leaderboard the last shut her down. couple hours. Yeah, Definitely. same leaderboard. Right, Smith's got a couple of nice fish. Brandon Carr, Jacob Peroznik uh, jumped up in the top 10 a couple of hours ago. John Cox has been steadily hanging in there today. So we've got uh, got ever closer to our way in time, but there's a little more fishing left to go. So don't go away. We'll come right back. The 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota at the Tennessee River is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. 
Progressive Insurance, and by Rapala. Bouncing around the Bassmaster Classic Expo here in the Academy booth with Andrew Wheeler, product manager and designer of Pure Fishing Brands. And we've got the Revo, the brand new low profile in our hands. I'm excited about this one, and I know a lot of Elite Series pros have been talking about it as well. Yeah, so new Revo X this year. Um, we've got a, did the whole line of Revos, but just wanted to show you guys the new Revo X. Got a new kind of, as you can see, new asymmetric frame on these reels, so it makes it really comfortable to fish with. Allows us to really shrink the side plate down so you get a super comfortable f reel in the hand. They offer a ton of drag pressure, so up to 20 pounds of drag out of these reels. Multiple gear ratios, you're going to be in 5, 4, 6, 6, and a, and a 7, 3 to 1, so it'll do cover it basically everything you really need to do with a, with a low profile reel. We know the Revo lineup of reels with Abu Garcia has been, I mean, iconic brand throughout the angler's arsenal. Why has low profile been something so important to anglers? Obviously, fatigue on the water, you want to stay on the water as much as possible, but what are other benefits that these guys are going to get out of lightweight and high performance? You get, really, it comes down to a lot of power. So low profile reels in a, in a small package deliver such power on the water. So it just allows you to fish everything from kind of those lighter weight baits, but you can then go up to like heavy line, heavy, heavy weights, you know, whether you're flipping, punching, it just gives you a lot of power on the water, and that's what these Revos deliver. I'm always envious of the pros because they get the products before us regular Joes, you know what I'm saying? They get to fish with them on the on the water in Elite Series tournaments, classic. There are people probably using it this week. When can regular consumers and fans either at Academy or other places get the new Revo X low profile? They're starting to ship right now, so, you, you know, any of the anglers can go out onto the water and... And, and really fish with these new Revos. They're available in stores right now. We know the Rocket was a big deal the last few years, 10 to 1 gear ratio. I expect the same from the new Revo X Low Profile. From the Classic Expo here in the Academy booth, back to you guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank Indeed. you, Ronnie. Indeed. A lot of stuff going on here in a beautiful part of the world. East Tennessee right here on the gateway to the Smoky Mountains, beautiful country here, lots of beautiful lakes and rivers. The mighty Tennessee also gets its start right here. Oh, oh I see a little, uh, mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Something that alerts us Peter to the fact that a big fish. Big fish alert, Chris Johnston with a four-pounder. Jumping up our standings. Still is only on four fish, about nine pounds. Skeeter Boat's big fish alert. Yeah. Well, we have seen some good performances today, but uh, certainly none better than the one we're about to look at right now. Indeed. He has won every single award we could give up. <laughs> if we could make one up, Tommy, this man right here would win it. Watching right. what he did, and he made quick work of his stringer today. We all thought coming into day one of this classic, he kind of hover around that 15 to 16 pound mark. Well. He unofficially has done a little bit better than that. We have him at 17.4, but hearing from cameraman Brian Evey, now he's a little bit over 18 the way it sounds, and that's with a two and a half pounder in his bag. As we talked about it, Gussie losing one between four and a four, four and a half pounds early today. Marathon peak performance, a 25 minute job for Gussie. Getting it done, fishing vertical, Z-Man jerk shad with a smeltinator jig head. Man, it looked like identical footage that we had here two years ago. Your marathon peak performance, it is a long one, but well-deserved. Jeff yeah, we're, Gustafson. We're thankful that he's wearing different clothes than he had on back in 2021, or we'd be accused of, uh, you know, not really bringing the goods. I don't think he is, actually. I you really don't. don't. I think it's exactly. It just has a jacket over the top of that uh, flannel. John Chris. Cox has a consistent look, another guy with a consistent look. He's always oh, yeah. tight, ready to go. Got it happening, and there's something there right go. there. Just had to take a pee break. <laughs> okay, that's right. Yeah. That'll be a good call. That's all you got to do, Tommy. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That fish is just moving back in here. It's exciting. Definitely seeing it's some large mouth this yes. afternoon. It's starting to show. Lake seems to be firing up. Chris Johnson just filled his limit. He's up in sixth place. That's Maybe three Canadians in our top six. Wow. I don't know. Wow. Something John happened. Cox is now seventh with that fish. You know, Canada, with four entries this year, has passed Japan in classic entries. Wow. Oh, all, of all 15 time? 15 to 13, yes. Wow. Of all time. Yes. That's amazing. A sick stat, Such. I 
guys, I'm missing a coal tag. Let's see. I can't see anything in that water. Yeah, I think it's yellow. Uh, so it's possibly this one. I'm just gonna set them right here for a second. It's not green. It's That's not gonna yellow. be an upgrade for John Cox right there. We'll likely jump him up into the top 10 ahead of Jacob Porosnik. So we got John Cox rounding out our top 10 with names like Card, Benton, Canterbury, Johnston, and Johnston. Shakura, Sh Schmidt, Lester, and Gustafson, three Canadians in our in our top ten. That's that's remarkable enough. What do you guys make of what has happened here today? And is it going to be a different, completely different scenario tomorrow? There is a weird northern flavor in that top yes. ten right now. You look at Gustafson, Shakura. Johnston, Johnston. This is not a very northerny lake, except no. for about a two-mile stretch. I think the really the one thing to kind of keep your eye on going into tomorrow morning. Obviously, two of the anglers in the top ten that we will have cameras with, Gussie and Corey Johnston. They did work in a hurry. Are they able, number one, to get back? to those areas and kind of be left alone and will the storms that are supposed to come in the morning and they're supposed to be pretty severe from what you said Tommy quick, Sanders. Quick but severe yeah. Quick I mean they're supposed to come through very quickly in the morning. Who are those storms going to help and who are those storms going to hurt because really the guys that fished on the lower end of the lake they did their damage in a hurry on day one. Yeah, I, I totally agree, and I, and I also agree with the, the storm issue for a lot of different reasons. We're, we're hoping that largemouth move up and the fishing gets better for the guys that are targeting the largemouth, like our Brandon Lester, um, you know, Greg Hagney, multiple people. But with those fish, largemouth moving up, will smallmouth start moving up also? And when they start moving hey, up that's... to spawn potentially, will they leave where Gussie has been fishing, where Corey Johnson has been fishing? So you got to think about, man, if they if the largemouth move up, the, the catches will be right. better. Absolutely. But if the smallmouth start moving up, will they swim away from Gussie? That is the big, I think that's the biggest fear, really looking as we go into Saturday and Championship Sunday. Will these warm temperatures bust up those schools of deep? The only thing that I'll say is if you look at, and I don't know, that open that was one up the road on Cherokee, I think it was last year, correct? Yes. Those small, those are the same strain of smallmouth that yes. are here on Fort Loudoun. They caught those into April out deep that way. So you're right, though. The last thing you want if you're a smallmouth fisherman right now catching them deep is that warming trend yeah, to hit. The, the one thing, though, the difference, in my opinion, like where we saw in, in 2019 some anglers like an Ot Defoe catching those smallmouth, I think those smallmouth that he was catching, a lot of those fish were less than five feet deep. Those fish are spawning there. They're not going in. Yes. Gussie's a different deal. Gussie is fishing those fish out there in the 20 to 28. They're not spawning out there, I don't think. They're going to make a move at some Great. point, hopefully for Gussie, not until Monday. You mentioned Mark Zona. You thought, Sunday would be the ideal day for exactly what Gussie is doing. If, okay, if he can get there, what what does he need for a little insurance tomorrow? Give me a number that he needs to sort of shoot for tomorrow. 13 pounds. 13 yeah. pounds. 13 pounds. 13 because pounds. then he can burn burn everything down on Sunday. You yeah. know, I think if he if he creeps around that 13 to 15 pound mark tomorrow, he Look is out. in perfect position. But again, what you want for the way he's fishing, and you, oh, you folks at home that fish deep water, especially forward-facing sonar, you want calm and sunny. And that is all we are going to have on Sunday. Yeah. Well, Brandon Lester certainly made himself a factor today, as he has done pretty much steadily for the past, as we've mentioned, 15 months. He's, he's, he has really come on strong here in the bass fishing world. Yeah, Gussie went down in weight every day in 2021 after his 17-14, his 15-10, 15-5, and then 14-3 on Championship Sunday. Such, I know you play the fantasy fishing. Did you put Gussie on your team? The drain the lake, you know it. You yeah. know you did. Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. you did. Yeah, I got here. Give me a break. <laughs> Question Ronnie why he did not. I mean, a lot not of people a, not are a believer. Gussie. Not a believer. No, he's not. No. And he'll give you a hard time for taking the obvious. It's like, 
<laughs> Isn't that what, that's what winners do. Yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Players play, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Why didn't you jump off the cliff? Well, it was obvious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With the weather, back on the weather a little bit more, Tommy and Z, I think for a largemouth angler like a Brandon Lester to have a good shot, he needs to be leading this event tomorrow because that weather on Sunday is not conducive to the to the largemouth bite for mm -hmm. the most part. Well, Davey, I was going to ask you what there's forecast of a half inch to an inch of rain in this region. What well, I would think that it, do? I, I think it's real important how short and how intense that rain is. If we get a if we get a half inch and it happens in 30 minutes, it's going to dirty some water up. It's going to make some things change. I think we had a half inch on Wednesday. It didn't change much at all because it was just a slow, steady. Took mm -hmm. 10 hours to occur. But you get a, a hard rain. You see all these mud banks. Not only the backs of the creeks, but just coming off these mud banks. Brandon Lester's hooked up. Fish looks like it's going to help him also. He's got a couple of two pounders in there. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's decent. It'll cool, I think. Yeah, definitely a cool. Yeah. So, so important. Yeah, it is. <laughs> the last wow. day oh, we think four cool. ounces yeah, matter, but four ounces matter on the first day. Oh, also. that was weird. Yeah. He's done that already today, too. Really? Yeah, he was listening to us before. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Both times he answered. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Get him up to 16 within a pound and a half of our and leader. He, yeah, and he's just fishing. You know, he caught a four and a half pounder on a bluff bank with a jig. Now he's throwing a lipless on a flat mud bank. He's just got a lot of different things going on. Now, what he's doing here, is this what you'd call standard operating procedure for pre-spawn Tennessee River it's, fish? Yes, yeah. especially like this creek i heard him mention an hour or so ago when he's talking about possibly going here it's one of the few areas that there's a lot of shad packed in there and and just probably not going to catch a lot of you know four pounds four to five pounders but a lot of good solid two two and a half i'm surprised we haven't seen more people throwing the lipless He's had a good, good afternoon. Because, right? yeah. look, man, this has been, for the largemouth fishermen, there is people, you look at a Greg Hackney, Jason Christie, they, they said we're feeling it coming into this day. Brandon Lester has stood up in a big, big way. Kind of coming close to the end of our fishing day today. The weigh-in is imminent. Day two coverage tomorrow. We start at 8 a.m. Eastern time. That is local time on FS1 and Tubi. It's good coverage coming for you to start your day off your weekend oh, Saturday yeah. morning at the Classic. How are you going to beat that? It's going to be a lot of fun. We will see you then. And it has been a day. It's been a, a challenging time. day for it has. for our guys out there today. Yeah, I, there's some pretty big surprises. Definitely look at guys like Gerald Swindle who getting a lot of quality bites throughout practice. It's been a uh, it's almost been a weird to say on a day one. But it's been a day of survival here today. Yes, it definitely has. And Gussie's definitely uh, survived that 25 minutes he had the mid-morning. But it was a slow start for him also. I really think the dynamic to keep your eye on also is obviously we're going to be watching the weather, seeing what time those storms come through, how much pressure, how much pressure will that area down on the bottom of the lake get tomorrow morning with a lot of guys obviously that will be limping after today's wait just i would more more than more than half of these guys even some of the top guys are in a precarious position yes. i mean nobody's catching 20 fish a day nobody's catching 15 
numbers like that. So, yeah. and oh man, it's uh, it's volatile. Things could happen. We could see some inversion on our leaderboard tomorrow. We're going to see what the actual leaderboard is today. Make it all official when the weigh-in starts on Bassmaster.com at 3.30 p.m. That's just a half an hour from now on the hot seat, the Yeti hot seat. Well, of course, we have to say is our defending champion, Jason Christie. See if he can hang in there, make it to the final day. That's what everybody's trying to do. 55 anglers will tee it up again tomorrow, shooting for 25 spots on Championship Sunday. We'll have it all for you, covering it all kinds of ways here on Bassmaster.com, FS1, and Fox on Sunday. We'll see you at 8 a.m. tomorrow.